Let's go! Final trial. Although it's split into parts, but it's still the final trial. Dude. <sighs> High Court of Korain. Oh God. Sorry, if you, if you notice any discrepancies in the sound, it's because apparently yeah, always carry a knife. these um, Just like <laughs> apparently these cutscenes are done at a weird FPS, so it messes with the sound. But basically, everybody broke into the courtroom. And welcome, RC. We're almost we're so close to being, well, I say so close to being done. It's the final trial of the fifth episode. <clears throat> the Q's lobby, yeah. It's complete chaos outside. Now let's just say the Defiant Dragon supporters demonstrating for Dirk's freedom, uh, have taken very special interest in the outcome of today's trial. They look about ready to string us up if we lose. Uh, trials here are pretty much like the ones back home, but with one major difference. The divination seance. The victim's final memories will become a matter for deliberation. I gotta check something. It feels like my A button's not working. Actually, most of my buttons aren't working. Yeah, just a second. Okay, that was weird. <clears throat> okay, I just got a fresh thing of water. I was eating crackers for like the last 10 minutes and we were just chilling, listening to music because honestly, RC, I don't know if you've gone through Spirit of Justice or Zunder went with it, through it with you. It's aggravating because this final episode is like a third of the game in length. I swear to God, it's so long. I think that's one of the things that pisses me off about this game is that the pacing is not great because every because every um, episode is like a completely different length. Like the third and the fifth episodes alone are probably more than half of the length of the entire game. And I don't like that. The fourth trial was like so quick in it. The fourth episode was just one and done, and everything else has been just not a lot of fun. <clears throat> Plus, it just keeps getting more cryptic towards the end, and I'm like, just come on. Please tell me what the hell's going on. See, I've heard about that, but they haven't stopped you from winning your cases here in Korain. True, but it wasn't easy. Still, the memories of the dead are simply another piece of evidence. It's always a way to deal with them if your client is truly innocent. Well, I know Dirk is innocent, but, uh... Yeah, this, but I don't want to, yeah, yeah, I have one more big secret, but I'm not going to tell you. Sorry. <clears throat> I, I get it. We, uh, the amount of flashbacks in this game actually might top Apollo Justice, which makes me unhappy because you know how much I hate seeing the same thing that I've just seen shoved in my face 20 times. You only just, well, same, so we're on the same boat. Dirk, what is that secret you're keeping? <clears throat> Hey, AJ, hey, Dats. Here you go, just like I promised. Founders Orb added to the court record. Thanks. Thanks, Dats. Wait, weren't you arrested by the police yesterday? Yep, and I spent the night in the slammer. I had a fine meal, a shower, even a bed. What more could I ask for? <laughs> Thanks, Dats. That actually sounds way better than where we're staying. Just remember, AJ, if Dirk's found guilty today, we'll all probably be found guilty under the Defense Culpability Act, too. Yeah, Nayuta said something to that effect. That witch Garan wants to take advantage of today to crush our revolution once and for all. The fate of the revolution and every Koranese person rests on this trial. No pressure, though. We're counting on you, AJ. Uh, we'll be fine. I'm gonna win this one. <laughs> You'll see. Trial will begin shortly, Apollo. Let's make our way to the courtroom. Uh, right. 
<clears throat> May 19th. Also, the amount of times that like the slow print shows up on screen and there's no way to skip it kind of pisses me off because I feel like I could have shaved an entire hour off of my gameplay if they just let me like I probably could have shaved a lot more than that if they just let me pass stuff that's pointless. Let the trial of Dirk Sadmahi begin. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready, Your Majesty. Uh, so it's really come down to this. Well, don't expect me to hold anything back, Nayuta. <clears throat> this trial will examine both the murder of Justice Minister Inga Karkul Kurain and the assassination of the former queen, Amara Sigatar Kurain. First, I believe we should address the murder of Minister Inga. Would that be acceptable, Prosecutor Sadmadhi? Like, they, they, how many times do I have to watch them be fucking quiet? I'm sorry, guys. Prosecutor Sadmadhi? Yeah, it, it's literally, yeah. Just like the, the Canadian version of the judge is in another game. I, yes, of course. Please proceed. What's with him? <clears throat> How very unlike you, Prosecutor. Is your mind somewhere or elsewhere this day? N not at all, Your Majesty. Are you really going to be able to go through with this, Nayuta? Well, Prosecutor Sadmati, I would re be remiss if I failed to voice a concern of mine. I have heard mention that you are son to the accused, Dirk Sadmati. Everybody knows that. Why do you got to bring it up? <clears throat> you have heard true. Does that fact pose some sort of a problem, your majesty? A father being prosecuted by his own son? Could one possibly deliberate such a case without having personal feelings intervene? Yes, without question. Can he really handle this? Even if his prosecutor son, Mahdi, going against his own father is just... How can the son of a criminal even be a prosecutor in the first place? Shut up! <clears throat> Dirk? Fellow citizens, you would do well not to underestimate my son. He is not the one to, I want to allow personal feelings to interfere with the execution of his duty. Isn't that right, Nayuta? Huh. I will not stop until my work here is done. See? Oh, you doubters, just sit back down before you trip over your own stupidity. <laughs> The accused will not take the stand without first being summoned. In any case, if Prosecutor Sadmati has no issue with this arrangement, then let us commence the deliberations. Hello? Do you have an objection now? Can you get out of here? Oh, come on. I just want to go forth with this. <clears throat> One moment, if you would. Y your eminence? Your Eminence, what brings you here? Your Majesty? Yeah, she is really annoying, to be honest. It would appear that Prosecutor Sadmad, he does indeed have some reservations. No, that is not true. Did you truly believe you could deceive me, Nayuta Sadmadhi? One should hold no reservations if one is to stand on these hallowed funerary grounds. I, I have none, your eminent. No, it is very clear we cannot leave this matter to you. Ugh. We shall handle the prosecution of, en of enemy of the crown Dirk Sadmadhi personally. But remain by our side and bear witness to how a true prosecutor enforces the law. She's a prosecutor, I guess? Um, excuse me, but is the queen going to prosecute the case? Is that, you know, uh, kosher? There is no need for concern. Before we were crowned queen, we served as a prosecutor. That's the first time I heard of this fucking shit. God, I, I hate this game. Like, there's, they withhold all this information, and they're like, oh yeah, by the way, and I'm like, Really? Come on. <clears throat> really? As a foreigner, your ignorance can be excused, but know this. The prosecutor in charge of Queen Amara's assassination 23 years ago 
was none other than her eminence, Queen Garon Sigatar Korain. Wow, that makes her seem even more like the fucking criminal. First your majesty and now this. Why doesn't anyone ever tell me these things? Yeah, yeah, you're one person. No, but she's royalty, and royalty has to talk about themselves in the third person. I'd heard she served as a minister of justice, but she was also a prosecutor. I'm guessing she probably moved up the ladder from prosecutor to justice minister. We prosecuted that case 23 years ago, but no verdict was ever rendered. We had won guilty verdicts in every case until then, for no lawyers could stand up to us. Wow, that sounds familiar. You're going to go down because we literally break records like that all the time. I'm at a loss for words. <clears throat> to think I would once more bear witness to her eminence at work in the Hall of Justice. Our first trial in 23 years. No quarter shall be given to the criminals. We shall prosecute them with all of our might. Well, I'm not asking you for change, ma'am. I, I just... Well, I am asking for you for change, but not spare change. The change of the stupid laws in this country. What the fuck is this? Excuse me? Excuse me? Excuse me? What? Excuse me? What? It's a, wait, what? She just turned into a dominatrix. That's Queen Garon? Oh, talk about an extreme makeover. <laughs> Why is that paddle so large? <laughs> it's all coming back now. The feel of my blood pumping through my veins. Uh, you should feel that every day. Otherwise, you're dead. This is... Uh, I don't like this. Woe to you, O enemies of Korain, for I shall personally slice, dice, and grind you up into hog feed. <clears throat> I'm guessing this is her final form, I hope. I don't suppose I can ask her to roll back to her polite pre-makeover personality. Know this, lawyer? Uh, yes? Now that I stand as a prosecutor, consider your defense's bench of a headsman's scaffold. If you wish to leave any last words, I advise you to start thinking of them now. Her nails got super long, too! While you still have a head with which to think, that is. Uh, me. She's dead serious. Now it is time for the divination seance. Rafa, come forth. I, I don't know, man. <clears throat> I don't understand anything anymore. I feel bad for Rafa. Uh, your benevolence, thank you for gracing us with your presence. Your benevolence? I understand it may be difficult for you, but uh, may we proceed with the divination seance? I know your dad died yesterday, and you're going to show us exactly how he died through his own eyes, but come on, let's just do this. Yes, let us proceed. Forgive me for asking, but are you feeling physically unwell? If so, I would advise you to avoid any undue exertion. Well, because the queen is a fucking bitch, that's why. Clay case closed. Mm-hmm. Your benevolence? What's wrong? It's like her mind's anywhere but here. Apollo, are you really? Apollo, are you really that fucking stupid? Her dad died. Her mom's a crazy dominatrix who's been hatching a weird, like, revenge plot for fucking years. Yeah, she's got some troubles. Woo! A lot's happened since yesterday. Yeah, wow. Thanks, Phoenix. Dad senses tingling. On top of the murder of her beloved father, she found out that he'd been planning a coup. And today she'll have to experience his death through his own eyes. That's what I just said, Phoenix. Yeah, that would be enough to shake anyone up. Wow, Apollo, cool, I'm glad you realized that. Still, seems like she's worse off today than she was yesterday. Did your mother beat you? She did say she was gonna discipline you. Did she hit you with that fan? I don't remember her being this depressed. Yeah, exactly, it's mother's duty to discipline her child. 
Yeah. <clears throat> well, wait. Karen didn't do something to her, did she? Your Eminence, about today's divination seance, as I understand it, the prosecution has yet to review its content. Is this deviation from protocol a part of your plan? Prosecutor Sadmati, would you care to explain your actions? Uh, your Eminence, the accused was caught at the scene of the crime. Therefore, I deemed no seance would be necessary for such a clear-cut case. Uh, uh, you and your bleeding heart. You seek to spare Rafa the trauma of witnessing her father's death. Is that why you have done this? N n not at all. Yeah, well, you were concerned for me, Prosecutor Sadmadhi. That's oddly compassionate of him, all things considered, yeah. <clears throat> your eminence, your majesty, regardless of what is best for her benevolence, this case is blessed with a bounty of incontrovertible evidence, so I believed we can reach a swift verdict without devoting precious time to a seance. Hmm, you have a point. Personally, I would like to spare her benevolence any undue misery. Experiencing the murder of a loved one is a burden no one should have to bear. Have we literally just been talking about the same subject for the past ten fucking minutes? Let's get on with it, please. Jesus. Prosecutor Sadmadi, your majesty, can this trial truly proceed without a divination seance? Can't blame her for not wanting to experience her father's murder firsthand. Well, she's... She wants a taste of the truth. Uh, your eminence, what are, you f what are your feelings on this matter? Shall we have her benevolence return home for some much needed rest? Oh no, of course not. We shall not. You fools spoil her with your feckless words of compassion. You're like, what? Wow. Listen well, Rafa. You have spoken time and time again about how grown up you are now. She's 14! Yes, but... So, let us see if the royal priestess has truly come into her own. Are you prepared to fulfill your duty and perform the divination seance as you should? Okay, y yes. <clears throat> That's better. See? Problem solved. Poor Rafa, is this really a good idea? I guess we'll see. Very well, let us begin the divination seance. Nana, my robe. Oh wait, Nana's not there! Oh, Nana! Looks like Nana's still missing. Uh, Phoenix, go take her robe for her. It's been a whole day already. Barbed head. Yes? You remove my robe. Uh, what? Yeah, I knew it! I knew it! Aw. Wh why me? Don't keep her benevolence waiting now, Mr. Right. Mr. Just do it. Come on, man. She's been through a lot. Can't you see she's ready to begin? Great. I've been reduced to royal robe remover. It's like she's grooming Mr. Right to be Nana's replacement. Oh, no. Very well, your benevolence. Please start when you are ready. Mm. Come, Rafa, you know what must be done. There is no turning back now. Yes, mother. I know. Oh, final memories of the deceased. This should be interesting. Okay. <sighs> Holy mother. We hold this divination seance in your name. Let the eyes of everyone here be clear, and our ears be unstopped. O oh, dance of devotion, guide the victim's soul to me, so that we may receive their final memories in the pool of souls. All right, I can skip the dance, but we'll watch the dance, because this is the last dance. She, she does, but, I mean, sometimes people just have deeper voices. But she's 14. She is now the youngest character in the series. Because Pearls is 18! I can't believe Pearls is 18! 
She was so young. They grow up so fast. When you spend over a hundred hours on a game series. Now you see where all the 3D budget went. <laughs> yeah. Sorry for not paying like 100% attention. I've seen this like five times now, it feels like, or more. <laughs> Probably. No, she's st yeah, she, she is. I mean, Pearl still looks like she's like 12. Pink. Okay, are you guys ready to see how this man died? Um. Um. Uh, 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 ex- what, huh? Is he not dead? Then, wait, what, excuse me? Uh, 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 Rafe, are you okay? I, uh, 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 What is happening? Rafe? Uh. Are you having a panic attack? Oh God, no! <laughs> what is going on? Your benevolence! What's wrong? Uh, Phoenix, what did you do to her? This is unacceptable. Yeah. B Bailiff, take her benevolence to the first aid station at once. Oh, this is not good. We needed that. Well. Your Eminence, do you have any idea why her benevolence collapsed so suddenly? It seemed she was not ready for what the deceased was to reveal. It overwhelmed her. Her inexperience and immaturity left her ill-prepared to face her father's death. Hmm. And she said she could go through with it. How very disappointing. Yeah, fuck this lady. I know someone who's not winning Mother of the Year ever. <laughs> I mean, of course Rafe is going to be overwhelmed. She's still just a child. It seems we have no choice but to move on to witness testimony. Your Majesty? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, let us proceed. Bailiff, summon the first witness, if you would. Oh, if, well, I guess that makes sense that it would totally be dirt. Is this not the accused? It is indeed. I thought I would give him the opportunity to plead his case. For true justice is more than an unilateral presentation of the facts by the prosecution. That seems uncharacteristically fair of her. However, should the accused fail to produce convincing testimony, he, along with his cabal of traitorous lawyers, shall immediately be found guilty and their heads will roll from their shoulders. What? what? I should have known there was a catch. Ah, uh, your court, your rules. Same as it always was, I see, Garan. Uh, now then, Mr. Dirk Sadmati, if you could enlighten us as to what happened. Uh, well, I would, uh, if I could. Witness testimony. Dirk explains himself. I was struck by a sudden dizziness the moment I entered the tomb. The next thing I knew, I was standing there with a bloody knife in my hand. And lying right in front of me was Inga, dead as a doornail. I have no recollection of what happened in the interim. But I didn't kill him. At least, I don't think I did. It'd go against everything I believe in.
That didn't explain squat. For the record, let it be known that the accused's fingerprints were all over that murder weapon. And since he was caught in the act, there was no chance for a third party to tamper with it. Well, that certainly seems to point the finger at you, uh, Mr. Sadmadhi. Even as a lawyer, I have to agree with you there, your majesty. <laughs> Shut up! Seriously, Dirk, this is no laughing matter. This is exactly what Garon wanted. Have Dirk try to plead his case, only to fail miserably. How low can she go? I'm pretty low, I guess. And that skin-tight get-up. Prosecutor, behold this most unpleasant of spectacles and let it be etched into your soul. See how instead of accepting the inevitable, those fish-brained lawyers flounder and flop themselves straight into the abyss of despair. Uh, yes, your eminence, show me the way! Well, fuck you, Nayuta. Now then, with the defense, please begin their cross-examination. Cross examination. Dirk explains himself. Yes. Uh -huh. Hold it. Hmm. Do you recall anyone putting the knife in your hand, Dirk? Wish I could say I did, but I don't remember a thing from before I came to. You think there might have been a third party in the tomb, son? Yeah, because if you didn't do it, then the real killer must have been there with you. Uh, can you say something and... Uh, fuck the royal guard. I'm not even going to voice them. I hate them. Did you go anywhere without those goons? Was there a third party in the tomb when you were securing it? No, your eminence, we searched it high and low, but found someone no one of the sort. And there you have it. Oh, right. They did search the place. Yeah, but they're also, like, at her beck and call, so I don't know. Furthermore, my guards had the entire tomb surrounded, so there was no way for anyone to escape. That's right. No one got in or out without our knowledge. Her eminence on the on-site directives were absolutely flawless. Shut up. Get out of here. Ugh. You see now, the presence of a third party is beyond the realm of possibility. The tomb was, for all intents and purposes, completely sealed off from the rest of the world. What a waste of time! How can it be any more obvious? Dirk must be the killer. Thanks for nothing, gallery guy. As if our graves weren't already deep enough. Accused. What do you believe about the possible presence of a third party? Hmm, well, based on the situation you presented, I'd say the chances are slim to none. You didn't have to agree with her, Dirk. <laughs> Let the accused statements be added to his testimony. Okay, cool. Very well, Mr. Sadmati, if you would. The more we press, the thinner our case gets. Well, let's keep pressing, and maybe we'll work out the wrinkles in it, too. Tomb is probably non-existent. Okay, well, that's not helpful. I think right in front of me was Inga dead as a doornail. Hold it. None at all? A day's passed since the murder. Haven't you remembered anything in that time? My memory is a complete blank. It's as if a part of my brain has been scooped right out. How very convenient. But even if you've no memory of the event, your guilt is without question. There is nothing more to debate. You're forgetting one thing, Garon. I have no motive. You lead a band of insurgents that seeks to overthrow the government. I would say that alone is motive enough to slay our kingdom's minister of justice. I've declared countless times that I lead a bloodless revolution. I forbid violence and murder, even if some younger members may have a thirst for blood. A bloodless revolution? You wouldn't really have a motive in that case. Is that important? Yes, it is. That was an important statement. I'd like my client to add it to his testimony. 
Very well then, the accused will please do as the defense has requested. Bloodless revolution. But I didn't kill him. At least I don't think I did. I had to go against everything I believe in. What do you believe in, Dad? Can you state that you didn't kill him more definitively? How can I when I have no memory of what happened? Well, can you at least state whether or not you are a murderer? That I can do. I am not a murderer and I would never kill anyone, no matter the circumstances. And do you have any evidence to support your claim that you did not kill the minister? Evidence? No. Can't say that I do. In that case, mm, you will strike the statement I didn't kill him from your testimony. Wait, you can't just discard testimony like that. I mean, I'm the one cross-examining the defendant and all. Hold your prattling tongue, foreign devil. I am the queen of this kingdom. And the queen is the law. Oh, I don't like that at all. As such, I need not follow the laws that are in place. I can make and break them at will. That's not how that works, actually. Henceforth, the accused will refrain from stating I didn't kill him. What the fuck? No, that's not how that works at all. Sure, whatever. It's the Garon show, after all. Same as always. But, but, but yeah, it's not supposed to work that way. Mysterious blood stain, cause who? Somebody else had to had to be in there. Okay, we're gonna use the voice. Objection. Objection. I did it. There was so, such a loud objection, right? Your Eminence, I'm afraid this trial will not go exactly as you anticipated, because I can show how there might have been a third party in that tomb. Oh, how very fascinating. Go on, I do so love a good fairy tale. We did a luminol test at the crime scene, and we found a blood stain that didn't match the Justice Minister's blood. I will remind you that neither Dirk nor Miss Fay were injured during the incident. The thing is, this blood stain we found had been wiped up by someone. What's this? But, but who would have done such a thing? That's the big question, isn't it? Who wiped up the blood and why? Thinking about it logically, it must be someone who wanted to conceal their presence at the scene of the crime. Oh? And whom do you suppose the bloodstain might belong to? The bloodstain belongs to the real killer, obviously. Oh yeah, because three of those bullets hit something. Man, is there somebody out there with three bullets in them? The bloodstain belongs to the real killer, of course. Whoever it was, they were probably shot while they were attacking Minister Inga. And since their blood would give them away, they had to wipe it off. I say this because we know for a fact that the Justice Minister fired his gun in the tomb. You have the memory of a flea. There was nowhere for anyone to hide. This, too, is a known fact. Objection. But a blood stain from a third party means there must have been someone hiding there. Very well then, where was this third party hiding? Oh, um, the crime scene was thoroughly searched after it was discovered, so if there's a hiding place, it would have to be somewhere no one would dare look. Someone no one would dare look? Hmm. Let's have your answer, defense. Now, where could the third party have hidden? Oh, the sarcophagus, we talked about that. Wow, I didn't even have to move my cursor. Present it. Present? Pre present? Okay. Take that! Now my Y button's not working for some reason. Just a second. Uh... Or my X button. There's one place no one would search, not even the Queen's Royal Guard. And that would be... The sarcophagus! Inside Queen Amara's sarcophagus. Even now it's locked up tight. No one would find you if you hid in there. 
I'm told that it's temperature control to preserve the mummy within. But if someone dressed warmly enough, they could withstand the cold for a short time. This is sacrilege! Surely the perpetrator of such a foul deed would be cursed. But that's just it. The killer knew everyone would be too scared to open the sarcophagus. True, the guards were so scared of being cursed, they wouldn't even touch it. And when the coast was clear, the killer made a quick escape from within their frigid confines. Well, now that does sound like a plausible method of evading capture. The defense requests a DNA test on the bloodstain. And we'll see just who the real killer is. Huh? Bow your head and kneel, lawyer. So your head may be parted from your shoulders. Huh? Look, the trial's not even over. Yeah, she totally has a wind fan. What the hell? How soon you forget? You are already on the headsman's scaffold. As such, I could order your beheading at any moment. Uh, no. Um, all I did was request a DNA test. There is no need to request such a test. Royal Guard, bring it forth now. Here you are, your eminence. The police already identified the source of the bloodstain. The DNA test revealed that the blood is of the traitor, Dirk Sadmadi. That doesn't make any sense. No? What? But Dirk wasn't injured, so where did his blood come from? Maybe he coughed it up. Dirk's illness. Still, there was a lot of blood. Could he have really coughed up that much? Did he wipe it up to hide his failing health? Dirk, is it really that bad? What the fuck? Ah, shoot, you got me. What, did my, oh my, are you fucking kidding me? <sighs> Guys, like, I, I hate this part of this game where they're just dragging you around in fucking circles. And it's like, oh no, that's not right. It, oh, no, that evidence doesn't work because that's actually this guy's, but he didn't say anything because why the fuck would he actually say anything that would be helpful? Like, Jesus Christ. Pay attention, Horn Devil, for this case has already been solved. You claim that this bloodstain would lead us to the real killer, did you not? Um, about that. Yeah. Did you or did you not make that claim of your own volition defense? Yes, I did. After she steered you in that direction, that is. Ugh! I fell right into her trap. Hmm. <laughs> Do you see now the folly in opposing the very embodiment of the law? Whatever you say or do shall come to no avail. A third party at the scene of the crime? It's beyond the realm of possibility. No. Praise be. Whatever. I hate to say this, but she really got us good. The key to Amara's sarcophagus is under the protection of the royal family. My husband and I are the only ones who could open it. Mm, is that right? Hi, cat. The lesson is to never be a lawyer. Yeah, that, that is true. Also, hi, mom. Yeah, she definitely has something to hide, especially since she's like, I'm just going to change the laws and literally nobody can do anything about it. And they're not going to question it because I'm the queen. And I'm like, no, that's I hate that. Therefore, it would be impossible for some knave to open it unless you gave them the key. Can I really discount the sarcophagus as a hiding place, though? What if the real killer's still in there? No, that's just ridiculous, is it? I mean, she doesn't give a shit about her own daughter. Why would she give a shit about somebody, like, freezing to death in there? I believe we have rebels and sympathizers in the gallery today. It is to you I speak. Have you been listening, Dirk Saudmati, the one who proclaimed a bloodless revolt? Huh. Has betrayed your cause by resorting to murder. No, it can't be. Dirk would never. You're heading back to work. Oh, okay. This isn't gonna. Were you just on break? Defiant Dragons and their sympathizers are starting to have doubts. So this is why Garan allowed us to cross-examine Dirk. 
By establishing his guilt in Inga's murder, she's effectively damaged his reputation among those who support him. Uh, true, but now we have an even bigger problem. And now, filthy lawyers, you will honor your end of the bargain. Accept your guilty verdict for your failure to explain your client's actions. And no. Huh? Now I shall pass judgment upon the criminal Dur Dirk Sodmadhi. Budget came out perfect. Nice. What this you shall pass judgment? Uh, but your eminence, is that my, my role? Hold your tongue. You are but a figurehead before me, the embodiment of law. Consider yourself dismissed. What? Uh, no? No, what? I pet loaded the video. You missed whatever you said to me, Chaos. I said hello and that you're awesome. Are you in bed now? As Queen of Karain, I shall now pass judgment upon the accused. Wow, guilty, but you can't do that. Yeah, that isn't how that works at all. Judge. Judge, help. Judge. Man, I love these parts where everything is, it's just like 30 seconds of camera panning. Objection. Wait, wait, wait. You didn't even give me a chance to rebut. <laughs> but. No, when you are defeated, lawyer. But just this once, I am willing to show you the depths of my compassion. There, it doesn't exist. Tell me why I should allow these proceedings to continue. Come, convince me. C quick, Apollo, even if you have to bluff, we gotta keep this trial going. He's like yelling, even if you have to lie, keep it going. Show her that the crime could have been committed by a third party. How am I supposed to do that? Oh, um, uh, why don't you start with the, uh, uh, how about the timing of Inga's murder? What? Okay. This whole case is built on a single premise. That Inga was murdered after Dirk entered the tomb. But what if that's not true? Like, if our assumptions are all wrong? Hmm, this might work. Mm -hmm. Well, don't keep us waiting, defense. Um, Dirk became the prime suspect. Is Dirk a jerk? Actually, Dirk is good. Dirk is good dad man. Although, he yeah, I, he was really annoying me during the investigation because he kept telling me some cryptic bullshit. And I'm like, dude, just tell me the truth. How are you doing today, Sif? The real jerk is the lady across the room with the big fan. She's really mean. Because it didn't seem probable that was a third party of the scene of the crime. But there is another question we should ask ourselves at this time. Was Minister Inga really killed after Dirk entered the tomb? What nonsense is this? You should eat, or how do you change schedule? 12 hours with, oh no! Oh, I'm sorry, Sif. That sucks. Mm, mm, mm. Setting aside the assumptions that the murder occurred after Dirk arrived on the scene, opens up the possibility of a third party committing the crime. See, so you miss all your streams, Ah. That's, God, I'm sorry. Hopefully you still at least have ample time to rest and all that. Yeah, she is terrible. Like, I thought Inga was bad, but man, this lady is crazy. Yeah, before Dirk entered the tomb, obviously. Isn't it possible that before Dirk even set foot in the tomb, Minister Inga was already dead? Hmm, that would certainly make the possibility of a third party more probable. Why, of course! I fell unconscious right after I entered the tomb. Even if I hadn't, I wouldn't have had a clear line of sight to his body from the entrance. Which means... Oh. You wouldn't have noticed his body either way! It's been a long time since I stubbed my toe, which is probably good. I try to keep aware of things, because I have a lot of pointy, hard things on the ground. This scenario is entirely possible. So we can't rule out the possibility of a third person committing the crime. I see. Well, that certainly does make sense. So far, so good. This might actually work. 
Very well. I shall play along with whatever little game you have knocking around in that tiny mind. Cabinet, it was... Oh, yeah, now. I was starting to get quite bored of all this. I could do with a distraction. Yes! Let us hear some testimony that will shed light on when exactly the ministry was slain. Bailiff, summon Rafa. Surely she has recovered by now. Uh, but, but, but what about me? Don't I serve a purpose anymore? Oh, poor judge. Hope you're feeling better, your benevolence. Must I perform the divination seance? What? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, we merely require testimony this time. How could my testimony be of any value? Your benevolence? Princess Rafa seems awfully depressed. After what she's been through, summoning her again is like rubbing salt in the wound. Being unable to perform the seance was probably the last straw. Hope she doesn't pass out again. Prosecutor Sadmadhi, may I ask you something? Of course, your benevolence. I am, um, I've been meaning to ask you this since yesterday. Did you know about Queen Amara and, and about me? From where did you hear such a thing? From mother, and only yesterday. Rafa was carrying on t about telling the truth to the people. So I told her, I told her what the truth really was. For it is up to a mother to discipline her child. I see. Be as it may, your benevolence, it has no bearing upon our trial here today. Why no you yeah, he's back because he's always back. <sighs> so, there's no need to let it trouble you. I know. Garon told Rafa about something other than Amara's status? Sounds like it, but what could it be? Rafa, the defense has proposed something preposterous. They somehow think your father was already dead when Dirk entered the tomb. But I believe you can prove them wrong. Are you prepared to do what is required of you? But she's terrible. She's just terrible. Yes, I'm ready to testify. She wants to use that to like chop off our heads. I don't like that. Well then, your benevolence, your testimony if you please. Look at the judge be like, you're still here, sir? What Rafa witnessed. Okay, Inga's private quarters, Rafa's quarters, tomb. On the day of the murder, I was gazing upon the courtyard from my second floor veranda. Around 2.30 p.m., I saw my father heading for Amara's tomb. Then at about 2.45, I saw Barbed Head and company enter the courtyard. I saw no one go in or out of the tomb after my father entered at about 2.30. And that person was is still in the tomb, maybe. Your second floor veranda? Ah, yeah, that's true. Oh, she must be talking about that house facing Inga's private res residence. So that's the location from which you saw your father. And at about 2.30. Yes, and shortly after that, you people arrived at the royal residence. So after the minister entered Amara's tomb around 2.30, no one went in or out of there until the murder was discovered? The tomb is closed off to outsiders, so no one could have snuck in before the murder. <laughs> that rules out any possibility of a third party lying in wait to slay my poor husband. Or so she'd like us to believe. Now hear me, you useless lawyer. Cease this charade and bow before me, for I, Queen Garan, shall finally have your head. Ugh. Forgive me, your eminence, but first, let us allow the defense to question the witness. Damn. D d just tell her. No, bitch. Not today. What Rafa witnessed.
I hate the fact that I already saw this, but they make me- I can't, like, I can't skip. I can't- I, Like, I can only go back- Oh, no, there we go. Now I can, all of a sudden. Oh, no, it's because it's not a new statement. Like, Jesus, I already saw- I already saw that. Like, why do they have to purposefully slow it down? I can read very fast. I don't need this. Press. Hold it. Hold it. Tell me what I need to know. Does your father seem different or troubled in any way? Hmm, let me think. Oh, there was one unusual thing. Uh, there was? Yes, a shriek emanated from within my father's quarters. After which I witnessed him bolt outside, his countenance drained of its usual color. He screamed and he was looking pale. What do you suppose... What do you... I know not. Perhaps he had a bad dream. Maybe it was a nightmare being raked over the coals by the queen. Because I can read fast, avoided cat. And she literally just said all this. So the fact that I have to, like, wait for it to fully just go across the screen instead of just, like, skipping through it is really annoying. Like, you gotta remember, I'm streaming this. And I've been streaming this for almost six hours now. So it's just like, I want this to be fucking over. Like, that's the thing. I just want to get through this. And I'm still reading all of the important bits and all that. But like, all of the flashbacks, all the silences, having to watch it slowly go through the text that I literally just saw. It's like, it's like a slap in the face. It's really annoying. Seems our young lawyer wishes to hasten his journey to the Twilight Realm. Sorry, uh, sorry, that was rude of me, you dumb hoe. Does the defense believe the witness's last statement to be important? I believe it is. I would like the witness to add it to her testimony. No, it's probably just because my lights. Hey, Google. Uh, increase office lights to 80%. Probably a little bit better, I guess. I don't know. It's because I have I have the uh, ISO of the camera turned down, so I'm not like blinding light like white when the um, when the sun shines. But right now the sun's gone down because you know it's almost eight o'clock at night. So, and we did go through daylight savings time, so it gets darker earlier. Father let out a scream and came dashing out of his room, face pale. Press. More purple. Hmm, why do you think he screamed? Was he surprised by someone who didn't belong here? Or belong there? Did anyone else come out? I, I, I didn't see anyone else, just my father. That last statement was seriously lacking in conviction. Should I press her on this? Press harshly. Your benevolence! Let's have some details. The more, the better. D details, you say? Yes, for example, are you sure you didn't see anyone in the royal residence before 2.30? Well, is that a yes or a no? Eek! For foreign devil, I had been gazing upon the courtyard since about two yesterday. Yet I saw none other than my father. Oh, if only I had stopped him then. I think you've struck a nerve, or rather, obliterated one. Maybe I pressed a little too hard. Still, that last statement seemed a little off somehow. So you didn't see anyone except your father in the courtyard after 2 p.m., huh? Please add that to your testimony, your benevolence. I had been gazing upon the courtyard since about two, but father was the only one I saw. Da, 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 da. Excuse me, I've got... I'll be statement! Objection. That's a lie! Your benevolence. You're covering for someone, aren't you? Huh? I... I don't know what you're talking about. Sorry, Rafa, but you're not gonna like this. Well, the thing is, I have a statement here that you might find interesting. It's from a witness who claims that around 2 p.m. his dog got loose and ran into the palace courtyard. 
That's when the little fellow stole this hat from someone. Ah, that's... that's Nana's. I mean, n nothing, never mind. Ah, uh, come on. You fool of a daughter. Seems the princess made a blunder. Um, so let me get this straight. This is Nana's hat, which means she had to have been in the royal residence around two. If so, then you had to have seen Nana sometime after 2 p.m. yesterday. Ooh, no! Okay, okay, we're getting somewhere, I think. Please, your benevolence, tell us what you really saw. Uh, uh. It is as you say, Hornhead. I, I saw Nana, and I saw that, that dingbat dog steal her hat from her in front of my father's residence. I knew it! Why didn't you say so in the first place? Oh, hello. Sorry, a small spider just like came here and then like crawled down my leg, so. Yeah, Hornhead is Apollo. Um, Barbhead is uh, Phoenix. What? Yeah, why didn't you say so in the first place? But because um my mother told me not to. What? Would you care to explain your eminence? I requested that she withhold said information for it is of no relevance to this case. Objection. You don't get to decide. Such insolence! Shut up. If you disagree, then prove that it is relevant to the case at hand. Oh, I will. Yeah, at first I thought it was like, I was like, something's falling and I was like, oh, it's a tiny spider. Your benevolence, please tell us everything you witnessed when you saw Nana. Uh, all right. When I saw that dingbat dog attack Nana, I ran to help. I raced from my second floor veranda down to the courtyard. Wait, that means that while you were coming down, you took your eyes off the courtyard. Yes, but only for a moment. Huh. This is crucial testimony. If you took your eyes off the courtyard, it means someone else could have entered the tomb without you ever knowing. Ah! Your benevolence, are you sure no one else was there? I wanted the puppy skin, aw. Uh, oh, uh, yes. She's hiding something again. What about Nana? Were you able to help her? When I got down to the courtyard, Nana was... She was gone. Gone? Yes, and I never saw her again after that. Any idea what happened? The, that dingbat dog must have gobbled her up! That's not an option. I seriously doubt that. But how could Nana simply disappear while Rafa wasn't looking unless she went inside... of... Uh, there. Yeah, where she disappeared to? Do you have any idea where Nana disappeared to? What do you mean? Well, during the time you took your eyes off the courtyard, someone could have headed into the tomb. And it just so happens that Nana disappeared right at that moment. Well, you might have to wait two hours, because remember, this game... This game takes forever to get to the point. No! Wait a second, you think Nana had something to do with the murder? I don't think we can rule it out. It sounds like something had kept Nana occupied since early morning. Plus, she was seen right before the murder and then seemed to vanish into thin air. You're right! And since she's Rafa's attendant, she could have come and go as she pleased within the palace grounds. Could Rafa's attendant really be the killer? But that would mean... First my father, and now Nana? These were the people I trusted most. How could this be? Objection. You read Tomb as Womb? Yeah. We, enter we all entered the womb together, Ellie. A party of womb-goers. Hmm. Do not heed their lies. Lawyers are a foul breed, quick to claim that a third party is to blame for a crime. 
Nana did not enter the tomb. That much is certain. How do you know? How can you be so sure? When Nana's hat was stolen, that crazed curse spilled an urn full of water upon my husband's doorstep. Is that not right, Rafa? Yes, yes it is. Because she's evil. While that dingbat dog was tugging on Nana's hat, it tipped over the urn. The bottoms of her shoes would have been soaked with water. And if she had truly headed into the tomb with wet shoes, don't go into the womb with wet shoes. That's just unsanitary. She would have left shoe prints along the way. But the only shoe prints to be found belong to my husband, Inga. She flew. Huh? Then then... What if she wore Inga's shoes? That's right, Nana never did go into the tomb that day. Instead, she entered my husband's private quarters. How do you know? It's quite simple. Oh, is it the muddy footprints we saw? Shoe prints were discovered in Inga's private quarters. Shoe prints that belonged to Nana. That's right, Edgeworth and I did, did see some sh uh, shoe prints in there. Now do you understand? Nana could not possibly have gone into the tomb. And that supposed third party at the crime scene is but a figment of your imagination. Ugh. Another glorious uh, uh, shut up, Royal Guard! Fuck you! Get out of here! Good, get out of here. Can those guys fanboy any harder? But is it really true? Did Nana not go into the tomb? Uh, excuse me, but. Mr. Wright? Your benevolence, what time was it when that dog attacked Nana? I believe it was about 2.15. I see. Apollo, Nana entered Inga's private quarters at around 2.15, and Inga came racing out at 2.30, pale-faced and screaming, then... Ah, I know what you're getting at! Yes, that might explain his scream. Would the defense please share their theory regarding Justice Minister Inga's scream? Uh, certainly, Your Majesty. Minister Inga screamed because... Uh, he had a bad dream. He was attacked by Nana. He saw a ghost! I bet he saw a ghost. Maybe he was attacked by Nana. Maybe he was attacked by Nana. This would make the Justice Minister's private quarters the real scene of the crime. Does your idiocy know no bounds? The minister's body was found in the tomb. Are you suggesting the body was moved? Do I think the minister was moved from his private quarters? I think the possibility exists. Considering the fact that the body was found in the tomb, I'd say there's a possibility. Hmm, what utter nonsense. Rafa had been watching the courtyard. Yet, you would suggest that someone could have transported the body unnoticed. Y you have a point there. The syringe on the table is his, um, his painkillers, but at the same time, it could have been replaced with something else. In that case, I'd say there's no way the body was moved. After all, there was an awful lot of blood in the tomb. I understand if the scream was in reaction to Nana's attack, but Inga died in the tomb. We need to explain how those two realities could coincide. How are we supposed to do that? Oh, maybe... Maybe where he was stabbed and where he died were two completely different locations. What do you mean? Yeah, I mean, it looks like a pretty big needle, too. It's just... Let's look at this, uh, at this simply as a possibility. If the minister's body wasn't moved, he might have been stabbed by Nana in his private quarters, but then died in the tomb. Hmm? Okay, yeah, we get it. We've talked, we keep saying this. I see, on the one hand, that seems plausible, but on the other, it seems decidedly implausible. Prosecutor Sadmati, what is that fool babbling on about now? Is this a riddle from one of those fortune cookies Americans seem so fond of? Perhaps, but I believe he himself does not know what he means to say. In all likelihood, it was a poor attempt to confuse us. We should simply ignore it. 
I wasn't finished yet, so hold off on the analysis, would you? The autopsy report never stated that the minister's death was instantaneous, so he could have conceivably moved from one place to another after being stabbed. Oh my, are you? Are you suggesting that he ran all the way to the tomb with a knife sticking out of his back? Well, yes, uh, that's the gist of it. In short, Minister Inga saw Nana with a knife, let out a scream, and when he turned his back to her to flee, Right, and that's when he was stabbed from behind. Well, your majesty, does my theory hold water? Insolence. I'm not talking to you, you're not the majesty. How dare you bore me like this? Huh? You are a humorless moron spewing an endless stream of unamusing drivel. I wasn't trying to be funny, your eminence. Prosecutor, enlighten this ignorant clown in lawyer's clothing. Your eminence? Ha! Uh... Nayuta? You dull, slow-witted, putrid-minded lawyer. Perhaps you would be so too stupid to notice you had been stabbed in the back. But a normal person would have noticed due to the excruciating pain. Ah, uh, ha, 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 but not if that pain had been dulled by a super strong dose of numbing agent. Yeah. Now, hold on. Allow me to teach you the meaning of pain. Ha! Ah, please stop! God, why are these... Now, you has a point. Normally, most people would notice a dagger in their back. Oh, yeah, I doubt someone could ignore pain like this. Still, in this case, it's the word normally that we should emphasize. Apollo, take another look at the court record. Uh, right, there must be something that explains this. There's a reason Inga didn't feel any pain, and the defense will submit evidence proving just that. Because he's a monster. Yeah, not even the butterfly wants it. This is true. Very well, please present your evidence. Why didn't Justice Minister Inga notice that he had been stabbed? Because he had a super potent, stabby painkiller. Ah, those are my father's painkiller shots. The defense will explain the significance of this evidence. Minister Inga suffered from terrible back pain, so he often injected himself with these. We're told that one shot in the back would make all his pain go away. With this, it's easy to explain what happened. Don't tell me you didn't know about these, your eminence. You can't mean. Yeah, slapper. With the truth. Minister Ingda was stabbed in his back, close to where he usually injected the painkillers. Therefore, it's entirely possible that he hadn't noticed that he had been stabbed. What? What's this? Okay, yeah, yeah, camera pan, very cool. Then, then... Are you suggesting Justice Minister Inga really ran off with a knife protruding from his back? I am, Your Majesty. So then, when I saw my father... He had a knife sticking out of him? I mean, with that cape of his, I couldn't see his back very well. Yes, the knife was there. It was just plunged in so deep, you didn't notice it under the cape. Therefore, when you saw your father, he was already dead. Oh man, Fist of the North Star. Murdered by Nana in his private quarters. Paul Coca! That's their surprise word, I guess. Holy mother of Karain! Are we dealing with the living dead here? Well, technically he wasn't dead yet. That doesn't make it any better, Phoenix. I know it's hard to believe, but this is a plausible sequence of events. And once Minister Inger arrived at the tomb, he could have removed the knife and dropped dead from blood loss. Nana killed my father? There must be some mistake. I bet you she, or your mother ordered it, though. 
The defense would like to call Nana to the stand. I bet Nana is like dead and frozen in that freaking sarcophagus. You seek to drag an innocent old woman to the stand with no proof whatsoever. Well, uh, there's no real proof, but, uh, hmm. What a tangled web of expedient lies you weave. I can no longer tell fact from fiction. Who or what shall I believe in now? I'm sorry, Rafa. All I've done is confuse you, but... I have a sneaking suspicion that Nana's involvement in this case, it, uh, yeah, her involvement in this case, one way or another. <sighs> Just when I thought we'd blown this case wide open. Well, there's no turning back now. You fool of a lawyer. I know why you're so desperate to prove the accused innocent. Uh, you do? Yes, because he faces public execution if proven guilty as shall you under the stipulations of the Defense Culpability Act. From the moment you accepted this case, you have had no choice but to fight for your lives. That's not it. No, eh, the simple fact is I've always believed in that Dirk is innocent. Bah! Still you cling to your pretense. Very well, I shall offer you a bargain. If you would admit that the accursed accused is guilty right here, right now, I shall overlook your crime of abetting him, and you will not be subject to execution. Is this some sort of joke? Far from it. As queen, I have the power to grant pardons, even to criminals like you. And with the wave of my hand, I can even reduce the severity of a sentence. Perhaps even for Dirk, should you be willing to cooperate. She wasn't kidding when she said that she's the law here. But to flaunt that power in our faces like that, that's just wrong. Forget all that ha all that has transpired in our kingdom and return to your own country in peace. Well, will you abandon your defense of the accused and accept my generous offer? If I don't take this deal, we'll be executed along with Dirk if he's found guilty. What should I do? Uh, what do you think we're gonna do, you dumb fuck? We're continuing. Why even give me that choice? If, yeah, game over, that's what I want. No, fuck you, yeah. We won't kowtow to threats like that, your eminence. Mr. Wright, I'm sorry, but I can't back down now. Well, I was gonna slap you if you did anyway. I don't want to drag you into this, so don't worry. I'm with you, Apollo, to the bitter end if need be. And while I can't say I'm used to it, this isn't exactly my first rodeo. <laughs> yeah, remember that time, Albi? Uh, yeah, I remember that time. Yes, yes, the liar's a liar, so I understand you don't believe me. But I still believe in you and your innocence. Oh, Albi! Oh, so, oh. Thank you for that flashback. So keep on fighting, Apollo. You didn't see any of that that happened because that was all in my head, but whatever. You'll hear no objections from me. You, you nincompoops. You'll die if you lose this case. Why would you even entertain the notion of continuing? I believe that Dirk is innocent. That's why. And besides, trials exist to give the truth a chance to get out into the open. You can't give up just because you're afraid of some punishment. Even if that punishment is death? Does that not frighten you, Hornhead? It wouldn't be scared. I mean, just thinking about it. Ah, uh, it makes me weak in the knees, to be honest. Uh, does anybody have a change of underwear? But as a lawyer, I have a duty to protect my client. I can't just abandon that. <gasps> a duty you're willing to die for? And yet, I... I... Duty. It's a heavy burden, all right. Rafa looks like she's really struggling. Oh boy, it's the same as Crown Prince. Yeah, you. Man. If I had a counter, if, if I took a drink every time that there was a flashback, just in the stream alone, you guys would see me going to the hospital live. Yeah, it's so. It's like she, we just saw a flashback. 
But it's no surprise considering the torrent of painful truths she had to face. Yes, okay. Very well, then. If the defense is prepared to face the death sentence under the Defense Culpability Act, then I see no reason not to continue with the proceedings. But I must admit, I see no grounds for doubting the accused's guilt. Unless the defense has further evidence that would indicate a different suspect. Do we have anything like that? Well, lawyer, do you have any new evidence you would care to present? Or shall I have the executioner start his preparations? She thinks I can't do this. She's got another thing coming, and it's my head. But first, I have some serious thinking to do. Say that new evidence indicating a different suspect does not exist. Such evidence does not exist. Hmm, just as I thought. I was hoping you'd present meaningless evidence and allow me to claim your head. But I didn't walk head first into that one then. So what now, Apollo? Well, unless we can prove that Nana killed Inga, this trial is over. So are we. Isn't there still a way to get the proof we need? Even without evidence? You know, a key means of obtaining testimony here in Crane? Huh? Wait, are you actually suggesting? It certainly won't be easy, but it's worth a try. Uh, your Majesty. A crucial step in uncovering the truth behind this case has yet been to be taken in this trial. But I'm positive that I can back up our claim with this one step. You mean you'll be able to prove that Nana killed Justice Minister Inga? And just how do you propose to do that? With the help of a certain someone. You need help? From someone? Well, I can't imagine who it could be. Uh, but I suppose I must ask. Whose help do you need to uncover the truth? Trucy, we need your magic panties. No, it's not Trucy. It's that dang old Rafa Padma Karain. But that is me. Here in Karain, legal proceedings include the viewing of the victim's final moments, but that requires your benevolence's help. Such information is just as vital as any other piece of conclusive evidence. If you're right about this, Rafa's power should enable her to see the very moment Nana stabbed Inga. It'll be hard to watch your father's murder, but it's the only way to uncover the truth. Your benevolence, we need you and your power! You need me? Wretched simpleton! Did you not see what ensued in the previous attempt? You would only succeed in wasting more time. Or is it your goal to make her collapse again? Objection! The princess said she was prepared earlier. Besides, it's her duty as royal priestess. I'd say it's all up to her now. Yeah, exactly. Am I prepared? Prepared to fulfill my duty? Isn't a divination sans required at all trials anyway? Hmm. If so, I imagine there'd be a problem with handing down a verdict without one. Hmm, indeed. It would be problematic. Under Karani's law, a seance must be conducted before a verdict can be rendered. Insolence. Yikes! I'll change the law right now, because I can do that! Hmm, must you try my patience so? If I must dispense with that vexing law, then dispense with it I shall. Huh? As ruling sovereign of Korain, I proclaim the following. Jeez, what? No, the, you didn't even use a pen. Henceforth, the divination sound shall be optional. What? She has the power to do that? She just rewrote the law with a flourish of her hand. Aha, uh -huh. Rafa, you know. M mother I... I I do not wish for the trial to end like this. It is as the defense said, I must not neglect my duty simply because I am afraid. I shall go through with it this time. I will conduct the seance once more. Rafa, do not be fooled by his lorely guile. You are not prepared to witness your father's death. You certainly seemed like she was prepared for it earlier. 
But Hornhead needs my help. Rafa, did you not tell me earlier? Did you not tell me you were prepared? But despite your grand joy's po posturing, you collapsed in a most piteous fashion. <clears throat> Even worse, you have erred in your insights of late. For has not the barbed one there overturned them more than once? Ugh. You cannot be trusted to keep your word, nor can you reveal the truth through your insights. So I say to you, begone! This sacred hall of justice has no need for such a worthless royal priestess. Ouch, worthless? Wow, how can she say that to her own daughter? She's a bitch! So mother, you think me worthless? Okay, please, 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 I'm so tired of the ellipses! Um, her benevolence says she can do it, doesn't she? So I don't see why you have to condemn her before she's even made an attempt. Oh my god, seriously, why is this the entire fucking game now? Very well, Horned Devil. If you really are so bent on having a seance, I shall give my consent. Really? However, should Rafa fail once more, you're immediately dead. You know, you said, yep, exact, I knew it. What else is she gonna say? Come again. Uh, it's proving to be far more entertaining than I anticipated. The game would, I know, it would probably even more than that, to be honest. What say you? We're gonna do it. Will you wager your life? Yeah, call on Rafa. Fuck you. I don't think you're worthless, your benevolence. Far from it, in fact. If you say you can do it, then I believe in you. Hornhead, I do not understand. If I fail, you will be put to death. I know you collapsed during your previous attempt. Yeah, I remember that. Wow, cool. Let's just watch this chick, like, have a fucking panic attack again. Thanks, Capcom. I, I totally forgot about that. Can't even imagine how terrible it must have been for you. But despite that, you are willing to try again. I have faith in that conviction, in that courage. My, my courage? Ah, so she was doomed to fail if she didn't have the courage to perform the seance. But it looks like she's got the determination to try again. Determination, just like Undertale. Right, and that's a bet I'm willing to take. But... It is as Mother said, I've erred in my insights as of late. Not only have I failed to reveal the truth, I've also contributed to false accusations. It's actually really good. I am being an absolutely horrible person though, and I'm doing a true genocide run, and it's not fun, to say the least. Knowing that, can you still say that you believe in me? I wouldn't take stock in those words, your benevolence. Despite what your mother says, I don't think you've made any errors at all. Huh? In the trials I've been a part of here in Karain, I would have never proven my client's innocence without your seances. Because even though they didn't always reflect the absolute truth, the insight they provided served as vital leads to finding the truth. Vital leads? My seances? So please, your benevolence, try to perform the divination seance one more time. I... I... Shut up! God, this back and forth is pissing me off. Rafa, stop this madness. It is for your own good. You are ill prepared to face your father's death. Go, leave this sacred hall at once. No, bitch. No, say it, say it, say it. No, that's right. What did you say? I said no, mother. For I am the royal priestess of Karain. I have no need for you now. Even if you do not need me, mother. They do. Yay! Oh, man. Hornhead in this Hall of Justice do. He proved to me that to me risking his own life. Yeah, that needed exactly. It is because of him that I now understand. 
the divination seance is my sacred duty. I shall fulfill it no matter what the risk. Okay, good. Get, start dancing, please. I'm ready for the next part. Your benevolence? Mother taught me that the divination seance was a mirror reflecting naught but the truth, but I began to have my doubts after Barbed had disproved the insights it offered. And now, I don't even know who or what to trust anymore. Father, mother, even Nana, I had believed in them all, uh, above all others. But I finally know now. I know in what I can trust. Oh, please. Priestess must debate each seance with the presiding lawyer and prosecutor. Yeah. Uh, we could have just said that and been done with it and so that it can be interpreted properly. That is how I believe trials here in Karain should function. Good! Therefore, the Hall of Justice needs me. It is my power that leads trials towards the truth. That is my sacred duty. And I will never shirk from it again. Ah, uh, that right there, your benevolence, is the product of what you've learned in your struggle so far. The truth that you realize with your own strength. As my sacred duty, I must ensure that it is fulfilled. I must have the courage and resolve to see it through. Uh, your eminence, the royal priestess says she will conduct the divination seance. I see no grounds for you to forbid it. Unless, of course, you are worried that it might reveal something you find inconvenient. Probably. Mother, I am done letting you have your way. Rafa, you would actually rebel against me, your mother and queen? Though I am scared to see my father's death, I must face my fear. That is what Hornhead has taught me here today. Rafa. Okay, um. I am the royal priestess, Rafa Padma Kurain. Oh, she didn't- oh no! She didn't let me take her thingy! And I am prepared to face my father's death! Yay! I'm skipping the dance though, because we already saw it once. Your eminence, it seems the princess is more grown up than you've thought. Rafa? Well then, let us proceed with the divination seance! The victim's final moments. This should be interesting. Oh, I would hate that. I wonder what Inga's memories are going to show us. Oh, holy mother. We hold this divination seance in your yeah, name. Oh, cat, come on. I, it's like they've done it like ten times throughout this game. Let the eyes <laughs> I, I thought you were here earlier when she did it the first time. I'm just, if cat, I've been streaming for six and a half hours and I'm not even a third of the way through this trial. So that we may receive I can always show it to you later. In the pool of souls. Yeah, I know you've said that like ten, like, I don't know. Hup. <laughs> Don't worry. Like, holy crap. I feel like I'm going to be, like, at this for 10 hours, like, when I finish Dual Destinies. Grapes. Incense. Sour. Book. Mother. Footsteps. Footsteps. Man's voice. Footsteps. Pain. Footsteps. Durr. Where's your face? Pain. Explosion. Laughter? What is happening? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Uh, what in the? Yeah, who uses explosions? A faceless being? Um, what the heck? Yeah, that was just a tire. His face, it's just like... The picture of the founder! Hmm. I think that's the last thing anyone expected to see. Oh, Father, what was it? What was it that you saw? What was it that the victim saw? Yes, there can be no mistake. That was what my father himself witnessed. Oh, hmm, how very strange. You don't suppose, uh... The Holy Mother possessed the, uh... Accused and slew Minister Inga for planning a coup. The Divine Wrath of the Holy Mother? Oh, Holy Mother! Talk about a sharp left turn into the Twilight Zone. You know, there's one thing in there that caught my attention. That laugh! Who does it belong to and why are they laughing? Who knows, though I suppose it could be Dirk after he slew my husband. Uh, that figure didn't even have a mouth. Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was like, what's going on? Dun, dun. I think we're done here, lawyer. How so? Uh, you claim that Minister Inga s was stabbed in his private quarters. And feeling no pain, went to the tomb where he eventually fell dead. But this seance vision proves he was stabbed in the tomb and felt no and, and felt great pain, no less. Oh, that. Therefore, as I asserted all along, it was the accused who stabbed the minister in the tomb. Ugh, everything just backfired big time. I witness these quotes. Oh, yeah, that was from, um, the, we got the jellyfish out of his mom. That, that came from, um, Nino Kuni. Because you actually get a jellyfish out of someone's mom. Well, she's like, she's a fairy, and, and she's huge, and there's a weird jellyfish thing. Inside of her. Don't worry about it. Wow, Garan has the devil's own luck, doesn't he? Now then, I shall give voice to the soul of the deceased. Listen well and heed these words. Insight. Da, da, da. Around 3 p.m., my father was waiting in the tomb to make the hostage exchange. He was drinking grape juice while gazing upon the picture of the Holy Mother. He had been waiting vigilantly when suddenly he heard Dirk's voice. The next moment, he was stabbed in the back and collapsed. My father tried to shoot his attacker, but he missed, and the attacker let out a laugh. There we go. Um, so what now, Mr. Wright? 
It's up to us to knock holes in Rafa's interpretations of Inga's memories. Da, 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 da. Okay. Oh wait, uh just a second. Here. In case anybody had missed it, this is the very first one, which I think has like a little bit more detail in it to it than later ones, but that's the divination seance stance that she does. In other words, we need to prove that her understanding of them could be mistaken. Sorry, that's why I was a little preoccupied, because I was trying to find it in, like, the sea of video. It was, like, four hours, so I'm like, I'm gonna... I'll give it a try. Okay. How many ellipses will be in it? A lot. Um... Wait, what are the other? Green grape juice. He had been waiting vigilantly when he suddenly heard Dirk's voice. Up. Oh. Um, select. Sound. Objection. Your benevolence, there seems to be an inconsistency in your interpretation. An inconsistency? Where? Minister Inga is far too relaxed for what was supposedly about to take place. When he heard the voice you claim is Dirk's, he didn't seem the least bit alarmed. He just kept looking at the picture of the founder. Oh yeah, because he had his phone. He had a phone. Ah. That's strange, right? He was waiting for Dirk to arrive with the founder's orb. But when he heard that voice, he didn't even turn to look. Don't you think, uh... He would have been worried about being attacked from behind? Dog! Th then whose voice was it? It was likely someone whose presence wouldn't have alarmed him. Someone like... A friend. Okay, well, objection. But there was no third party. Oh god, therefore the voice can only have belonged to Dirk. Why is it auto going now? The voice of a third party wasn't there in the tomb. Apollo, don't we have something that could reveal the owner of the mystery voice? Okay, that was weird. Sometimes it just auto scrolls. Yeah, or his wife with a voice modulator. I don't know. You know, I think we do. Something that Inga had while he was waiting for Dirk. With it, we just might be able to figure out whose voice it was. Oh, wait, the cell phone's not its own separate thing, is it? Uh, where's the crime scene photo? Yeah, the phone's right there. Take that! That's my father's... Uh, I know this must be hard for you, but could you please look at this photo? There's something here that can point us towards the identity of the voice. Is it the show of the voice? This is the real source of the man's voice. The gun! The knife? It speaks to me sometimes. No! The phone! A, a cell phone? Right, I believe that the voice the minister heard was of a call on his cell phone. I see, well that certainly makes sense. What is your eminence's view on this matter? I concede the possibility. Wow, the first time she actually conceded to literally anything. Hmm, then I, seems I must refine my vision. Yeah, let's not talk to her. Support his voice, footsteps. It appears that the voice belonged to one of my father's subordinates. Why do you suppose he was talking to one of them? My father had members of the secret police position throughout the palace. They were supposed to contact him as soon as they saw Dirk and the rest of you. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Your benevolence, I believe you have an insight to revise. 
I know, barbed head. Don't presume to tell me how to do my duty. You know you love me, don't worry. Everybody loves Phoenix. My father then took a call from a subordinate at the palace. The voice was coming from the phone. That's good to know. But there might have been other sounds coming from the phone. Sounds that could be clues. Take another look at Rafa's insights and really focus on the various sensations. Okay. I think I'm getting the hang of this now. In the next moment, like, everything's on fire. Never mind. I don't have the hang of it. So that, okay. Take a... Phone, footsteps, incense, subordinate's voice, lot, lion's roar, boom, ba boom, 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 where have we heard a lion's roar before? Maybe from the thingy at the bazaar? Oh, present. Objection. I hate to break it to you, your benevolence, but you misinterpreted something again. What do you mean? Again? Smooth move, Apollo. I think you just hurt her feelings. <clears throat> she may put on a brave face, but she feels more than she lets on. Um, let me rephrase that, your benevolence. We saw something else. Your interpretation of your father's phone call to his subordinate at the palace is inconsistent with his final memory. What do you mean by that? A lion's roar could be heard over the phone. Don't you find that strange? You claim the call was with someone at the palace. But let me ask you, do you keep lions there? No, the only animals at the palace are little birdies and my pet frog. Wait, that giant one in front of the minister's house is our pet? I noticed that frog. I just didn't say anything about it. Besides, there aren't any lions in Korain. We don't even have any zoos. A rather sad state of affairs, I'm afraid. Oh, she wants to go to the zoo. Everybody, we need to take Rafa back to America so she can check out the zoos. Sorry about your state of not zooness. Well, I remember hearing a sound like that. The lion's roar coming from the phone is actually from something hanging out in the bazaar. Because it's the bird. Isn't that the cry of the warbot over in the bazaar? Ah. Your benevolence, do you think you can clarify the voice for me? Very well. I will now attempt to further refine my vision. What's this? It's, it didn't change. Uh, just as I suspected, it was the call of a war bod. Oh wait, I get... Yeah, how bizarre. That means the subordinate Minister Inga was talking to was in the bazaar, not the palace. But, but why is it important where the call came from? What significance could it have? She's right. It is important to know where the call was made from because, or, or is it? Yeah, it's very important. Of course it's important. Bro. I don't want to die. It's actually very important. Knowing that the person on the other end was at the bazaar means that the loud explosion might not have been the sound of a gunshot. But, 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 but I can think of no other item that makes such a noise in the area. Oh, fucking dats. Fucking dats. Go on, Apollo. Tell her. Tell Ray for the real source of that sound. Will do. Well, Hornhead, I'm waiting. What was the true source of that explosive sound? Um. Wait. Firecracker! Okay, I was like, I can't choose fucking dats. I'm surprised by... Sh okay, around 2 p.m. What is that? Uh, it's I'll be your guide's statement. 
In it, he claims that Dats Aribol threw a firecracker at him while he was at the bazaar. Then... Yes, the sound over heard over the phone was the firecracker exploding. Ah! Sorry, I was... Okay, um... It's turning... Oh man, that's like too bright. I turn that down. You have all the producer and AC? Nice! Sorry, I'm messing with my lighting. That might be a little bit better. And yeah, we'll keep it at that. And yet, a bullet was found at the scene of the crime. A bullet fired from Minister Inga's gun. How do you explain that? Well, we don't know whether it was fired during the course of the crime, right? Or do you have evidence that proves when the pistol was discharged? Hmm. No, I have none. Wait a second. If that loud bang was a firecracker, then could that laugh at the end have been it I know but that the, the the thing is live you got to remember I have been doing this for six and a half hours this is the second part of the fifth episode I already did like six and a half hours of episode that was its own investigation and trial and there's a second part this might they might as well have just made this its own like sixth episode to be honest yeah yeah and and this trial has three parts to it we're still in the first part of the trial by the way it's insane this i feel like it's just too much ah uh, no it, it can't be oh it can and it is the laugh can laughter came from none other than the Joker who got a kick out of startling Albi with his dragon snot snaps. That happy-go-lucky Dats Aribol. What? Someone should really put a leash on that guy. I shudder to think how one man can be the cause for so much trouble. <laughs> hey there, AJPW. Y'all can thank me later. Shut up, Dats. No one asked for your commentary, Mr. Aribol. Uh, your benevolence, do you need to revise your insight? It would appear so. Insight revised again. My father then took a call from a subordinate at the bazaar. The true source of that loud bang was the firecracker Dats threw. And the final lap belonged to none other than Dats himself. He changed the entire insight, basically. I can't call Larry Butts. Well, this changes everything. Let's go over the details of Rafa's insight again. Okay! I think I got this down. Now time to find another inconsistency. Sense pain. Explosion. Wait, yeah, because this is. I know, uh, that's why I'm like, man. I don't know. Like, I do want to get started on the Great Ace Attorney fairly quickly, but I might take, like, the next couple of Saturdays, I might do, like, a palate cleanser. Even though I know the Great Ace Attorney is supposed to be, like, way better than this. I'm still kind of like, man, I kind of just want to do other stuff. Da, 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 da. Wait, what? Oh, after, okay, sorry.
3 p.m. Why is there murder in this game? Why needs to be grape juice? B uh, because apparently grape juice helps with stuff. Objection! Actually, I'm not quite sure exactly. Let's see. Your benevolence. There's a glaring problem with this insight. There is? You stated that the murder happened at around 3 p.m., which is right around the time my client arrived on the scene. However, now that we know what the source of the loud bang was, your insight conflicts with a certain piece of evidence. Hmm, I suppose I have to ask the obvious here. What evidence conflicts with the claim that the murder occurred at 3 p.m.? It's all be- I hate when they do this too, where they make you use the same evidence twice, because you're like, I have all of this evidence, but this was 2 p.m. when this happened. Thought it was later, but it's only 11. Yeah, well, for me, it's almost nine, but man. I'll be your guide statement again. Yeah, that's how I feel, too. Yes, because to summarize what he said, at around 2 p.m., Shadow was surprised by a firecracker and ran into the palace courtyard. Around 2 p.m.? That's right. 2 p.m., not 3 p.m. Ah! Are you suggesting... Oh, her eyes twitching. Ah, uh, she getting she getting heated. I think you know where I'm going with this. Dats's laugh, the cry of the war bad, and the bang of the firecracker were all heard right before Minister Inga's death. Thanks to Albi's statement, we can put a definitive timestamp on all of these sounds. Therefore, what this vision shows is that it's extremely likely that the deceased's final moments were at two rather than three, as we originally thought. Oh my god. The, the problem, the other thing is we're only in part one of three of the trial, and this has already taken like two hours. So I don't know, guys, I might actually have to push this for like, god, I don't know. I really don't know how much longer this is going to go on, and I don't know if I can stand streaming the one long block if it's going to take like another four hours. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot I was daylight. Yeah, daylight savings time is a thing. For sure. Dare I ask? It means the murder took place a full hour before Dirk entered the tomb. Pokonga! Like, I want to get this over with, but I'm just like, jeez, it's already almost been seven hours. How can this be? Are you saying that I, the very personification of the law, have been mistaken? Oh, your nails are gone. Heh, <laughs> now you see why justice will always prevail. <sighs> so I don't know how fast the other ones will go, but... Peace, peace, I say. Uh, now then, defense. I must remind you that the figure of the accused was clearly shown in the vision. How do you explain that? I wouldn't say it was clearly shown. After all, the figure didn't actually have a face. Yeah, her nails all snapped off. Ah, you are absolutely right. Without a face, we can't be certain of who it was. Furthermore, need I remind you that if the vision is from 2 p.m., Dirk was still with me and Mr. Wright, which means this faceless figure couldn't possibly be him. So then what are we to make of this one hour difference? Wait, two o'clock? That's when... My mother was performing the rite of channeling. Yeah. The, the palace guards had all been reassigned to guard the channeling chamber for the rite. Don't tell me. The royal residence it would have been virtually unguarded. Which means the real killer could have easily slipped unseen into Amara's tomb. Defense, are you saying that this is someone disguised as the accused? That's exactly what I believe, your majesty. Oh, come on, get out of here. Preposterous. Disguises cannot deceive the memories of the dead. That the face did not appear this time is mere happenstance. No, you... You literally just said, no, if he thinks that that's what happened, then that's gonna, get, gonna be what's happened. It's just like when freaking Edgeworth's dad was brought back up, 
he thought this other guy killed him, even though he hadn't, because that's what he thought at the time of death, you dumb fuck. Do you not know anything about shit? God, fuck you. Doesn't Inga have facial recognition problems? I'm not really sure yet. He just needs to shut up. Had it appeared such subterfuge would have been as clear as day. No, it's his memories, you dumb shit. No, it's not. Apollo, shut up. Anyone who knows about the divination sands would have tried to hide their face. Nevertheless, our killer openly appeared before Inga. The question is why? I still spelled his name. It's okay. He's, it, that works fine. Apollo, maybe the killer could afford to be so bold because they knew their face wouldn't show up in the seance vision. What? It's possible that the killer dared to dress in Dirk's clothes and stand square in front of Inga precisely because they knew they could get away with it. But how can anyone be so sure of something like that? It was the wife! Wait, or somebody else. A long time ago, I heard of a cognitive disorder that impairs a person's ability to distinguish between different faces. What if Inga had it? Oh. Then are you saying that this literally, this is literally how Inga saw the world? Yes. We can't normally see through the eyes of others, but in this case we can. And if he had that disorder, I imagine this is how faces appear to him in life. What? Say the killer knew that Inga had such a disorder. They could definitely use it to pin the crime on Dirk, but if you're wondering about how to prove that Inga had it, you already have what you need. Really? Well, Defense, do you have anything to show that, to this court? Yeah, that is, it's, you know, Beth, that kind of makes me think of when people have the issue of like, like there are some people that literally cannot picture things like in their head. Like you can watch something and stuff, but they can't like visualize things. It's just, there's nothing. Just like people who can't like play music in their head and stuff like that. Yes, I believe so. Frankly, I have no idea what Mr. Wright means, but I'll look at the evidence again. What explains why the face of Minister Inga's killer is absent? You know, I guess I didn't really take picture. Oh. Oh. Purple hat, glasses, diamond shaped tattoo on forehead, long hair. I he never said any facial features. He never that. Oh. He never said fa he always just talked about like other distinguishing features. A notepad? Yes, it was found in Minister Inga's room. And it holds the answer we're looking for. As you can see, it's filled with detailed notes on various individuals. What kind of clothes they wear, hairstyles, and other discerning physical characteristics. And this is connected to the faceless nature of the killer. How? The vision we saw was exactly what Minister Inga saw with his own eyes. It is he who saw his killer as a person without a face. In fact, this is how he normally saw everyone around him. What's this? No, no, it's, I mean, I didn't even think about that because I, 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 I didn't put two and two together. I thought he literally got that from like correspondence. Not because that's just how he registered things. I'd buy that for a dollar. Hey, Sage, thank you so much for the hundred bits. How are you doing? I believe Minister Inga had a disorder that prevented him from recognizing faces. It would explain the faceless being and why he needed a notepad full of people's physical characteristics. Now that I think about it, my father was always terrible at remembering people. By simply changing my hairstyle, he would fail to recognize even me. You did your first street? Nice! How did it go? Phoenix already knows about it because he read about it. I mean, probably while he was like recovering from being hit by a car, you know. Your Eminence, you knew that your husband had such a disorder, didn't you? Fucking please, stop with the ellipses. He never wished for it to become public knowledge, but I suppose there's no use in keeping quiet about it now. It is as you say. Oh yeah, no, for sure. Hey. One is better than none, right? My late husband had a special disorder that hindered his ability to recognize faces. The medical term for it is prosopagnosia. I think I said that right. 
Or the time he was poisoned. Yeah, or any of those. All, all of them at once. So Mr. Wright was right! The memories of those afflicted with such disorders in life do appear strange at times. There is precedence for this. So the killer likely knew about the disorder and used it to their advantage. Right. So there's someone who is both knowledgeable about the divination seance and aware of Inga's affliction. Um, your eminence? Who knew about your husband's condition? A small number of servants who tended to his needs. And me. Surely you're not about to insinuate that I committed this crime. Oh, no, your eminence. At least not out loud. Still, could she have done it? Garan has an alibi, remember? Oh, right. She was conducting the rite of channeling at 2 p.m. Unless that wasn't her conducting the rite of channeling at 2 p.m. Maybe that's sister. In that case... Your Eminence, does Nana know about the Minister Inga's disorder? You're not to this one yet? Oh, it's... Okay, it's very good, but it's also annoying as hell, Sage, because of the fact that this case is dragging on even worse than the third case. And I get that it's the final case, but oh my god, there's just so many. I'm just like, just let me. Come on, come on. I need to figure out who did this. Physical embodiment of back pain, that too. Of course she does. She is our head servant. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean... Let me put it this way. I'm on episode five. I have put a total of 13 hours into this one episode. And I'm not even done with the first part of this trial. So as head servant, she knew about Minister Inga's condition. This is the final one, but it's just, it's, uh, it's not. Yeah, the pacing is terrible, Zunder. I don't want to have one episode that's two hours and one episode that's 13. That makes absolutely no sense. I mean, episode, maybe episode four was more like two and a half to three, but still, was, episode three was like seven or eight, I don't know. As the priest, princess's personal attendant, she's familiar with the divination seance. Puts it almost right at the, yeah, exactly. If the two facts together don't make her a possible suspect, I don't know what would. Uh, you witless lawyer, how quickly you are to forget the facts. Facts like, when Inga was last seen alive, you claim he was slain at two, yet that is impossible. Farefa saw him at 2.30. Ah, ah! We did completely forget about that. No, there must be some mistake. <laughs> so you see, the murder could have only occurred at 3 p.m. The hour Dirk entered the tomb. There is no other answer to this puzzle. Why don't we ever get to make up answers like Garan makes up laws? Guess it's back to square one. Where did we go wrong? Hmm. I don't think we're the problem. We just seem to be short one piece of the puzzle. Our deductions so far explain everything to a T. Everything except Inga's sighting at 2.30. I see, and without that final puzzle piece, all of our deductions fall apart. Apollo, if Inga's sights, sighting is the only anomaly, we'll have to find a way to make it fit into the bigger picture. Time to think outside the box then, right? Let's see. It would be impossible to see Inga walking around after he'd been killed. But what if there was a way to make people think he was alive, even though he was dead? Like a way to make people witness the living dead. Mm. Sounds like su some kind of TV show. Oh, that sucks. All the cases are pretty long as it, but the later ones even... Yeah, it's just, it's like, Zunder, I understand. Such a great thing to watch as you take cosplay off. Oh, what it? Oh, man. Not sad I missed that. Like, that's the thing that pisses me off, Zunder. Like, there is absolutely no reason for this episode to be like 15 hours long. That's like almost half the game length itself. It's just annoying at this point. 
with all these ellipses and flashbacks and everything. Apollo, did you just, I did. I figured it out. I know how to make people witness the living dead. And I think one of the other things that annoys me is how slow the text is at times and you can't skip it. Jolene from Stone Ocean. Oh, nice. Your majesty, our deductions weren't wrong after all. Despite Minister Inga being murdered at 2 p.m., he was seen heading into the tomb at 2.30, and I'll tell you how. I certainly hope you will, because I have no idea what you're talking about. The Minister Inga her benevolence saw was in fact someone channeling him. It was the deceased being channeled, and it's funny because people are like, it's not that bad, but like, if you're watching me do it, it's, it's a little better, like, obviously you guys can see when I'm like, the ellipses keep going, but like, I am constantly non-stop talking like the entire time I'm playing this game. So it's just, it's tiring. And I'm like, why is it dragging on so long? Why does this have like five novels worth of text crammed into it? Grand judge, the other judge, but less fun. Yeah, I mean, at least he stood up to the queen a couple of times. It's the only way a man who was already dead could have been seen by her benevolence. Ch channeled, you say? That's right, and there are only two people capable of spirit channeling here in Karain. Her eminence, Queen Garan, and Maya Fey. It's possible that one of them was channeling the minister. It would seem that you are ever bent on making me party to this crime. Officer with the speaker made my dad so annoyed he had to play with the sound. Oh, yeah, I understandable because he's just so loud and he kept making noises. Prosecutor, what was I doing at 2.30 p.m., the time at which my husband was seen? Eminence. Hmm. I believe you had completed the channeling rite and were having tea with the king of the neighboring realm. There would have been many attendants there, too, unless you dressed up your sister as you so you could have an alibi. Now you has to keep up with her schedule, too. What doesn't make she make him do? And that leaves only Maya. Yeah, it does. Maybe someone is forcing her to use her power towards nefarious ends. The real killer could have been threatening her. Th that cannot be. So then Inga's scream, that's probably from when he woke up from being called back to this world. After all, that's when the flow of time would have picked back up for him after he died. So Minister Inga probably left to his feet thinking he'd had a nightmare. Then realizing it was almost time for the hostage exchange, he raced off to Amara's tomb, not even realizing he was already dead. Th then her benevolence really did see a dead man running. I, I, da! well, that's, yeah. Yeah, Maya usually doesn't try to do that stuff on purpose, especially not like fresh dead people. Using the sacred power of spirit channeling to commit a crime? How can this be? Oh, come on. The defense calls Miss Maya Faye to the stand. <sighs> well, your eminence, will you allow a new witness? Hmm. It matters not. Either way, this lawyer shall soon know the truth. He will know just how much of an imbecile he is in the face of my infallible arguments. Yeah, hooray, it's trauma. Salt me all you want, witch, but you'll be eating those words when I expose the truth. Very well, let us adjourn until the next witness is ready. But to be continued, of course. Okay, well, part one is done. It only took us. Two hours to do part one of three of this trial. I'm so, guys, I'm just so tired. I'm so tired. She does need a lot. And here we go, part two, because we're still in the trial. May 19th, High Court of, Cur I hate this. I hate this. Why can't I skip? I've seen this 50,000 times. Why can't I skip over that text? What do I lose from not seeing that text typed out every goddamn time? I don't get that. Talk about some really close shaves. 
Well, you can't get closer shave than a headsman's brand blades, that's for sure. Uh, the trial's not even over yet, I'm already exhausted. Still, you were able to fight back the queen herself in there. I don't think so. Well, maybe with Miss Faye's help, I won't have to keep on playing this ga her game much longer. I, w I was about to say, I won't have to play this game much longer. Yeah. Options. Let's see. Oh, tech skip. Okay. Actually, there we go. Is that, is that what I needed the entire time? Fuck you. Cutscene subtitle. Oh, was, uh, consultation. What the hell is consultation? Green shaking. Keep it on. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I was about to say, especially, I hope it lets me skip, like, going into the courtroom and all that. Man, fuck aesthetics, Minty. I'm tired. I've been streaming this game for seven hours, and I just want to be done with this trial. Maybe with Miss Faye's help, I won't have to keep on playing her game much longer. Speaking of which... I guess it's a little late to be asking, but do you think she's well enough to testify, Mr. Wright? She slept all day yesterday. I was exhausted, apparently, but that's all I wish. It should be okay. Should I just read it like that the rest of the... I'm just gonna have, like, one voice for everyone? Barbed head, horn head. Oh, hello, your benevolence. Princess Rafa, you're really impressive back there. I hope it works with the ellipses. It doesn't work with this. I just saw this. And I am prepared to face my father's death. No oh boy, good for you. Despite your mother's opposition, you stood your ground, and in doing so, you fulfilled your duty as a priestess. It, it was all thanks to you and your friends. Your belief in me gave me the courage to follow my path, so, um, you have my gratitude. Aw, oh, look at her. Uh, don't mention it. I know, I shall thank you with a gift. What would you like? A cow? A horse? Or perhaps I shall reward your efforts with a royal shoulder massage. I mean, that does sound pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, uh, that's okay, your benevolence. Your gratitude is more than enough. And plus, she probably has tiny hands. Not good for massaging. There you go, Liv. Let me remind you, no, no. Like, I didn't play this game for like a month before I started up again, and I was already tired of flashbacks the first time they happened. It's okay, yeah. But I thought you Americans liked massages. Not the kind of massages. You can't give me that kind of massage, Rafa. That's illegal. My technique was highly praised by my father, I'll have you know. Oh. Hey, you lawyers, where's the accused? Huh, Derek? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I blew it big time, AJ. That's. Shut up, you! Uh, what's going on? The scoundrel tried to escape with the accused. What? what? We were able to nab him, but the accused is nowhere to be found. Where are you hiding him, you miscreant? I keep telling you, I got no idea where he went. I mean, yeah, we booked it together, but I lost track of him after that. Dats, are you fucking kidding me? So, Dirk's the on the lamb now. Probably, but who knows? He vanished in the blink of an eye. Vanished? You wanna know something, AJ? Dirk said to me I, can put, I can't put Amara in danger. I have to set her free before it's too late. What? Don't tell me he's gone to rescue her. Well, that's what I am telling you. That's why I helped him escape in the first place. Dads, do you realize what you've done? <sighs> well, what's done is done. Still, why'd he choose to go rescue her now? <sighs> Maybe he didn't want to die with any regrets or something. You know, just in case he ended up on the chopping block. <sighs> why, Dirk? I thought you believed in me. Ah, don't be like that, AJ. He'll be back as soon as he frees Amara. You'll see. That's not the point, Dats. Listen, lawyer. You let us know immediately if the accused contacts you. The trial will now resume. See that you are ready. Wait, the trial's still on? Even without the defendant? Those were her eminence's orders, so you will return to the courtroom at once. Because she's a... Uh... Let's go, Apollo. All we can do is see where the next testimony leads. Okay, please. I swear, if it doesn't let me skip, like, the courtroom shit. Oh, thank you! God, I wish I had known about this 30 hours ago. Now, let's resume the trial at hand. Um, your majesty, my client seems to have gone missing. Hmm, what do you think, your eminence? 
Should we proceed without the accused? Why not? My royal guard is searching for him as we speak, which will find him soon enough. But they would not dare to keep me waiting. Y yes, but what about the law governing court proceedings? Then I shall simply revise it. Have, uh, okay. Can I skip this bitch doing dumb shit? Because I would love that. Because I don't care about her at all. It's okay, I should have thought of it too, but I'm still pissed off that I had to go through like 30,000 ellipses of people being quiet. I love that. I love waiting for people to be quiet. As ruling sovereign of Korain, I pronounce the proclaim the following. Should the accused be an enemy of the crown, they may be tried in absentia. Well, in that case, I guess there's no problem with proceeding. Yeah, there we go. More silences! Will the witness Miss Maya Fay please approach the stand? Ah, it's Maya! Hi, Maya! Sorry to summon you like this, Maya. Mm, getting dragged out of bed and into court isn't exactly a fun wake-up call, Nick. Sorry, baby! Sorry, Miss Fay. It was my idea. Hmm? And you are... Oh, yeah! She doesn't know about Apollo. It's okay. You don't... <laughs> this isn't about him. Oh, right, I'm Apollo Justice. It's nice to finally meet you. Oh, so you're Apollo. Nick's told me all about you and your dumb hair. Yeah, I love waiting, yeah. You're the new guy with the loud voice and a bit of an unreliable streak, right? Uh, unreliable? I mean, it's true. Oh, well, that was two years ago. You've come a long way since. You're still not the most reliable, though. So why was I called here anyway? Um, am I under arrest again? No, Maya! Huh? Uh, I guess no one's filled her in. Well, she has been asleep this entire time. Uh, Miss Faye, this is a trial for Dirk Sodmati, and you're here as a witness. What? D D Dirk's been arrested? But... That's not exactly the reaction I was expecting. Miss Faye, you're suspected of playing a part in the murder of Justice Minister Inga. What? Someone allegedly forced you to channel the minister to obfuscate the time of his murder. Oh! It actually, though, it worked! The scene worked! I'll be quiet for this. You should see yourself. Do you have any idea what you look like right at this moment? Sir? Sorry, it's so quiet. What? A ravenous beast. The same blood oh. runs through both of us. The blood of a beast who wanders, hunting for the blood of others. I've bled all that kind of blood away. Then why are you still alive? That's still like my favorite Cowboy Bebop scene because it's just so good. Also, I'm gonna stand up for a bit. I, see, I need to watch Cowboy Bebop again soon, actually. Sorry, you can see a little bit of my poster. And also that light. And maybe I'll zoom in a little more. Okay. You should watch Cowboy Bebop. You should. Also, hi, folks. Sorry, I'm doing some stretchies. Because I've been sitting down for seven hours. Oh. All right, come on. Let's, let's, let's get through this. Hi, how are you doing, Lily? Welcome. You're eating pizza? Everybody's having pizza today except for me. Why? Why don't I have pizza, guys? Because that's what the defense claims. Wait, what? How could you, Apollo? How did you even reach that conclusion? Yeah, Beth also had pizza. A lot of people had pizza. Yeah, pizza gang. Sorry, it's the only way this whole case makes any sense. Your understandable anger at the defense aside, will you testify, Miss Faye? Yes, your majesty. Did you just call me a loo- Wow, thanks, Fo. I'm sorry that I don't have pizza. Oh, Zunder's a loser. I, well, I guess we're both losers. It's okay. Um, I don't have any idea what's going on, but, uh... I know I didn't channel Minister Inga. I didn't even have the chance to do something like that. Besides, I'd never go quietly along with someone's criminal plan. Also, the lights are like in my... Hey, Google. Reduce 
office to 60%? Better. Though, I guess there are some things I'd go quietly along with. Like what? Getting a burger? Got Cowboy Bebop for Christmas. With all she knew, it was a full anime package in anime. Oh, no, that's awesome. Bacon? What? You know, you could put bacon in the crust? That's illegal. It seems the witness doesn't believe she has ever channeled Justice Minister Inga. And if her words prove to be true, defense, your entire argument becomes moot. Foe angry? No, foe is great. It's fine. You do understand that, don't you? Yes, of course. Hmm. It doesn't seem like Miss Faye is lying. Apollo, Maya was being awfully secretive about something just now. And I guess I'd better dig a bit and try to get her to open up to me first. <sighs> you don't want to fail mid-trial? We'll see how fast. I apparently have to... I, I Look, I'm not even going to lie, guys. At this point, I have a guide up, and it wants me to press every single statement. I have to press every statement of hers multiple times. And you know that means a whole fucking bunch of talking, but it's okay. You cooked out, so you had chicken hot. Oh, nice. I haven't eaten it yet. I don't need it. Okay, press. Hey, what's going on? How are you doing, kitty? Welcome on in. We're in like seven hours into this game, but it's okay. We're working on it. Here. You've been asleep ever since you were rescued from the tomb, correct? Thank you so much for the host! Mm-hmm, I was so exhausted after being held captive for so long. That must have been terrible. Maya, did Minister Inga do- didn't do anything to you, did he? Oh, no, it wasn't like that. On the contrary, I asked him for all sorts of things. Uh, like what? Uh, like, I'm really craving burgers, and I'll die if I miss an episode of The Plumed Punisher! Acting like a brat netted me a TV and even a few burgers from some place. Are you kidding me, Maya? He was surprisingly nice to me. Huh? Um, are you sure we're talking about the same guy here? Yeah. Hmm. He may have loomed large, but he was unexpectedly easy to push around. Is that right, crazy bitchy queen lady? Even though he's the one who was responsible for pushing those execution papers through, Oh, that approving executions was simply his preferred method of stress relief. Ah, with a wife like her, he was probably really pushing them through the, out of fear. Oh no, I mean, true. I'm beginning to see why he wanted to stage a coup. In any case, my time in captivity wasn't so bad, but of all the things that happened, I know I didn't channel Minister Inga. Okay, how do you know that? Are you sure about that? Maybe you just don't remember channeling him. Don't remember? I may be 28, but I'm not senile, you know? Uh, something's not right here. Miss Faye, you were confined to Amara's tomb the whole time, is that correct? Hmm, um, yes, but I wasn't conscious the whole time. Okay, then let me ask you something. Did you ever see Nana in the tomb dressed as Dirk? Huh? Is, is this some kind of joke? I think I'd remember if I saw something as crazy as that. Plus, I doubt anyone would carry out a crime like that right in front of a potential witness. I hate when he's right. Okay, hi, he is always right. Get it? Because his name is Phoenix Wright! Oh god, I'm so ready, guys, to be done with this. I didn't even have a chance to do something like that. Uh, you didn't have a chance to channel him? Does channeling someone take a long time? Not really. Once you get the hang of it, it's pretty much instantaneous. But I was all tied up, literally. So there was no way for me to make the channeling mood drove my hands to do it. <laughs> right. I guess she really didn't channel Inga then. Maya, when mediums are done with a session, they can send the spirit back to the other world themselves, right? Sure, unless they're still in training. Amateurs can get possessed by spirits sometimes, but full-fledged mediums can stay in total control of a session. And they can send the deceased spirit away anytime they want. So I take it you can do that too, Miss Faye. Of course! It's a cinch for the new and improved Mystic Maya Faye, a spirit medium. 
That's strange. You seem like the same old childish Maya to me. Ugh, I'll show you, childish Nick. I don't want to see that. How about the whole Dark Age of Law thing, but with political commentary? Yeah. Besides, I'd never go quietly. Okay. So you wouldn't channel spirits for unseemly purposes? Of course not! Spirit channeling is my bread and butter. They take a lot of pride in my work. It's like, would you use your legal skills to commit a crime, Apollo? Well, uh, probably not. Uh, until finger pointing and objecting become deadly. I don't think, see how they can be used. Wow, you're a regular Mr. Smarty Pants, just like Nick. Always at the ready with some sarcastic comeback. I think I'll save my many objections for after the trial. Yes, please. Anyway, I'd never go along with something like that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Pe press! It sounds to me like you're trying to hide something, Miss Faye. Uh, didn't anyone teach you about respecting boundaries, Apollo? It's really rude to pry into a person's private affairs. Ah, sorry, I didn't realize, uh, we're in court. That's not how that works. Wait, we're in a court of law, yeah. Yeah, I know. So tell the truth! Then what was all that about me being rude? I'm just doing my job. Oh. So please, just tell me, what exactly were you hiding? Sorry, but I promised Dirk I wouldn't say. Can everybody stop promising Dirk things? Can we stop being cryptic? Tell me the shit. People are gonna die. I'm gonna die. Do you want me to die, Maya? I made a promise to Dirk. Mm-hmm, a pretty big one. I think this is about all you're gonna get out of her. I yeah. Fuck. Enough. The witness is denying that she channeled any spirits. Further questioning is pointless. It appears your little fiction has been soundly exposed for what it is. You should listen to her, Apollo. I don't even know why you suspected me in the first place. Oh, Maya, come on. I mean, you don't have any evidence of me channeling Minister Inga, do you? Oh, um, evidence, huh? There's no point in even thinking about it, really. I don't use anything special to channel spirits, so there wouldn't be anything left behind. That's true. It's like when she channeled the high priest. All Maya needs is her own body. If the defense has no evidence to offer, I will have to end this cross-examination. What, now even though she doesn't use any special items to do the channeling itself, you'd think there would be something to complete the deception. Is there any proof that Justice Minister Inga was channeled? Actually, there is! See, okay, I, you know what? Now I'm speeding things up, because it's fine. We can read and listen and everything's good. You bet there is. Really? Well, now. Uh, you're bluffing, I take it. I'll be fine. If we're right, there must be some sort of proof to back us up. Time to do some serious thinking, Apollo Justice. That's me. Okay, we know what Rafa saw her father. He wasn't dressed like Miss Faye, right? Right, because if he was, Rafa would have immediately known he was being channeled. <clears throat> so that means... He was dressed in his usual suit when Rafa saw him. Aha! Good thinking, Apollo. This might be the perfect angle to attack from. Alright, let's have our answer from the defense. What proof do you have that Ms. Maya Faye channeled Justice Minister Inga? Bum bum bum. Inga's button discovered in the ashes of the tomb's incense burners. Caked in soot. Is that a gemstone? Is it just failed Pokemon gym leaders with the, it, the They honestly are. We found this among the ashes of one of the tomb's incense burners. Does this gemstone ring any bells, your eminence? But what? What was that doing in the tomb? Ah, so you do recognize it. But then as his wife, how could you not recognize this gemstone button from your husband's jacket? Hmm? I don't get where you're going with this. Channeling Minister Inga alone wouldn't be enough to fool someone like Princess Rafa, especially if he were wearing your clothes. So you would have had to change into the minister's clothes before channeling him. Ah! Uh, Miss Fay, you used the minister's clothes as a cover while going to, from his room to the tomb where you burn them once you no longer needed them. 
What? What? Uh oh. She seems genuinely surprised by that, Apollo. Miss Faye? Yes? Do you know my husband's name? It was, um, Inga Karkul Karain, right? That is correct, in part. But there's more. Much more. Inga Karkul Halkon Disnam B. What the fuck? No, I'm not reading all that. Look at that. That is his true name. It's a lot of nonsense. Could it be any longer? Like Vash the Stampede, yeah. Due to its length, only a portion of it was ever made public. So, Miss Faye, did you know his true name? Uh, no, I mean, how could I? Precisely. Yet a medium must know both face and true name of the one she seeks to channel. Ah, ah, so then Miss Faye couldn't have channeled Mr. Inga. That's what I've been saying this whole time. Why would I want to randomly channel some old guy I didn't know? And didn't like, thanks to that last trial. I know, I'm sorry about you, that. I can't believe this. Gross. Apollo, I really don't think Maya's lying. However, your line of reasoning still seems credible to me. I agree, but there's something tripping us up in the details. Maybe we're working off of some wrong assumption again. Um, Apollo, I was thinking... Yes? Since I didn't channel Minister Inga, is it possible that someone else did? Someone else? But who else could it have been? I haven't thought that far yet. Such shatter is without a merit. Let us move on, shall we? Ugh. I don't care what Garon says, I'm going to figure this out. If it wasn't Miss Faye and the Queen has an alibi, then... Apollo, forget about who is capable of channeling spirits for a second. You should consider the circumstances around the channeling, right? Right. We know Rafa saw her father come running out of his private quarters. If he was being channeled at the time, who could it have been? It had to have been someone who was in Inga's private quarters. The only person who it could have been! Well, I'm waiting to fancy as much as I said, yes, but there's someone besides, yeah. There's one more person and they were in Inga, Inga's quarters. I'm not even reading all that because they're saying the same thing over and over. Yeah, let's have your very serious answer. With pleasure. Horn Devil, who could have channeled Minister Inga? Nada! Nada? Your eminence said it yourself. That's right, Nana never did go into the tomb that day. Instead, she entered my husband's private quarters. Yeah, I remember, how do you know? Blah, 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 it's another flashback. Okay, but we can skip them now. Shoe prints were discovered. That doesn't mean that I, I, I can't like get out of the flashback, but I can at least skip through the alerts. Ah, okay, we're gonna make good progress. And then there's her bene benevolence's statement. She said that Nana's disappearance right there after she entered Inga's Mr. private quarters. The room with the minister not too long afterwards. You're not seriously suggesting. Oh, but yes, I am, is the only thing that makes sense. Nana channeled Minister Inga and left his private quarters thereafter. That's why no one has seen her since. Because of the footprints, and that's why only the minister's shoe prints were found outside his residence. Yeah, you hear that music, it means shit's happening. Ah, no way! Gotta be it. Nana must have somehow channeled the minister. <laughs> All of the circumstantial evidence has fallen into place. You can't ignore it anymore. You can't claim Nana isn't connected to this case somehow. In light of this, the defense calls Nana to the stand. Yeah, where is she? Well, your eminence? Very well then, let's call Nana to testify. Yes, now we can finally crack this case wide open. Let us adjourn while the witness is summoned. No, there is no need. Nana is in the waiting lobby. What, Nana's here? I thought she'd gone missing. It seems she was feeling unwell and simply wished to rest undisturbed. But her concern for Rafa brought her here today. Yeah, fuck you. Took time off without Rafa's knowledge of consent. 
I'm betting there's more to her disappearing act than meets the eye, Apollo. Well, probably. Hello, Nana. Where's your hat? Oh, you're not wearing- She has so much hair! Ms. Nana, do you understand why you've been summoned here today? Oh, God, why does she have so much hair? Yes, of course. Her eminence has informed me that this man here suspects I have committed a crime. So this is Nana. That's quite the hairdo. Though I will say, <laughs> I suppose I'm not as old as I had thought. If this horn-headed nincompoop would fake take me for a criminal. A bean hair. A nincompoop? Isn't that Rafa's favorite insult? Guess Nana rubbed off on her with all the time they spent together. I think that's her hair. I'm gonna assume it's her hair. You there, young hornhead! Uh, yes? What? You're accusing me of slaying Minister Inga and channeling his spirit, yes? What an active imagination you have! Young folk are so wonderfully open-minded! Ha <laughs> ha thanks! Uh, just take the compliment, Justice! Now then, will the witness please proceed with her testimony? This court wishes to know if you did or did not channel Minister Inga in his private chambers. Okay. I'm no spirit medium, Sonny. I was feeling under the weather yesterday and decided to rest these weary bones. Besides which, a lowly servant such as I could not possibly be an honorable spirit medium. Only members of the royal family can learn the art of spirit channeling here in Korain. After Queen Amara's passing, her eminence, Queen Garon, is the only spirit medium left. If you believe a medium to be the culprit, it would have to be that young lass, Maya Fey. Maybe she is hiding. She's probably. Maybe she has crazy knife hair or something. Like this chick. And there you have it. It seems we have summoned her for nothing. Only those of the royal bloodline have the power of spirit channeling. That a servant such as Nana could channel spirits is a most unamusing jest. On the surface, anyway. But our line of reasoning has led us to the, this end that Nana channeled Inga's spirit. All right, the defense may now question the witness. But she's not fucking dead! Objection! She's not dead! She's alive! Okay, so I presented what makes sense in terms of a direct contradiction, except I don't know how to make it make sense in the larger context of this case. Well, is the defense going to follow up its loud objection with a sound explanation? Oh, um, sorry. How do I put this? I believe there's a problem with Nana's testimony. Go on. She asserted that she could not possibly be a spirit medium because in Korain, only members of the royal family can learn how to channel spirits. I fail to see the problem in that statement, defense. Hold on, I'm getting to it, your majesty. Nana stated an absolute falsehood. Since we know that Amara is still alive. At the same time, the circumstantial evidence points to Nana channeling Inga. After all, just after she entered this private quarters, Inga came running out screaming despite having been killed at 2 p.m. That would mean that Nana channeled Inga, even though, supposedly, only those of the royal family are capable of doing so. Wait, 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 wait. Is it too late to ask for a refund on my trip down the rabbit hole? Oh, looks like a spy. Well, she looked different before. I don't know if it still has her old... She looked like this. She looked very, like, regal and... Well, it's crazy. Twitter isn't... Yeah, my Twitter should be the same, yeah. Chase that white rabbit. Mr. Wright, you may think I've lost my mind with this bluff, but... But? But if I can at least establish the possibility, I think it'll give us the break we need. 
Wait a sec, are you going to propose what I think you are? Yes, it's a huge risk, but I think there's a chance I can prove it. Will the court please take a look at this photo? The that's This photo's very existence, to say nothing of the person in it, contradicts the witness's claim that Queen Garan is the only remaining spirit medium in Korain. Poor devil, you mustn't! Oh, but I must. Under these circumstances, the outcome of this trial depends on it. But you already knew that, didn't you, your eminence? Will the defense please explain who is shown in the photograph? The person in this photo is the previous queen, Amara Sigatar Korang. Contrary to popular belief, she was never assassinated. In fact, she's very much alive. Well, what? But that's nonsense! Take a good look at the law book in this photo, your majesty. Her? The mark of the dragon branded on it but only have been placed there after Queen Amara's supposed assassination. Ugh. Queen Amara's still alive? Has the lawyer gone mad? Hmm. While I personally find it hard to believe, I will allow the defense to continue. You may proceed, defense. Thank you, your majesty. Queen Amara's death was staged to keep her safe from the would-be killer. Yet according to Dirk, she is actually being held captive somewhere. But the real truth is that Queen Amara is not being held in confinement. Rather, she walks freely among us. Oh. Here, in this very courtroom today. Oh no, she's Nana! Oh, is this, what? Now you to calm down with that. Do not be deceived, your majesty. The red pepper is skilled in weaving plausible lies. It is the cunning lawyerly art known as bluffing. But knowing this, there is no need to fear his forked tongue. Objection! Maybe she's been channeling a whole old woman this whole time, or she. That's where you're wrong, prosecutor, because you'll be quaking in your boots soon enough. Is that so? It's my turn, Nayuta, to wake you up to the truth right before your eyes. Queen Amara is still very much alive and has been disguising herself as literally the only person she could disguise herself as. Take that! But that's... Watch her. I know! Eek! Oh, she's doing the thing! She freaked out. This is the simplest and cleanest explanation for everything we've covered so far. The person who killed Minister Inga. Someone with intimate knowledge of the divination seance. The medium who channeled the minister in order to mask the real time of death. Condense these traits into one person and you get a spirit medium of royal blood. And that person is none other than you, Nana! Your true identity is the former queen, Amara, and the killer we've been looking for all along. What? Well, what? My mom's not a killer. Have you finally lost your mind, Mr. Justice? What you say is beyond blasphemous, even in the depths of hell. Oh my, such frightening allegations. Indeed, and absolutely ludicrous to boot. Her eminence, Queen Amara, yet lives. And is actually Miss Nana here. You have truly gone off on the deep end. You don't have to take my word for it. In fact, a certain someone can help me prove it. Your eminence. If Queen Amara is truly dead, or truly is dead, you should be able to channel her spirit right here, right now. Isn't that correct? Duck. I can't deny it no longer. 
The lawyer speaks the truth. Nana, the woman who stands here before us. Yeah, get fucked, queen! Ooh. Is Amara, the former queen believed to have perished 23 years ago? Damn. <laughs> Hold Konka! Oh, the, the judge said it. Wow. Damn. She better stand up straight then and stop leaning over. That's gotta be hell on her back. Finally. Finally got Inga's real killer on the stand. Nana, no, Amara Sigatar Karain. Please drop the act and tell us what really happened. Um, oh dearie me, I guess I shouldn't have underestimated the power of you. Well done, young hornhead. Um. 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 Ah! Uh. Uh. Uh, uh. Uh. Whoa! Okay, you're way different now. Hello? Whoa! Hello? Hmm, I was getting tired of masquerading as an old woman anyway. That's not a log. It's been far too long since I last greeted you, good people of Korain. She does look a lot less scary than her crazy bitchy sister. Yeah, she's hot! I know! Damn it! It is I, Amara Sigatar Korain, your former queen. But qu queen Amara? What? Whoa, yeah! Get fucked, Nayuta! Uh, yeah, yeah, good job. I don't know. And I thought Garon's makeover was extreme. Can it really be true? You are alive and well? It is true. I feel as if I have been called back from the Twilight Realm. I fear I've caused all of you a great deal of distress. <laughs> yeah, you have! <clears throat> Amara, I'm sorry I was unable to keep your secret any longer. What is happening? I hope you can forgive me. It is quite all right, Garn. I am safe now. For Dirk, that black guard who threatened my life, will be recaptured soon enough. What the fuck? I need not conceal my identity any longer. But Queen Amara, what, what does this all mean? Were you not killed in that fire 23 years ago? I barely escaped that blaze with my life. But though I survived, I knew that scoundrel would make further attempts on my life. What are you talking about? Ah, uh, that's your husband, I know. Therefore, I staged my death and abdicated the throne to my dear younger sister, Garan, who's a bitch. But, but the building of that great tomb and the disguising yourself as a lowly servant, why would you do such a thing? Garan, I would have you explain. I wished for her to be close at hand. It was the only way I felt I could protect her. And it was the best way to hide her from the eye of the public. After all, who could conceive of Amara lowering her station to that of a servant? Yeah, she's got that right. Even Dirk thought Amara was being held captive in some far off place. He never even guessed that she was living as a servant right in plain sight. I must say a life dedicated to the servitude of others is not the least bit disagreeable. It is quiet, humble existence, far removed from the tedium of regal duties. Ah, but those days of peace have ended. And it's all because of you, Hornhead. If he could see this, he'd probably be like... Okay. You should consider yourself lucky, that's all. If that's all this ends with. If there's something you wish to say, then say it. Yeah, you crazy bitch. Well, yeah, we need to fucking cross-examine you. Doesn't matter who you are, you won't escape the crime you committed. The defense moves to indict you as Justice Minister Inga's real killer. Damn! I don't care if you hot, you go into jail like everybody else. What's this? You would accuse Queen Amara of homicide? A grand priestess of Koreanism? You can't do that! Yeah, well, you... You 
Guys tried to convict her husband of two counts of murder, so fuck you. She, she, she's virtually a goddess in the eyes of her people. Well, we're not, we're in the court, sir. If you commit a crime, you better be ready to do the time. Good, good one, Apollo. Be you a priest, saint, queen, or god? Damn, I I've never met such an egalitarian person. Stop listening. Echo, shut up. Sorry, I didn't mean to be so mean, but don't. I'm busy. Queen Amara, in your years disguised as Nana, you would have learned about Minister Inga's disorder. So you knew that she could dress in Dirk's, oh, you could dress in Dirk's clothes to forge a convincing seance vision. Isn't that right? Oh ho ho ho, what a curious character you are. You would label me a murderer? Yeah. Me? The one who the people regarded as the reincarnation of the Holy Mother herself? Oh shit! Thank you so much for gifting that tier one sub! To, to Bunny Amy. I forgot that that's kind of a loud alert! Ah. <laughs> oh. You may be a grand figure in Karenism, but as a foreigner, you're just another suspect to me. Damn! Whoa! Okay, Apollo's doing pretty good this time around. Good job. Were those twerking fur- they were Furries. It was ninja sex party. He was dressed- they were dressed in like deer costumes. It would, be, it would appear your words are not in jest. Am I to suffer the selling of my good name with accusations of murder most foul? Yes! Please, Queen Amara, forgive his impudence. The lawyer knows not what if he speaks. Uh, fear not, good majesty, for this is a sacred hall of justice. Though I'm a grand priestess, on this stand I am but a witness like any other. I shall force his accusations with grace and- or face them, with grace and benevolence. Your compassion overfloweth your mercifulness. Oh, young lawyer, in my benevolence, I must warn you that your assertion suffers from a tragic flaw. Huh? There's a flaw? Nayuta? Yes, your mercifulness? Who was present in the tomb when the murder was discovered? Uh, Dirk Sadmadhi, Maya Faye, and the victim, Minister Inga. I see. That is a fatal flaw indeed. It appears Queen Amara couldn't possibly have gone to the tomb as Minister Inga. She could do more. No, don't worry about it. I mean, just you guys being here chatting and all that is always amazing. What? Why not? Do not keep the defense waiting, Nayuta. Explain how wrong he truly is. Yes, your mercifulness. Her benevolence, Princess Rafa, saw Minister Inga enter the tomb around 2.30 p.m. Yet you, the defense, claim the person she saw was the minister being channeled by Queen Amara. However, if her mercifulness had channeled him and moved to the tomb, then once she was done channeling, Queen Amara would have re-emerged and been left stuck in the tomb. Oh yeah, had she tried to exit before you all arrived. Princess Rafa, who had been looking down upon the courtyard, would have seen her. However, her benevolence saw nothing of the sort. Ugh. In conclusion, Queen Amara could not have left the tomb without being observed. And yet, was she there in the tomb when the murder was discovered? Defense? Uh, no, she wasn't. Hmm. Now do you see? Your flimsy claim has been uprooted like a sapling in a flood. Ugh! Ah! Well, that was entertaining, Prosecutor Sadmadhi. Assume the prosecution of this case and clear your mother's good name. No, this is not- this is the final case of the game. And it's stupid because it's split into two parts in one episode. I have been streaming for almost eight hours for the second part of this episode. You wish for me to take over? Yes, prosecute your father to save your mother. Wow, fuck you. <laughs> what a poignant fate you bear, but bear it you must. Are you ready? 
Yes, your eminence. God, fuck that! Like, seriously. Fuck Nayuta. Like, to the bitter end, he's still a fucking dickbag. A religious zealot. And there you have it, your majesty. I shall watch the rest of the proceedings from the sidelines. I relinquish complete control of this sacred hall to your authority once more. Well, why, thank you, your eminence. Now then, your mercifulness, your testimony, if you will. This is another one where I have to press her every statement, guys. Lori's theory is flawed. Now I shall destroy your utterly absurd and barbarous theory. I was not anywhere near the tomb following the murder. Were your theory correct, I would have been in the tomb once I had stopped channeling. My husband Dirk is the killer, but he has fled from the sacred hall. Cool. May the Holy Mother rain judgment upon the traitor Dirk Simon for his crimes. Fuck you! Jesus! Oh, such marvelous testimony! You truly are a treasure, your mercifulness. God, I hate this place. This, too, is but a grace of her holiness. No doubt my unmasking here today was her will as well. Oh my! The Holy Mother, you say? Yes, yeah, surely her holiness has guided me to this witness stand. Like, I hate how much this political and religious shit is just fucking everywhere, and I'm like, I'm so tired of dealing with it. Ah! <sighs> Trying to make it be a not gonna lie. What the hell is this? Into the purity of truth. Oh, how magnificent Queen Amara, the Holy Mother's messenger here on earth. Praise be for Queen Amara. Blessings upon her mercifulness. Where did those animals even come from? We don't have a zoo here. They just said that. Now then, the defense may question the witness, even though it's dumb and pointless. But remember, she's a grand priestess, so disrespect will not be tolerated. That means no pointing out conflicts, inconsistencies, or any other flaws in her testimony. Fuck you! That's... That rules out literally everything. Oh, God, I hate this. I hate this so much, guys. Uh, Lurie's theory is absurd. Cool. Hold it. Hold it! I have to press every statement. My theory is utterly absurd and barbarous, and high-handed if I may say so. Now, YouTube's right to call you putrid-minded. Shut up! Surely even the monkeys of Mount Pony Pony's Holy Waterfalls could devise a better theory. Like, I hate that they have this where all you're doing is you're fucking reading them just say shit that is not relevant for like 20 minutes. And I'm like, what is this? This isn't even building anything. They're just being shitty. They're just being fucking shitty people. It's not my fault, you see, the goddess guided me, it's not me. Yeah, exactly. Why is Jasmine's tiger in the courtroom? Because Amara called her. Oh, fuck, I don't know. Surely you can steal better insults than Nayuta's best. Now then, to all of you gathered in the sacred hall, need I remind you? Uh, I was not, yeah, I was not anywhere near the tomb of the, whatever, fuck you. Well, maybe you were hiding inside the sarcophagus. After all, it does technically belong to you. I bet you'd have no trouble opening it. If I had been in there, I could not be here today, for the tomb has been under constant surveillance since the murder. I would have been never been able to leave. Hmm, I guess not. Um, if I might ask, what's in that sarcophagus anyway? You're still alive, so, uh... Just not Jasmine. Yeah, it's... Oh, God. There is despair, sadness, hatred, and malice. Only one brave enough to see the truth hidden deep within. Could discover the final hope, my continued corporeality. I... You completely lost me. In other words, it's empty. But no one dared to open it because they were too scared of the curse. Now will you dispense with your theory? It's as empty as my sarcophagus. Ah, <laughs> I'm so tired of talking to this lady. I'll admit you weren't in the tomb after the murder. Very good. That very truth refutes your theory. Even if I had channeled the minister, or minister Inga, and entered the tomb, the moment I ceased channeling him, I would have re-emerged at the crime scene. Yeah, murder! There's been a lot of murder happening. Precisely, as you said yourself, Defense Queen Amara was not there after the murder. <laughs> the only living souls in the tomb at that time were Dirk Sadmadi and Maya Fey. 
Murder! Yeah. Ugh. Be it in this life or the next. Oh, you're gonna say some dumb bullshit again. There is no escaping simple truths. Hi, ah, fuck you! Hold it. There must be a reason why he had to make his escape today. A reason? Oh, perhaps. Perhaps what? Perhaps to conceal himself and lie and wait for another chance to claim my life. <sighs> well, what's this? He's not trying to kill you. No, 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 it's definitely not like that, your mercifulness. First of all, you don't really believe he's trying to kill you, do you? After all, you two ran off together after he rescued you all those years ago. That was only because he had the audacity to claim it wasn't me. You must believe me. It was my duty as a wife to her husband to bend an ear to him, was it not? Jesus, this lady is very full of herself. Communication after disagreement is the secret to a long and happy message. Would Dirk want to kill her? Yeah, I, that's what I'm trying to figure out right now. I'm very confused. Sure, I guess. Yeah, well, the cute animals, it's just like Dahlia Hawthorne with her butterflies and shit. That chick was fucking crazy. What do you think, Mr. Wright? Don't ask me! That is why I listened to Dirk. However, he didn't have a shred of evidence to support his claim. It grieves me to admit it, but my husband truly did try to murder me. Where do you get that from? That's quite enough. It's abundantly clear that Queen Amara's testimony is flawless. Oh, 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 do you understand now, lawyer? Ah, uh, this is bad. Um, the judge isn't gonna let me cross-examine her much longer. Amara uh, should have been in the tomb after the minister's murder, but she wasn't. I don't get it. How did she just vanish from the scene of the crime like that? It shouldn't be possible for normal people. She's not normal people! What if she took on the form of a bug? I don't know. Accused as a himbo and therefore not capable of violence towards those who- Yeah, this is also true. That's, that's a true story. For normal people. But she's nothing but normal. Maybe. Maybe what? Your Majesty, I think I can explain why Queen Amara wasn't there in the tomb after the murder. Very well, defense, do explain. I believe it was accomplished through a method only she is capable of. By using this special method, it would be possible for her to literally disappear. Well, don't keep us waiting. Let's hear it. How did Queen Amar disappear from the tomb? Yeah, well, it's, it's always she channeled someone. All she had to do was channel someone. Then she could easily disappear from the scene of the crime. After all, she would literally be someone else. Sure, yeah. Magically just Why? Well, I believe that actually makes sense. Yeah, I'm good at making sense. What do you have to say to that, Queen Amara? You believe that I would use the sacred power of spirit channeling to commit murder, yeah? Oh, uh, okay! Ah? Uh, well, what the? Uh, Eek! Mercy, your mercifulness! Why is she angry now? Uh, uh, how dare you spew such vile blasphemy, Defense? You will retract your last statement or face immediate execution. Uh, no? No, good Magistrate, it is quite all right. Karainism also teaches that we must respond at all times with reasoned principle. Therefore, I shall offer a measured response to his blasphemous accusation. Uh, you have something to counter with? Yes, lightning, apparently. Indeed, now are you listening? It would not have been possible to simply vanish by means of spirit channeling. After all, it would require a deceased person to channel. However, there was only one murder victim in the tomb. Uh-huh. And that was Minister Inga. The only others there right after his murder were Dirk and Miss Fay. Ah, whoa, oh no. Oh, I don't like where this is going because Inga was gone. 
<laughs> Until Dirk fled the scene. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! I had a channel Inga as you allege. That would explain everything, though. That would explain everything. Well, the outcome would have been quite odd, to say the least. For there, beside the dead minister, a living, breathing one would have appeared. Oh no, Dirk is in that sarcophagus then! That's the- because there's blood tr Oh no! Oh no. Even if I had been in the tomb, there was no one to channel except the deceased minister. So you see, I could not have vanished by means of spirit channeling. Ugh, that's true, but... I can't rule it out yet. Because, well, what if there was another victim? Someone we haven't identified yet. No, we identified them. We just thought that they were alive. Oh, no. How absurd. You can channel someone other than Minister Inga. You could have used their identity to dis disappear from the tomb. Another victim? Queen Amara. Please add your last statement to your testimony. This could explain everything. Wasn't there some sign of another victim there in the tomb? And yet, how do I sense I- Yeah, oh! That's why he said the secret and you're not gonna like it because he- Oh, because he's already dead! Oh no! Wow, this bitch terrible. I don't want to do it, but I gotta- Oh boy, because it's going towards the sarcophagus! So he's gotta be inside there! Can't believe I'm presenting, and that's why they were like, I don't have long to live, because... He's already dead, ah. Uh, it proves there was another victim. Still, the only ones there at the scene of the crime were... No, it can't be! Would the defense care to share something with us? Oh, Queen Amara, you knew, didn't you? Whatever are you talking about? If you won't tell this court, then I will. Well, don't keep us waiting. This case includes a second victim. One of the two people found alive in the tomb after the minister's murder was actually already dead. But a second victim, Apollo. Oh, son of a bitch. Queen Amara, after you channeled Minister Inga and moved out to the tomb, you vanished from the scene of the crime by channeling the other victim. That explains why no one found you after the murder was discovered. Oh, you putrid pepper. Of all the half-witted buffoonery to come tumbling from your lips. But suppose I indulge you and play along with your little delusion. Tell me, Mr. Justice, who was the other victim? You're not gonna like this, Nayuta. You're not gonna fucking like this, but you're a mama's boy, apparently, even though mom is fucking crazy. There's no way it can be true. But, uh, no, I can't stop now. If this is the truth, it's the only way forward to solving this case. The other victim who Queen Amara channeled was... <laughs> Listen, son, even if you manage to prove me innocent tomorrow, I, I don't have long to live. There's no escaping death now that it has set its sights on me. Uh, how did you know? Dirk knew everything, but he couldn't bring himself to tell me. Oh, yeah. I one more, yeah, big secret. I'm afraid I can't tell you what it is. I'd be betraying a certain someone. Ah, oh, come on! He couldn't accuse the love of his life. Uh, the sad truth is, the other victim channeled by Amara was... Take that. What? You can't! That's not possible! The defendant, Dirk Sadmadhi, is the one Queen Amara channeled. He's the other victim! Yeah, that's probably, yeah. Th this is insanity! Because she could probably tell if somebody was channeling someone else. 
Paula, what are you? Do you realize what you're proposing? I demand an explanation, Mr. Justice. I don't know when or why Dirk was murdered, but the facts and evidence speak for themselves. And this, this is where they've led me. I see, after Inga's murder, Dirk and Maya were the only ones in the tomb. But if one of them was actually dead and being channeled by Amara, but it can't be, can it? Dirk's bloodstains at the scene of the crime was the clincher for me. Uh, he wasn't even injured, so how could he have possibly bled that much? The only logical explanation is Dirk had also been murdered. Oh. Th that's enough. Your explanation cannot be the truth. And you would not dare to claim to have proof to support your assertion. Oh, I would. Nayuta, I wish it weren't true. I wish with all my heart that I'm wrong. But as much as I don't want to believe it, yes, I can prove it. Oh boy, Dirk's killer must have hidden his body. It would have to be somewhere nobody would ever look. And there's only one such place. You truly have proof. Come on, Nayuta, you know it too. Fastest way would would be to actually have someone go and check the tomb. Go check the tomb, but why? Because I believe Dirk's killer hid his body here. I didn't even have to move it. You would suggest? Queen Amara's sarcophagus, the only place in the tomb that no one would dare to look. Plus, the killer would soon become trapped by hiding in there. But a body, well, that's a horse of a different color. Which means, ugh. I believe we must search the sarcophagus at once! Your Eminence! Being that Queen Amara yet lives, I trust we may open it now? If we must... Your Majesty, I believe the Detective Sky is still there at the tomb. Let us contact her at once and have her conduct a full investigation into the matter. Oh no... Hi. They j I know, they just got back together too, but... Bad things always happen to people who know, like, the rights. Parents don't live very long. I don't- I don't think you've ever met Phoenix's parents. Cause I- oh no, cause... Wasn't he... Was he an orphan? I just know he went to school with the others, I can't remember. But they never, like, never mention his parents, and we know Trucy's parents, well, one of them's dead. Everybody loses their dads. No dads allowed. Now then, Detective Sky, your report, if you please. I'll start with my findings. Please, please, please let me be wrong about this. I just want things to be as they were. Ah, come on. You gotta show us that right now? Uh, search of the sarcophagus. Revealed a body that appears to be several days old. A, a body? D Detective Sky, tell me it wasn't Dirk. Tell me my whole theory was completely off base. I have a photo of the body, and I have positively identified it as. Ah! Oh! Whoa, is that the other half? Oh no, there's two halves to that. That pendant! Oh! Oh no. Dirk Sadmadhi. There's gotta be more than, uh, oh, oh. Ugh, oh God. Uh, Apollo? Oh no, Apollo's not doing so good. Why? Yeah. Cause yeah, this is a, di if this one's pink and the other one's blue, oh really? Ugh. Okay. Yeah, that had to hurt. I Why'd this have to happen? Damn it, Dirk, answer me! He can't, he's eh, very dead. <sighs> ah, 
How can this be? <laughs> the traitorous snake, the very head of the insurgency, murdered? Oh, what a joyous day! Those fools shouting for change and revolution. We'll finally return to whatever rocks they crawled out from under. <laughs> oh god, that's an evil laugh if I ever saw one. Yeah, she's just terrible. Who? What? Was I even fighting for? Apollo. Apollo? What am I supposed to do now? Uh, well, if you, if the uh, if the guy we're defending is dead, okay, okay. I, I... son. Huh? Oh, in his head. A lawyer. Oh, yeah. Is it time for? Is it time? Should never look the way you do right now. A dragon never yields. Even when wounded, a dragon bites down hard and never lets go till its dying breath. It glares, it roars, and it latches its jaws firmly onto its prey to the bitter end. That's what lawyers do to get the, to the truth. Oh, I thought he was going to do his signature catchphrase, too. But, Dirk, what if the truth is that you're... Apollo, in court tomorrow, you may find yourself faced with a truth that is difficult to accept. But I know you, and I know you can handle the truth no matter what it turns out to be. I know that because I believe in you. You're my son, after all. Thanks, Dad. You, you believed in me that much, Dirk? Dirk, I think I finally understand. No, 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 he's his foster father, but he's pretty much his dad because his actual dad died when he was like two, or not even two. But Nayuta and, and Apollo are basically brothers. Sorry, in this game, it's hard to yeah, it's just, uh, can't yield, not now, not ever. Not after Dirk believed in me, despite knowing what was about to happen. Besides, Dirk left me with two things I must do. Are you, uh, all right, Apollo? I thought you were talking about Dirk and uh, Apollo, because I was like, no, they're not brothers. But Nayuta, yeah. That's why Nayuta's pretty, like, broken up too. Sorry about that, Mr. Wright, but I'm, I'm fine now. Uh, Apollo? Detective Sky. Uh, he, yes? How sure are you that the body's been there a few days? I'm positive. No autopsy's been performed yet, but I'd say it's been at least three days. Uh, fortunately, the low temperatures inside the sarcophagus kept it from decaying. Okay, but honest answer, what the heck do you do when the guy... Yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, I think at this point, like, it would be a loss just to give up because them bitches crazy and they gotta pay for the shit they done. Yeah, try to get him in jail, like, pick... Because, well, the thing is... Yeah, the whole reason why Dirk was fighting was to get Karain back to a point where people didn't have to be afraid of like this stupid, shitty system they have implemented. And it's like, we got to take care of that now. Oh, and the chest area bore three gunshot wounds from small caliber weapon. There's the other bullets. I believe they are the cause of death. Dirk's corpse photo added to the court record. Thanks for giving me a photo of my dad! He did eat the bullets. With his chest. At least three days, huh? That means Dirk was already dead by the time he came to visit me back in the States, which is why she was like, I have eyes everywhere. Because her sister was fucking a spy! She's a spy! Jesus fucking Christ. No, but she did still say it in a really stupid way. Sorry, Athena. Th then who was channeling him? I think it would have had to be someone who could get into and stay in the U.S. without arousing suspicion. 
yet also had a solid cover story so they wouldn't be seen as missing. I believe it is this is who was channeling Dirk when I saw him in the States. I mean, there's only one person. Because she was already fucking dead! Dead. This is who is channeling him? I don't think- wait, what? You sure? Hmm. I guess it is a bit of a stretch. Wait, what? Oh, wait, no, duh! Oh, I'm so dumb. It was- it must have been Maya because Maya was technically being held hot. So that's why she was safe! She was there the whole time! Why is with these spirit mediums fucking with our emotions? Okay, fine. Sorry, I messed up. It's Maya, you dumb bitch. I mean, I love you, but why would you do that? Maya? Oh, I see. She was being held hostage at the time, so it seemed only natural that she wasn't around. Right, and do you remember what she said earlier? Yeah, I know. But I, I don't know why I thought Amara again. At one point, yeah. Please tell me, what exactly are you hiding? Yeah. Sorry, but I promised Dirk I wouldn't say you made a promise to Dirk. A <laughs> pretty big one. Yep. Dirk didn't want his own death to be known. The other members of the Defiant Dragons would lose all hope if they found out. And that would snuff out the flames of revolution for good. Miss Faye, Dirk told you to keep quiet about this, didn't he? Uh. I guess there's no point in hiding it anymore. Yes, I promise not to tell. Dirk made me promise before he died. So I was right then. Um, Apollo, there's something I need to tell you. It's about, you know, Dirk's final moments. I'm listening, Miss Faye. What happened in his final moments? It was soon after I was kidnapped. Dirk paid me a visit in that tomb where I was being held captive. I'd say it was a few days before Minister Inga's murder. Hey, young lady, time to get you up and out of here. Uh, uh. It's that revolutionary guy. I'm here to rescue you. You are? Why? I figured things were a little too quiet with that stamp-sucking scumbag. So I started digging around. That's when I found out you'd been abducted. But why would a rebel help me? Let's go before it's too late. It already is for you, pal. <laughs> Long time no see, you rebel blowhard. Inga, uh, I know you're up to something and I'm gonna find out what. Ah, uh, no! Ah. Uh... <laughs> That's got a smart. You've been a real thorn in my side, see? So it's time for you to be pushing up daisies. Okay, so everybody in the royal family is fucking terrible, except for Rafa's okay. She, her parents have been pretty, uh, she, she's learning at least. Yeah. What the? He shot him has so many fucking times! Dirk! Ugh. Uh. Huh. Did you really think a pea shooter like that could kill a dragon? What the? You only have four shots, you dumb bastard. Duh! Oh, what are, you, what are you, some kind of freak? Nuts to this. Okay. Well. Dirk was shot several times, but he barely even flinched. He sacrificed himself for me. Maya, how many people are you going to kill? <laughs> Inadvertently. Yeah, he missed shot for, he was probably freaking out when he shot that last one. It's most certainly not a pea shooter, yeah. Ugh. He said, yeah, sir, please. Uh, these ropes. I've got to help you. Relax, it's gonna be okay. Uh, sorry things turned out this way, but it 
It doesn't look like I have much longer. No, don't say that. You're a spirit medium, aren't you? When I, oh God, oh God! Oh Jesus Christ, sorry guys, I apparently hit the fast button. Okay, when I'm gone, I want you to channel my spirit. Stop it, don't give up like that. If you do, untying a rope like that'll be child's play. Okay. But, sorry, I hit a button. No, please hang in there, you can still make it. Well, look at Dirk, doesn't he look like a large predator to you? Promise me one thing, young lady. It's about my son. Ow. Oh. Dirk? I was talking about you, Apollo. He said he wanted to see you one last time. So he asked me to return to the US and channel his spirit. Ah, ha ha! He really said that? Mm-hmm. He also said he'd been meaning to visit you for years, but kept putting it off. And that was his last chance. You just show up here without warning after all this time. What gives? <laughs> I came all the way to see you, son. Come, rejoice. Ah, oh, this hits different now. Oh. Oh, this hits different. Oh, no. Yep. Derek, you really did come to the U.S. because you wanted to see me. I guess this means it was Inga that hid Dirk's body in the sarcophagus after Maya left the tomb. Apollo, you can't stop now. Dirk would want you to keep pressing on. I know, Miss Fay. And I won't disappoint him. Defense, if you're ready to proceed, I would first have you answer this. Do you believe the accused's death will impact what we know about this case? Yes, I believe I can explain everything now. Yeah, true. Well, this hurt. It's one of the reasons this case is your favorite. Just because of, oh, God. There's so much bullshit. Because these people are fucking terrible. All right, well, your explanation, please. Dirk entered the tome at 3 p.m., the time the hostage exchange was to take place. Or rather, Dirk, as channeled by Miss Faye, did. Now, by the time he entered the tomb at 3 p.m., Minister Inga was already dead. I say that because we know the minister was murdered at 2 p.m. But there was someone else in there. This person was already hiding in the tomb, waiting to channel Dirk in place of Miss Faye. It's obvious. Now, okay. Now it's this crazy ho. Take that. It was you, wasn't it? The fact of the matter is Queen Amara killed Minister Inga at 2 p.m. They wanted to get rid of all the men folks because only women can be trusted. She then went to his private quarters and channeled his spirit. The minister, thinking he was going to be late, hurried to the tomb for the exchange. But once in the tomb, Queen Amara stopped channeling the minister, Inga, and hid herself. Then when Dirk entered at 3 p.m., she snuck up from behind and forcibly drove Dirk's spirit out of Miss Faye's body. Which is probably why she was so weak, actually. Drove his spirit out of her body? Impossible. Attention. Actually, there's one way to do that. With a Magatama of parting, that is. Using one, anyone could drive a spirit out of a person's body, even if it refused to leave. Ugh. Yeah, we know things! Are you telling me that the extra pale brown Magatama in the tomb was- Oh! That's why there was an extra one! Fuck this bitch! That it was. That's right, Prosecutor Sogmadi, and you've seen one in action before. Yeah. You saw how the glowing red Magatama sent the High Priest back to the Twilight Realm, and then it turned into a poopy. And how it turned to a spent pale brown afterwards. Gross. 
In other words, the brown Magatama found in the tomb looks that way because its power had been used up in pushing Dirk's spirit out of Miss Faye's body, right? I probably passed out as soon as Dirk's spirit left my body. I was exhausted after channeling for so long. After that, Queen Amara must have dressed Miss Faye in her usual outfit and tied her up. I'm not sure where she got the outfit, but we can all assume she had it all planned out. Then, Queen Amara must have changed into Dirk's clothes, smeared blood onto them, picked up the knife, and channeled Dirk's spirit. Holy shit. That's how she made it look like Dirk had committed the crime. And that's how she escaped right under our noses. Gah! I don't know, Apollo. The whole thing still seems a bit far-fetched. Phoenix, shut your fucking mouth. You've seen how this works. You've seen so many weird supernatural things. This is totally legit. Dirk, what was going on through your mind while all that was unfolding? Hmm, so ultimately it was all for naught. Oh, a Utah? Those dreams of revolution Dirk was always spouting, they placed nothing but false hope in the minds of the people. And in the end, they were simply fantasies. Now, Yuta, can you, like, for once, just not be a massive dickwad? Now, Yuta, how could you? Karma has spoken. The dream of revolution has withered on the vine. Its fate is sealed. The other insurgents will soon wake up from their shattered dreams. Yeah, he's just so... He's such a bitch. I mean, I feel like the queen is worse, but I, he's he's up there in, like, the top, like, three rankings of people I dislike in this game. No, Dirk's dream can't die like this. I'm not going to sit back and let that happen. I can't, and I won't. Nayuta, don't forget that Dirk's been proven innocent. His name is no longer tainted by the charge of murder. Now the rebels and their sympathizers who have been calling for his release can't be charged with abetting the accused. So the revolution is far from over. It's only just begun, and then Phoenix pulls out like a gun. No, Dirk has not yet been proven innocent. Ah! You have merely indicated the possibility of his innocence. What do you mean? Dirk is indeed dead. However, what if it was Dirk who killed Minister Inga while being channeled by Miss Fa No! Come on! God! And while the crime could have occurred at 2 p.m., you have yet to substantively prove it. Or do you have conclusive proof that the time of Minister Inga's death was at 2 p.m.? Well, no, I, I don't, but... God, this guy is such... She's so annoying! Yeah, she's still not great, though. It seems further testimony will be required of me. As it would appear, I have fallen under suspicion, and I would like to state my case. Prosecutor Saad Madhi, the rebellion must be snuffed out once and for all. You must prove Dirk Saad Madhi to be the foul murderer that he was. And every last insurgent and their sympathizers must be found guilty under the Defense Culpability Act. Yeah, okay, now she's... As you wish, your eminence. Yeah, sure. Lapdog McGee. Why isn't it you to doing this? Garon shouldn't have him under her thumb anymore. Mars not a hostage, so what gives? Now, Yuta, what's left to chain you to her like this? Is it that... Is, is it because she's super hot? Do you like the way she whips you? I don't know, bro. Well, very well then, Queen Amara. Please proceed with your additional testimony. I mean, true. You have no proof. Well done, lawyer. You have painted me as a killer with nothing but your silver tongue. Well, let's not talk about painting you with my tongue. Um, however, you have no evidence proving your distasteful theory. Furthermore, Dirk could have committed the crime while being channeled by Miss Faye. Now, let us end the charade. Well, I don't know what they do in Karain, uh, witchy. 
just saying. It's maybe Corain is like the Alabama of wherever they live. Do you understand now, you putrid pepper? Giving him the issue. I mean, that's also true. There's no point to defending Dirk any longer. It has all been in vain. Let it go and move on, right? Well, not today, bitch. Your theories are but a pillar of salt that crumbles at the slightest breeze. But no more. This ends here and now. The defense may proceed with its cross-examination. Cool. Okay, you know what? Being able to skip things has made this game a billion times more enjoyable. Damn, just think how much time I could have shaved off. Well done, lawyer. Yeah. Proving your distasteful theory. Are you sure about that? I admit I don't have any solid evidence yet. But you're the only one who could have committed the crime. What on earth do you mean? I mean, that's one of the other things I thought, because they look very similar, but we'll have to see. We got to have it on Twitch, yeah. Including Miss Faye, there are only three spirit mediums in current. You missed a conversation earlier that was, well, I skirted around the issue, but we were talking about fluids and things, and yeah, it's fine. Nothing is what it seems the case. Yeah, I know. Furthermore, when the crime scene was first discovered, Queen Garam was with me and Mr. Wright while Ms. Fay was tied up in the tomb. That means that Dirk we saw after the minister's murder, it, guys, it's 10.30, oh God. Could only have been channeled by you, Queen Amara. Yeah, she did the <laughs> Forgive us your mercifulness. Really, your majesty? Ah, uh, but have you considered the following defense? What if there was, unbeknownst to us, another spirit medium in Karain? You were the one who was saying only the priestesses could do it. Fucking figure out your goddamn stance on things, Nayuta. Ah, uh, come on. What are the chances? You lack the evidence to support your claim that Queen Amara is the killer. Which is why you have had to use the process of elimination to zero in on her. Yeah, everyone. It's the entire nation is full of spirit mediums. I it therefore stands to reason that you would have to rule out all other possibilities as well. Well, can you eliminate the possibility of another spirit medium defense? Of course I can! Dumb bastard! Under the circumstances, Apollo, there are two ways to establish Amara's guilt. We either prove she killed Inga, or prove she was in the two. Hmm, which one can I actually prove? I think we can prove that she was in the two. I can prove that Queen Amara was in the tomb when the murder occurred because of her pendant! The pendant! The pendant! Seems you're ever bent on painting me as the killer. Well, if the shoe fits. Very well, let us see some evidence that proves I was at the crime scene. You do have some, do you not? Fuck you! Objection. Queen Amara. Does this pendant look familiar to you? Why, that is, uh... We found it in the tomb and it has the minister's blood on it. Which means it was probably dropped in the course of the crime. Objection. And I fail to see how it is relevant to your argument. Did that not belong to the accused? No, you dumb bastard! That's what I thought too. After all, Dirk had said it himself. He said that? Yes, but it was a lie. Because I believe he was covering for someone. Covering? How? He had a blue one in his corpse photo, you dumb bastard! There's a certain piece of evidence. <sighs> Look, look upon your dead father, you jerk! That's a photo of the accused body, is it not? Yes, it is, and I'd like to call your attention to a certain spot in it. 
the, this right here proves that the pendant that was found in the tomb wasn't Dirk's. Yeah, the fact that it's very blue! Take that! Take that! You will notice an object near Dirk's left arm. It's an identical pendant, except it's blue. Oh, now that you mention it. Don't you find that a little strange? Why would he own two of them, but in different colors? Sorry, I'm stretching my legs a little bit. Here's what I think. The pendants were meant to go together as a pair. A pair? Make sure to stretch everybody if you need to. I, this is, we've been at it for eight and a half hours. A pair? If the blue pendant was Dirk's, then what about this pink one with Minister Inga's blood on it? Even though it's exactly, who do you suppose it belongs to? <laughs> Objection. Sorry to disappoint, but no fingerprints were found on the pink pendant. Therefore, we have no way of knowing to whom it belongs. Objection. There is totally a fingerprint on that, like it's a big one! Ah, but that's where you're wrong, Prosecutor Sadmadi. I'm guessing you didn't know that this pendant is actually a locket. Uh, come again? Now this is where it gets interesting. When we open this locket up, we found a faint fingerprint inside, on the back of the lid, to be exact. No, what? N n no. So now the question is, to whom does the fingerprint belong? Yeah, somebody's sweating. Whoa, looks like your godliness isn't helping you right now, Amara. Queen Amara, it belongs to you, doesn't it? Oh. Uh, seems I've truly rendered the witness speechless this time around. This cannot be! Mother, tell me it does not belong to you! Nayuta, I... Eh? Think about it, Queen Amara. Dirk must have realized you were channeling his spirit, and he had probably already figured out who the minister's killer was. And yet, he still claimed that the pink pendant belonged to him. But why would he do such a thing? Because he still loved you, you dumb lady! You really don't know. He was protecting you. Because he loved you. He loved you until his very last breath and beyond. Yeah, big secret. I can't tell you what it is because I'll be betraying a certain someone. Yeah, your freaking wife who's still alive. Dirk knew everything, even that he was being used. But he kept quiet, all for your sake. Dirk, why do you always? Well, Queen Amara, Dirk, the one whose love for you never wavered all these years. Are you going to betray him now? D Dirk, I... Ah! Oh! Oh, okay. Did you finally realize it, mother? Th this cannot be, I refuse to accept it. Queen Amara, are you ready to confess to your crime? Um, I can deny it no longer. The truth is, it was I, Amara Sigatar Korain, who slew Minister Inga. That's preposterous! Oh, fuck you, Nayuta. Blah! Yeah, why? I don't know. Maybe because you're a bad son. Actually, that's really mean, but still, he's kind of a jerk. The, this is beyond belief! But mother, why would you? Forgive me, Nayuta. I never wished to cause you such sorrow. But I had no choice. It was the only way. The only way?! So in the end, the Queen Amara and Duke Sadmadi uh, or Dirk Sarmati. I suppose this means they were unable to reconcile while he was still alive. I don't think the state of the kingdom or the incidents of the past would have allowed that. They were prisoners of their shared history, so to speak. Queen Amara, I know there's, some there's something I need to know. You had staged a near-perfect crime, 
So why did you bring this pendant into the tomb with you? Oh, because of course she's still... You should have known it could come back to haunt you. I do not really understand it myself. I had nearly been assassinated by my own husband. Yet I could not bear any hatred towards him because you weren't assassinated by him! I was unable to discard this or part with it for even a short time. As with Dirk, I have never stopped loving my husband for the past 23 years. Mother. So she really believes it? That Dirk tried to assassinate her? Updated. It belongs to Amara. Yeah, of course it is. Your Majesty, is it not time? Yeah, I I feel like she's been kind of like that's just been ingrained in her head by her sister or something. Time to declare Dirk innocent? I would ask that you do this for my beloved who now dwells in the Twilight Realm. Very well then. Your Eminence, Prosecutor Sadmati, if you have no further objections. Darn, this cannot be my mother. Oh, I have no object. Oh, of course she has no problem with her sister going to fucking jail. God, fuck you. I have no objections. Yeah, because I, I, I think that's the thing. And it's been 23 years, so she's had a lot of time to have a lot of shit thrown at her. Jealous sister wants to get rid of Queen to be Queen herself. Yeah. Dirk, I did it. I finally did it. I proved you innocent. But. Very well, then. Being that Queen Amara yet lives, we can no longer charge the accused with an assassination that never came to fruition. As for the murder of Minister Inga, the truth has been laid bare for all to see. Therefore, I will now pass judgment upon the accused, Mr. Dirk Sadmadi. Ah, I knew it! Is it Nayuta? Is it Nayuta? No, it's Ra Rafa! Rafa! Why? Baby, why? Your, your benevolence? I, I, I cannot accept this. Rafa, why? Baby, no. Is something the matter, your benevolence? Queen Amara is lying. It makes no sense. Queen Amara would not have killed my father. Uh, what's with her all of a sudden? Oh, no, there's more. Is this uh, some sort of lingering affection towards Nana? Rafa, speak the truth, Queen Amara. Did you really kill my father? Yes, there is no mistake. She has confessed to the crime, thereby clearing the accused of all suspicion. As such, I, need, I see no need to continue these proceedings. She doesn't trust her mom at all anymore, and I wouldn't either. Barbed head, horn head, are you going to let this stand? Dirk's been proven innocent, and he's about to get declared not guilty. Even so, something doesn't feel right. Apollo, if you have any doubts, now's the time to raise them. Yeah, because sister is going to get off scot-free. After all, the courtroom is a place for finding the whole truth. But it's all up to you. There are definitely things that don't quite add up. Does this mean that the whole truth hasn't been brought to light yet? Should I push to continue this trial? PUSH TO CONTINUE! I mean, I'd rather let it end so I could... ...go to sleep, but we're continuing! We're almost through, I think, guys. Your Majesty, I have a feeling we haven't discovered the whole truth. The only way we'll ever find it is to continue the trial. Hornhead? Very well, then. Will the defense please tell us this? What important fact about this case has has yet to come to light? I'm pretty sure it's the motive. Her married life! Um, Queen Amara, there's something I still don't understand. What was your motive for killing Justice Minister Inga? I get that he's a big swinging dick bag, but still. Was it because he shot your husband? That is a fair question, and one that I shall now answer. It was for the future of this kingdom that I slew Inga Karkul Karain. To avert further tragedy, his death was an unfortunate necessity. Further tragedy? Over the past several years, Minister Inga had been rapidly expanding his power, 
He had established the secret police and was relentless in his pursuit of the insurgents. I wonder if wife set that up for him. He even had the overwhelming support of the people, but he was still not satisfied. Hungry for more power, he began planning a coup d'etat. You mean his plot to involving the Founder's Orb, which led to Maya Fey's abduction? Yes, Minister Inga planned to use the orb to gain access to great spiritual power, after which he would assassinate Garon and his up usurp the throne. His machinations were reminiscent of that terrible tragedy of 23 years ago. And as one affected by that incident, Amara vowed to never allow a repeat of such events. She fucking burned her house. Yes, and the Holy Mother delivered unto me the perfect opportunity to fulfill my vow. Security amid the courtyard was rather light due to the right of channeling. And Inga had barricaded himself in the tomb with his hostage away from prying eyes. I knew I would never again have such a perfect opportunity, so... At 2pm, during the rite of channeling, I slipped into the tomb and slew the minister. Oh, bitch be lion! My bracelet! Apollo! Yep. Seems this trial is far from over. Ugh. Queen Amara, I believe you're still hiding something. But if you want to keep on playing this game of hide and seek, then let's start with that last statement you made. If I must. Oh, I was like, what am I doing? I gotta press the button. Damn, now we get to get a close up. Damn, Nayuta, you're such an asshole, but your mom's super hot. Is that, is that, did I just explain like everybody who like hangs out with that one friend that they don't actually like? But they're like, well, their the mom's kind of hot. Um, I'm pretty sure I saw movement in the first part, but I don't remember exactly where. So we're gonna read it. We're gonna watch it over again. Damn. <clears throat> Listen again. Yeah, she her fingers. Come on! Gotcha. gotcha. I saw your finger twitching. Queen Amara, don't worry about whatever I'm doing with my arm right now. You're not very comfortable talking about the two o'clock rite of channeling, are you? I can tell because a finger on your left hand twitched almost imperceptibly when you did. Uh oh. And that pose you make, is there something about your chest that makes you nervous? Wow, Apollo, don't fucking talk about ladies' booby sizes in the middle of the courtroom. Maybe she's uncomfortable. Maybe one's like a lot bigger than the other. I don't know. Whatever do you mean? The murder occurred at 2 p.m. And I'm pretty positive Amara was in the tomb at that time. So then why is she so self-conscious about her chest when she talks about the right. Do the do the ladies have different booby sizes? Does she have smaller boobs? No one needs to tolerate this guy. Yeah. Okay. I can't see their boobs in the profile. How am I supposed to check the boobs? The right of channeling. Didn't Albi snap a picture of it? Yeah. Queen Amara, I have here a picture of the right of channeling. It was secretly taken by a certain individual. Objection. Uh, you're not allowed to have that. Such insolence. I would have the perpetrator's name at once. Uh... Oh, uh, sorry, no can do. See, I just happened to find it on the ground, so... Do you take me for a fool? Um, how about we discuss the photo's origin a little later, because right now... There's something much more pressing at hand. What's on her chest? Is it, is it like a burn or something? 
can't tell. Well, I'm sure we'll figure it out. I believe this photo merits further examination. I just wish there was more to see it that in it than darkness and more darkness. I might be able to make a few more details with some image adjustments. Let's ask Emma if she can help. Emma! Bailiff, please summon Detective Sky to the Hall of Justice. Okay. Hi, Emma. Here you are. I was able to obtain a much clearer image by raising the brightness. Oh, burn! Because she's got scars from the fire! Oh, fucking shit. Hmm? What's that right there? An injury? No, wait. I think it's a burn scar. Channeling photo updated in the court record! Son of a bitch! I knew it. Wait a second. Your eminence... <laughs> you don't have a burn scar like that on your ample bosom! <laughs> Sorry guys, we just had to take a second to appreciate this. <laughs> the camera zoom! What are you doing staring at my royal bosom? going on here? Oh, then that means the person doing the channeling. Then who is it? Ba -ba 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 -da. It's obviously fucking... Who else could it be? Mom, show me your chest. Minamara, the person in this photo isn't Queen Garan. It's you posing as her, isn't it? Um... The two of you look quite similar, but that's no surprise considering your sisters. Even the shape and position of your facial tattoos are almost exactly the same. And you're both capable of channeling spirits. Therefore, it wouldn't be any it would have been easy for you to impersonate Queen Garon. Especially to foreign diplomats that probably don't know like exactly what she looks like. Ugh. Show me your tits! Queen Amara, you have a burn scar on your chest, don't you? Please remove your round mandala so we can see what's behind it for ourselves! Reveal yourself! Um, excuse me! Excuse me! What are you doing? Ah! Boo burn! We found it! Look! Da da da! <laughs> These fucking boob close ups! Jesus Christ! It's the exact same burn scar as the one in the photo! I don't understand. I knew it! So the person in this photo really is. Yes, it's Queen Amara. Th this is absurd! Are you suggesting they switched places? A yeah, convenient boob window, exactly. Uh... Yeah, apparently. Like, you've been in this trial for nine hours. Here's some tits. Thanks. Actually, no, I've only been in this trial for... Uh, four hours, but I've been in this park for almost nine hours. Amara's confession earlier was also false? Mother! What is the meaning of this? Don't you see? This changes everything. We know for a fact that this photo was taken at 2 p.m., the exact time the murder took place. But, but! That would mean Queen Amara couldn't possibly have committed this crime. Yeah, is there somebody else who can channel spirits, Judge? Can you use your judgy brain? Exactly, she now has an ironclad alibi. So Minister Inga's killer couldn't have been Queen Amara. I am afraid I no longer follow uh, defense. Was it not Queen Amara who channeled the minister and accused the, to, and they accused to stage the crime? Yes, that fact has not changed. We have evidence placing her at the scene of the crime. And Dirk could have only been there in the tomb if she were channeling him. Which means... While Queen Amara did use spirit channeling to stage the crime, she didn't kill Minister Inga. His real killer is still someone else. Bulkonka! I think the Queen Queen did the killing. Queen Amara is not the killer, then who is it? Isn't it obvious? That bitch! 
why was this rite held in the first place if Queen Goron wasn't going to perform it? Who was behind the two sisters switching places, and for what reason? The answers to these questions, along with the establishment of Queen Amar's alibi, obliterate a certain someone else's alibi, but... You! Get out of here! Why, that's... Is this some kind of joke? Do I look like I'm laughing? Judge? No, your majesty. I could never joke about something so grave. The only one who seemed to have a perfect alibi at the time of the murder was her eminence, Garon Sigatar Karain. Jesus, these names. Ugh. Queen Amara, didn't your sister Queen Garon ask you to pose as her and perform the rite of channeling? I... And didn't she also have you drive Dirk's spirit from Ms. Faye's body and then stage the crime to make it look like she, like he was the minister's killer? Uh, and at 2 p.m. while you were performing the rite of channeling as Queen Garan, didn't she kill Minister Inga while disguised as Dirk? Well, your mercifulness? Uh, it's no use trying to hide it any longer. You need to tell us the truth now. M mother The truth is uh just t this Oh, wha wha what? 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 Mother? Thank you thoughts for the follow. No. Who what? Excuse me? She just got fucking shot. <laughs> I I really did it. Your eminence, my life is yours! Oh my god, her fucking dumbass royal guard fucking fan club. Yeah, I don't- Twitch is dumb. What the- Isn't he one of Garen's war, royal guards? The Queen Amara! Bailiff, arrest that guardsman! Jesus! Garen couldn't have. Would she? Of course she could have. They'll do whatever the fuck she says. Someone call for an ambulance quickly now. Oh my god. Uh, she got shot by one of um, other chicks, royal guards people, and Jesus. No, I don't think it's dads. I think it was literally just one of the royal guardsmen. Holy shit. Okay. Oh, okay, guys, this is it. This is the final bit. And then we'll, we'll be fucking done. It's only 11 o'clock. May 19th. This is what happens every time I finish a Phoenix Wright game. I play all day because I just want to be done. I'm not even tired right now. I just want to fucking... I don't want to do this anymore. We're lucky the ambulance made it in time, but we've been forced into a recess now that things get straightened out. Yeah, I can't believe what just happened. Tell me about it. Do you think Garan put that guard up to it? If she did, she's gonna regret it. No one gets away with something like that on my watch. Poor Queen Amara. Uh, your benevolence? Any news on her condition? She's underground, or she's underground. She's undergoing surgery at the hospital as we speak. Having a recess, you can have one too. It's okay, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. Oh wait, well, stretching is probably. If you guys need to stretch or get water or anything, yeah, she's underground, you know. Oh, God. Thank you so much be for being here, Sage. I'm sorry, I don't usually go on this long, but I'm just, I'm ready to be done with this game. Yeah, move a little. I am, I am. That's why you guys saw me, like, doing leg lifts. Oh, and 10 squats, okay. She's under... Go, she's undergoing surgery at the hospital as we speak. They're giving her a 50-50 chance of survival, though. That gar and justice will be served! Why? Why did this happen? 
No, oh, just as we finally reunited. Yeah, no, it was good seeing you. And I'm glad that you had a, a good stream too and you got to do some cosplay. Oh, Queen Amara. Um, what was that about being reunited? Hmm? Oh, it, it's nothing. Right. How are you, Hornhead? Dirk Sadmat, he was your father in all but blood after all. Thank you for your concern, your benevolence, but I'm fine. Right now, we still have a trial to see through. So that's what I'm going to stay focused on. Sorry, we're gonna have to nail your mother. Hornhead, you are sturdier than your stature lets on. Just don't overdo it, okay, Apollo? Ugh, Dirk, he was a real shocker. All that was a real shocker, all right. Can't believe the dragon is dead. That's... Sage, I was wondering, when Dirk disappeared after I freed him, that's because Amara turned back into herself, right? Yeah, I suppose so. But I don't know if it was because Dirk's spirit willed it, or if it was a part of Garon or Amara's plan. Man, a dream of revolution. Now what are we gonna do? Is this it? Don't give up yet. There's a very good chance that Garon is the real culprit in all of this. And if we can prove her guilt in court... Hey, you're right! That could be just the push we need! The dream lives on! Yes, it does. And you know what that means, AJ. The fate of the revolution rests squarely on your shoulders! Thanks for the pressure! <sighs> no more revolution. Heh, <laughs> all in a day's work. Ugh, who am I kidding? That's a ton of pressure. But uh, this is what Dirk gave his life for, so I guess I have to do this for him. The Honorable Rebel Dirk Sadmadhi. I would have loved to have spoken with him while he yet lived. Really? W why not? I, I mean, he seemed like quite an interesting man. Did she bump her head or something earlier? No, she's actually learning. Unlike every other adult around here. The trial is about to resume. The defense is to report to the courtroom at once. Already? After what just happened? First thing Garn will do is respond to that last accusation. You better stay on your toes, Apollo. I will, Mr. Wright. Ready or not, Garon, here comes justice. <sighs> May 19th, High Court of Corrine. Yes, Skipsies. Now then, let us resume today's proceedings. Now, Yuta, why are you still over there? She literally tried to kill your mom. Huh? Oh, he's not there. Where's Nayuta? I must offer my apologies. I never imagined a royal guardsman would do such a thing. Fuck you, bitch! You told him to, probably! What? He wasn't acting under your orders? Well, why would she, like, even admit to that, honestly? H how dare you cast such suspicions upon her eminence? It is quite all right, your majesty. Suspicion is only natural under such circumstances. But rest assured that he acted alone, for I knew nothing of his plans. Yeah, he, well, because religion. I don't believe that for a second. Now then, your majesty, regarding the murder of my husband, Minister Inga, I would like to offer a new possibility. A new possibility, you say? Indeed, for during the break, the real killer confessed to me. What are you talking about? What? Bailiff, call the witness to the stand. It's gonna be that guard! The real con killer confessed? What she got up her sleeve this time? Yeah. Really bad feeling about this. It's gonna be one of her stupid lackey guards. It's... Oh, it's the Utah! Are you fucking kidding me, you dumb piece of shit? Oh, I hope he's just doing this to try to find the truth. God, Nayuta, how many times are you going to make me say that I hate you? Like, every single time I see you? He's the one who confessed? Wow. Prosecutor Sadmati, you're the real killer. Shut up, judge. There's literally no way he could be the killer, but whatever. Anything like that should be it. Yeah, no, for sure. I questioned him during the recess, and I, as I felt that Amara had been covering for someone. You, you dumb bitch. 
So it was that he finally... So it was that he finally confessed his crime to me. Now, Yuta, you didn't really do it, did you? Eminence speaks the truth. It was I who killed Justice Minister Inga. No, it's not. Shut up. I want to just stab all of them. Now, Yuta, you can go too. Sorry. Too many bad apples. Now, Yuta! He did... He didn't do it. Okay. Everybody, shut up! Peace! Prosecutor Sadmani, are you absolutely certain about this? A confession of this nature is grave indeed. Yeah, you didn't, yeah, come on. Yes, I am certain. For I killed him with my own hand. <laughs> At last the real killer has been revealed. How are we supposed to respond to this? Nayuta, retract your confession now! Mr. Justice, it is not yet time for your cross-examination. Who cares about that? Admit it! It was Queen Garan who put you up to this. She forced you into giving a confession, didn't she? You are out of line, Mr. Justice. Learn some self-restraint. Ugh, but... Or do you have something that might prove that I did not commit this murder? Well, you have to fucking do tell me your stance. Ah, what do you think you're doing, you idiot? Truly, the truth can set us free. It's like Garan got to him somehow. I definitely didn't see this coming. Nayuta, why are you doing this? Why would you sacrifice even your life to do Garan's bidding? Yeah, exactly. There's been a lot going on. Whatever the case may be, Prosecutor Sadmadi, your testimony, please. Ayuta's confession would not remain silent while her eminence fell under suspicion for this crime. It was I who murdered Justice Minister Inga. He had to die for the future of Karain. I consider it divine judgment cast upon a fiend who sought to assassinate our monarch. My mother was simply covering for me. I am ashamed I let her go so far for my sake. You do understand what you're doing, right, Nayuta? You're sentencing yourself to death if you're found guilty. If that is the court's verdict, then so be it. I must obey the law above all else. The law, Nayuta, or the queen? Objection. Enough! This blather has nothing to do with the witness's testimony. Please address any issues you may have during the cross-examination defense. Oh, I will! I'm gonna blow his problematic testimony to smithereens with this gun I found! Cross-examination. Ayuta's confession. Hold it! Really? So you killed Minister Inga and Queen Amara staged the crime. Is that how it went? Precisely. My mother is as clever as she is kind. She sought to conceal my crime by taking all of the guilt upon herself. Yet another lie. I need to poke a hole in this testimony, but how? Very blasted a hole. Yeah, this is true. Now you take. Could it be that you didn't know Nana's real identity? You didn't realize that Nana was actually Queen Amara, your own mother. Now that is not as strange as you might think. Much time had passed since we last met, after all. Right, 23 years ago, was it? When Dirk saved her after the supposed assassination attempt. No, Mr. Justice, it was 15 years ago that Dirk abducted my mother. Huh? That's weird. Are you sure about that? I remember it clearly. It was a, I was around 10 years old at the time. Huh? Now you to please add that to your testimony. What the fuck are you talking about? You're saying that Dirk made off with Queen Amara 15 years ago. But that's strange because I heard something very different from Dirk. Yeah. He said that they ran off together 23 years ago. Yeah, that photo, uh, yeah, the age would have been different. 
That is impossible. I know for a fact it was 15 years ago. Well, I have evidence that contradicts your statement. How do you explain this photo? Dirk said it was taken 23 years ago. He said that? He did, but if we take what was said as fact, there's something in this photo that doesn't make any sense. Hmm, this isn't making any sense to me, but I suppose I should ask. Because he's a fucking baby in the picture, not a 10 year old. You don't fucking judge. Look at him, he's a baby. Now Yuta, this discrepancy may not be directly related to the case, but I don't think we can simply overlook it either. Dirk said the baby in the photo was you. But that doesn't make any sense if the photo is only 15 years old. After all, you said you were around 10 then, right? Gah! He's definitely sweating bullets over there over something. Apollo, if this baby isn't Nayuta, oh wait, you don't think... Did Queen Amara have another child while she was on the run? What? Uh-huh. And just what if that child were being held hostage? Nayuta, is that why you obey Queen Garon's every command? You presume too much! I fucking, you know, I thought about this earlier, but I'm like, hmm, I don't know. Ah, and that's why Queen Amara was trying to take the rap as well. To protect this other child. A child born 15 years ago. Hmm, it would have had to be about 14 or 15 years old now. I wonder who that could be. This is just a guess, but I believe I know someone who fits the bill. God, so she stole her child too. That's why she took care of her the whole time. Oh my God, fucking. All this strange statement she kept making, now they all make sense. Can I ask you something? Oh, okay. Oh, so they're, wow, they're one big happy family. Apollo has so many siblings now. Yeah, I'm very to with child discipline, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Oh my God, we're really watching all this. <laughs> Because uh, Queen Amara's your mom. Holy shit! Seriously! No! Why do we gotta watch every single flashback? Fuck that. We get it. Now I see, Nayuta, why you do what you're told. The other child born to her was a... Mr. Justice, I believe I know what you're about to say. But I cannot allow you to name an innocent soul as the child of terrible sinners. I thought you might try to stop me. After all, simply revealing this information endangers who you've been trying to protect. Ugh. I think this should make it clear what I'm talking about. This is the chink in your armor, the reason why you fear for your sibling's reputation. Arson, incidents, Amara's private residence, slipped a sleeping pill, and perished in the fire, lighter front. Take that! And that is... A file full of information that Dirk collected on what happened 23 years ago. A particular note right now is what's written here. Oh, page 34. Yeah, the sins of the father are visited upon his children. Ah! This deeply held idea is why you were expelled from the royal family, and you were trying to keep her from getting expelled, which means it wouldn't bode well for your sibling either, if she were revealed to be Dirk's daughter. Ugh. You became a prosecutor to bring down Queen Garan, but at some point, you came to serve the very regime you despised. And that was because the queen found this chink in your armor. That is how she came to use your sister against you. I, I uh. Oh. Now, Yuta, have you been keeping the secret all this time? Have you been trying to protect me? You are an innocent party to all of this. I live only to safeguard the law, 
and serve the country and queen from which it flows. One such as you, who is destined to ascend to the throne, need not fret over one such as I. No, I cannot accept that! What you say is, it's... malarkey! Don't you even care what happens to you? Apparently not. Your country, queen, law, and everyone's future. My personal feelings are of no consequence. That is why I resigned myself to my fate. I know I must accept the status quo without any thoughts of change. Apparently, her, uh, Nana taught her some weird words. Spoken like a true prosecutor and patriot, I shall continue to rule Karain till the day Rafa succeeds me, for that is what is best for our kingdom. No, it's not. I know, your eminence. It's not! Yours is no small sacrifice. But I promise you this, in exchange for your life, the child shall remain safe and the kingdom shall prosper. Can Hello, judge, can you hear this? This bitch is seriously just threatening this dude. It's, it's just child's not even hers! That is all I can ask for with my meager existence. You is this really the new you? It sucks! Resigning yourself to the will of another and killing any hope you held for the future? No! The new Yuta I knew would never let himself be turned into this! Now, your majesty, if you would hand down your verdict- OBJECTION! Objection! Yeah, fuck you. You can say you're simply accepting your fate, Nayuta, but I know that deep down there's still hope in your heart. Oh, holy mother, preserve me. The kind of hope that perseveres through the most desperate of times. And it's what blinds you, me, and Dirk together. Binds. Binds, sorry. As a family, even if you're a dick. I know because this has demonstrated to me that you haven't lost all hope yet. Time to show him. Daddy's badge. He never confiscated it. You left it! His... When you interrogated Dirk... Yeah, I'm, t I'm definitely tired of reading. You confiscated all his possessions as potential evidence, all except this. Did he take your time match too? No, I thought it was strange. He didn't take it from me. Yeah, I, you didn't do it. So tell me, Nayuta, why didn't you take his badge? Yeah, no, don't be quiet. Tell me. Show me! You couldn't bear to take it from him, could you? And I know why. It's because this badge means something special to us. Hey, Dirk, why do you still wear your badge? You're not a lawyer, am I right? This is my heart and soul, son. I'll never stop trying to realize my dream, not know my very last breath. A dragon never yields, right? Exactly. Now you tell Paul, I want to restore this. I want to pass it down to you. Okay, we got it. You may say you've given up, but that's not how it really is, is it? You never gave up and you never will because you still believe that all of the wrongs will be righted someday, don't you? Hmm. You are very perceptive, Mr. Justice. It may very well be as you say. Why did I not confiscate this badge? Even I did not know until now. Perhaps I was waiting for him save me. Save you? Yes, save me, like he did on that day. Yeah. He saved me, though. And yeah, now you tell Paul, hold on, I'm coming! Because they got swept away, and then he grabbed them. And now they're crying. Yeah, father, you risked your life for me. Someday. He would come and free our family from the chains of the past. Perhaps deep down, that is what I believed. I believed in Dirk, our father. Now you two, I knew you! However! It was but a dream. And now that dream has died. Murdered along with Dirk. So now, as the eldest, the responsibility falls squarely onto me. No matter the cost, I must protect her. Please, try to understand, Apollo. Understand why I shall bear all this sin. It is the only way. But, but! Such insolence! Oh, shut up! 
You've wasted more than enough of my time, lawyer. Do you not see the futility of your desperate flounderings? The immutability, uh, immutability of his duty? That's a word I don't use much. It is time to accept defeat. Ugh! <laughs> now come watch as the hammer of justice comes down upon your dear brother. Your majesty, the verdict, if you will. Uh, yes, your eminence. Objection. No. Wait a second, what do I do? Does the defense wish to raise an objection? Uh, um, there's gotta be some way to save Nayuta. Apollo, it all goes back to that incident 23 years ago. It's branded him the son of a criminal. So if we could once and all prove that Dirk didn't try to assassinate Amara, right, Nayuta and Rafa's father would be no longer viewed as a criminal. But I thought there wasn't any evidence left because it was all destroyed in the fire. And Dirk investigated the matter for years, but never managed to learn anything new. Really? Nothing at all? Could an exceptional lawyer like Dirk try that long and really uncover nothing at all? He had over two decades, Apollo. He's right. I doubt Dirk would have gone to his grave without discovering something new. He must have secretly planted something to topple Garan with somewhere. Take another look at the evidence. You might just find what we need to break out of the situation in there. Got it. I know what we have to do. Guess who died in that fire? My father died, and he's he's got to have a name. If the defense is done stalling for time, I shall now render my verdict. No, no, wait. About the assassination attempt 23 years ago. The defense has some new information it would like to share. You do? Hmm. Well, we had intended to deliberate that case in the course of this trial. Mm. Dirk, did you leave something behind for me? Is there some connection to this case? Very well then. What is the source of your new information from 23 years ago? Um, where's my dad? Take that! A photograph? Yes, do you recall the traveling musician who died in that fire 23 years ago? How could anyone forget such a painful chapter in our history? The poor fellow was caught up in the blaze that was meant for Queen Amara. He never knew his identity though, as his belongings were burnt to ashes. Well about that, the truth is, uh, he was my biological father. Oh? What? What? Why of course, with his photo and her benevolence, Exactly, we might be able to prove Dirk completely innocent. And that would free her from the infamy of having criminal blood in her veins. Because here in Korain... We can witness the final memories of the dead! Oh, we've come full circle! What? what? Utter nonsense! Oh, we're gonna see this bitch trying to kill her sister! Or... Kill her sister. There's no evidence left in the wake of that blaze! That's what you think, but Dirk went to the ends of the earth to bring this little souvenir back for us. He, he did? Yep, and boy is it the best piece of evidence ever. He knew that with it, we'd finally be able to conclusively settle the matter here in court and save his children. Your Majesty, the defense requests that we hold a divination seance for this new victim. What a waste of time! The events of 23 years past have already been deliberated at length. But wasn't Dirk on trial for that incident as well today? So we wouldn't be doing our jobs if we failed to look in on this new lead, would we? Ugh. As the presiding judge, I will now share my thoughts on the matter. The attempted assassination of Queen Amara is a case we can ill afford to leave open. And I believe that the final memories of the victim will prove to be very important. Thank you, Judge, for being on my side! Therefore, it is the opinion of this court that we should conduct another divination seance. Why, you... Your benevolence? If you knew the full name of this victim seen in this photo, you'd be able to perform a divination seance, right? Yeah, that was the smartest thing you said all the time. 
Of course, leave it to me. Thank you. My father's full name is... Jove Justice. All right. Now, your benevolence, please commence the divination seance when you are ready. Nope, no middle name, apparently. I mean, he wasn't Kuranese, so he didn't have like a 50 million mile long name. This divination seance in your name. Let the eyes okay, we're, I, I, we've already heard this a bunch of times. Final memories, blah, blah, blah. She's about to do the funky dance. Boom, skip, we did it. Sorry, I've seen that dance too many times. She dances and now we go into the water and we see the murky memories of Father Man. Burning, heat, burning, crying, baby. Oh, that's, uh, oh, is that, uh, the pain, pain. Baby, you dropped the baby. Okay, a hand, oh, the lighter. Oh, oh shit. Crying, pain, heat, burning, ow. There was definitely a hand in the mirror. The spirit of the victim has granted us a window into his final moments. It would appear the divination sands was a success. Father, so those were my father's final moments. That baby we saw must have been you, Apollo, and you got chucked to the fucking ground. I will now decipher the experience of the deceased. Are you ready, Hornhead? Yes, please proceed. I'm pretty sure the hand is the big thing. Very well, here are the interpretations of the facts as gleaned from the seance vision. Insight. Yes. Rafa's insight. Someone attempted to assassinate Queen Amara by setting her residence ablaze. Hornhead's father happened to stop by and was knocked out by the assassin. Dirk's fingerprints were discovered on the lighter found at the scene of the crime. That is how he was determined to be the assassin. Hornhead's father tried to save his son, but sadly he perished in the attempt. That is everything the deceased experienced in this final moments. Father's final memories, they're right here for everyone to see, but any of them unlock the truth behind what happened 23 years ago? Bum ba da bum bum, let's find that out. Dirk's fingerprints were found on the lighter. Baby! Oh, 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 wait, let's go back. Can I go back? Why is this? I don't know why this is being so fucking dumb with like the controller. Maybe it's because I turned it on mid emulation. Go back, please. Yeah, there's a reflection, exactly. It's just I my Y button wasn't working, so I couldn't go back, and I was like, I want to start over. Dirk's fingerprints were discovered on the lighter that was found at the crime scene. However... The hand holding the lighter in the seance vision appears to be gloved. Ah, I believe you're right. What could this mean? Calls into question whether the hand in the vision really was Dirk's. If only we could make out the details a little better. Very well, I will attempt to focus a bit more on what the deceased saw. Perhaps that will help refine the seance vision. Whoa! Oh. Hmm, it does seem that there was a glove on that hand. Waiting for her to also be shot? Please, no. Still, what significance could that have? 
means that Dirk's fingerprints got on the lighter at some other time. Somebody could have even put them there after the fire. All you have is pure speculation while the fact remains that they are his fingerprints. Therefore, it stands to reason that Dirk was the one who used the lighter. Objection! I want her to be shot. It just means I had to prove that the figure in the vision is someone else, using the information in my father's final memories. Either way, it seems that I must revise my insights. Okay. okay, she's updated her insights. Time to go over them and see if there are any new inconsistencies. So something to do with the wristband. I do not know who it belongs to. Wait, what is... Objection! Wait, then this means that the real culprit is... The figure in this vision is clearly not Dirk. It, it looks like a tattoo or like a, a... Like a... One of those cuffs that they're wearing? The distinctive band around their wrist gives the... True identity away. Ah! That design, it can't be! This will prove just whose hand was captured in the seance vision. Wait. Oh god, there's too many pieces of evidence! What? Wait! Holy shit, was it fucking- Oh, no. It, it is! Okay, it doesn't- Yeah, that's his- That's his! Okay. That photo, so you do believe the culprit to be- Oh, man. Justice Minister Inga had cuffs with the exact same pattern on them. Y you're referring to the cuffs of justice, correct? Oh, but back then- Ink oh, Inga wasn't around back then. Somebody else was the Minister of Justice back when that happened. Yes, I hear their traditional part of the Kurinese Justice Minister's attire. But what does this tell us? It tells us that the figure in the vision is none other than Kurain's late Minister of Justice, Inga Karkul Kurain. No, not my father. Who do we know that pre- yeah, we, we know exactly who had that position. They plotted the assassination of the former queen as well as the current one. Justice Minister Inga, so then Dirk's innocent of both charges! Fine dragons, they must have been right all along! Not quite right. Ayuta? What you proposed is not possible, Apollo. But back then, Inga Karkul Korain was not the Minister of Justice. What? The Justice Minister 23 years ago was... That bitch right there. You, Queen Garon! What?! Oh right, she served as the Minister of Justice before succeeding the throne. I guess she also prosecuted the assassination attempt 23 years ago as one. So then, the figure in this vision is actually... Your Eminence! It's you, isn't it? This is madness! Why would her eminence do such a thing? Because she's a crazy bitch! Because she would ascend to the throne! She wanted to usurp the throne from her sister Amara? That's why she tried to assassinate her? Twice? Now? I find this all very hard to swallow. Your eminence, are you... Are you the one responsible for tearing my family apart? Was it you who killed my father? Well, your eminence, I'm asking you a question. Hmm. Peasants, always carrying on about things of no import. You, you do not deny it then. You concealed the truth and used me for your own designs? 
Oh, Nayuta, spare me your feeble-minded line of questioning. Even if Dirk were cleared of all charges, it shall still be I who decides Rafa's fate. You do wish for her to be queen someday, do you not? Ugh. Remember, the child on lives only by my good graces. Now kneel before me and fulfill your end of the bargain by offering me your head. Your eminence. I am done heeding your commands. Even as you used my sister against me, I still believed you. I believed that protecting your secrets was in the best interest of this kingdom. But you, you have been deceiving me all the while. Again, queen status upon her revival. I mean, t technically, but she also had it in her head that Dirk tried to kill her. There's a lot of bullshit. Nayuta! Nayuta, you dare defy me? Your eminence, I can turn the other cheek no more. Therefore, I hereby retract my confession in the murder of Justice Minister Inga. Retract, you say? Yeah, I'm allowed to do that. Ugh. Dirk, the final piece of evidence you left behind has released Nayuta from his suffering. And now he's finally free. Uh... In all this time, not once did I reflect on my own conduct, for I'd believed all was fate. Yeah, you dumb bitch, that's not how things work! Don't be like him! Yeah, redemption arc in like the last 30 minutes of the game, after 30 plus hours of him being a total dickweed. Still don't like him. Lost in my own sense of resignation, I was unable to wake from my despair. But you, Apollo, you have awakened me with your demonstration of our father's creed. Um, where did you throw that? You just threw it on the ground. A dragon never yields. Oh yeah, cause now he's gone back to being, he has his cool tattoo because he's a rebel. I will carry on Dirk's legacy and fulfill his dream. Hear me, Garon. I will cast you down from your bloody throne. Long live the revolution. Ugh, insolent fool. Yeah. Now even you prattle on about revolution. Yeah, fuck your nails. Would you look at that? Well, Apollo, seems we're finally making some headway down the road that Dirk carved out for us. Yeah. Now, if we can just prove Garon's guilt, we could continue down the road towards the revolution Dirk dreamed of. Y your eminence, you have been accused of the crime committed 23 years ago. Would you like to say anything in your defense? Not so fast, your majesty. For the cuffs could have been stolen and used without my knowledge. So you see, they can hardly be considered proof of anything. God, I hate her. Well, why, I believe you're right. Shut You know what, Judge, I take it back. You're still stupid. You're still really fucking dumb. Ah, uh, but we know she's guilty. She, like, just basically confessed a billion times. <laughs> well, lawyer, is there any other evidence you have you would have me refute? Unfortunately, this photo is the last piece of evidence Dirk left for me. So as far as evidence goes, I've got nothing else regarding the case from the past. You know, you figure, Minty, but th this doesn't make sense. However, now that Prosecutor Saad Mahdi has retracted his confession, we'll have to re-deliberate the current case from scratch. Yes, the defense speaks the truth. Even though it is clear who the guilty party is. Queen Garan, the defense accuses you of the murder of Justice Minister Inga Karkul Karain. Ugh. But, but, do you have any evidence, defense? Evidence that will prove Garan was the killer. There's still one more avenue for us to explore, Mr. Justice. Uh, there is? 
Minister Inga's final memories. In them, the minister was killer posed as dirt. Therefore, one must ask, how did the killer dispose of their disguise? Hey, you're right! A lot of blood would have splattered onto the killer, so the blood-soaked clothes would have to have been dealt with somehow. If they're still around somewhere, then... Hmm. I was wondering what absurd idea you would have concocted next. Clothing can be disposed of anywhere. I doubt you could find them now. Wow, you just don't give a shit anymore. Then you don't know us very well. Your benevolence... Yes, on the day of your father's murder, you had been watching the courtyard from 2 p.m. Now, during that time, you saw Queen Garan, did you not? Uh, yes, I did. I saw my mother entering the palace from the courtyard. But I was told not to mention it because I had nothing to. It had nothing to do with my father's murder. Rafe, right? You would not. No, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> Nobody loves you. When the queen headed into the palace, did she have Dirk's clothes in her possession? No. No, she did not. So, maybe she disposed of them somewhere in the courtyard. The police did a thorough sweep of the area following the crime, but they did not find anything resembling Dirk's clothes because you control the police, you dumb bitch! But you knew that already, didn't you, prosecutor? Yes, I admit no clothing was found. Maybe. Hmm. So you admit that you were merely speculating, chasing phantoms and delusions of evidence that never existed. This makes no sense. Clothing doesn't just disappear like that. Garan wasn't carrying any clothes. She must have gotten rid of them somewhere. Somewhere she thought they'd never be found. Where they'd never be found, huh? Ta da! -da. Oh! Where else would we never find things? Take that! The tomb? You believe the clothing was hidden there? Yeah, because nobody would look in the sarcophagus. I was about to say, is there anything underneath, Dirk? Oh, I think she's... Because there's blood on the outside of that, and that shouldn't have been there. Very well. Where in the tomb do you believe the clothes were hidden? The fucking... The, the, I'm glad I don't have to move it there. Of course, that makes perfect sense. The clothes were simply hidden. They were returned to where they belonged. Ugh. And by that you mean... The killer would have had to get Dirk's clothes from somewhere. Luckily, they were right there. Yes, of course. At the time of the minister's murder, Dirk's body was already in the sarcophagus, so the killer could have simply borrowed his clothes. Right, before the minister entered the tomb, the killer put on Dirk's clothes, and then hid behind the curtain above the sarcophagus. And after the minister was killed, Dirk's clothes were returned to his body. So, so what? This is still all speculation. Until we test the blood on those clothes, we know not whether those clothes were actually used in the murder. Therefore, you cannot prove that they are somehow connected to this case. Objection. That's where you're wrong, but I believe you already knew that. Well, it looked like all of the shots hit him square like in his chest and didn't actually hit his jacket. But there's blood spray outside of his jacket that wouldn't be there from blood coming from him. Yeah, it's definitely the blood splatter. Take that. That's somebody else's blood. The blood stains on Dirk's chest are no doubt the result of being shot by the minister. However, that doesn't explain everything. There's also some blood splatter extending from the his left elbow to his abdominal area. I believe this blood splatter came from bum ba bum 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 Dick Bag McGee. Take that. If the killer wore these clothes during the murder, then the blood splatter must have come from Minister Inga. I had thought it was all Dirk's, but that makes sense. Only one way to be sure, though. Let's get those stains analyzed right away. Indeed, this may be the conclusive evidence we need to prove the Queen's guilt. 
you cannot prove it was I who hid those clothes. They could very well have been hidden by a, a third party. But could they really? I'd say the possibility of someone other than Garan hiding the clothes does not exist. Wow. No, it's just not possible. Your eminence, I recall you saying the following. Just say that he, yeah, the only people who can open it are you and your husband, you dumb bitch. Ah! Ugh. That was your own testimony, word for word. What, you insolent. Admit it. Only you could have hidden Dirk's clothes after they were used in the murder. And that means you are the one who killed Justice Minister Inga. Insignificant worm! You dare accuse me, the ruler of Karain? Yeah, because you're crazy. Do not think for one moment that such impudence will... I'm afraid such arguments are invalid here in this sacred hall, your eminence. Because even monarchs aren't above the law. Mm. It is the end of the line for you, Queen Garan. Ah! Time to come down from that lofty throne and face justice. Mm. Ah! Okay, good. Jeez, how many nails does she have? Hmm, <laughs> uh, of course it's not over yet. Wow, you look surprisingly calm for someone who should be going to jail. Me? Face justice? Surely you jest. You are in no position to force my hand, lawyer. Oh? Surely you haven't forgotten about the Defense Culpability Act. Those who would support criminals will be deemed just as guilty. In short, should I be convicted of murdering my husband, your dear brother who delivered false testimony in my defense shall also be found guilty. Oh, of course. What? That can't be, uh, can it? I thought it was only for the defense, but by delivering false testimony in the course of protecting a guilty party, he would certainly be judged by this court as having supported a criminal. And the Defense Culpability Act would most definitely come into play. But that law is so broad that anyone could be convicted under it. When it comes to the DC Act, even I am conflicted, and yet, as it currently stands, it is the law of the land. And as you said earlier, no one is above the law. Of all the absurd things I've seen, this law really takes the cake. Now what? What can we even do at this point? <laughs> you need not look so forlorn. Dirk has been cleared of all charges, so let us leave all thoughts of the real killer and revolution in the past where it belongs. Fuck you. She wants to just let her off scot-free, and yet I don't see any other choice. We cannot yield to her here, Apollo. If, if it will move the revolution forward, I will gladly face the DC Act. Now do it, accuse Queen Garan of the crime she has committed. But, oh, just do it, yeah. What you speak of is not revolution. Our kingdom will not function without its sovereign. And Rafa cannot ascend the throne, for she is not yet she is as yet incapable of channeling spirits. Thus to accuse me is to wish destruction upon our fair kingdom, you terrorist! Maya, become the queen! Terrorist? If you would still insist on accusing me, then as ruling sovereign of Korain, I proclaim the following. Now, you can't keep doing that when you're in the middle of, like, fucking getting ready to die. All who imperil the crown, no matter the reason, shall be subject to immediate execution upon the queen's orders. That's stupid. What? Immediate execution? Do you still not comprehend? Then let me be clear. For the sake of this kingdom's future, in accordance with the laws of Karain, I command that you be put to death at once. Um... Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Whoa! What the? Ugh, really? <laughs> really? Isn't this going a bit too far? Why is the Garan Royal Guard? Because they're lapdogs. 
They were on standby in case of an attack by foolishly optimistic terrorists. Now, if you would continue to oppose me, the very embodiment of the law, then under my regal authority, you shall all be put to death. Wow. That's our one voice line. Laughing. Oh, come on. This is insane, even for you. You can't possibly get away with something like this. This is a court of law. You can't just order our execution without due process. Now look, Apollo, truth and due process are certainly important. But so is your life, so think before you speak again. But, but... Please, Apollo, do not make this any worse than it already is. I cannot lose you to the Twilight Realm too. Ah, what am I supposed to do? I don't win against an opponent that can rewrite the law as she sees fit. I can't even bring her to justice. Is this really how it all ends? <laughs> It is your life or your accusation, lawyer. You cannot hope for both. It is time to cease this insanity. Oh, I do. Should I accuse the queen? Yeah, fuck it! Accuse the bitch! I know what I have to do. Mr. Wright, you know that saying you're constantly reminding me and Athena of? The worst of times are when lawyers have to force their biggest smiles. You never fail to surprise me, Apollo. And now, Yuta, you know that creed we've known ever since we were kids? A dragon never yields. Hollow? They are not merely words, they are what's carried us this far. So now, it's time to honor those wor these words and the memories of the ones who gave us, gave them to us. Fuck. Couldn't agree with you more, Apollo. Those words are more important to me than you know. And if there's any time to remember them, it's now. It would seem, Apollo, that not one but two auspicious creatures dwell deep inside of you. A fierce dragon and a virtuous phoenix that shall scatter the clouds hiding in the heavens. And phoenix is just there like, please don't say that. The phoenix is inside of this boy. I shall join you in your death-defying bluff. I think I finally understand what those words really mean and the resolve they embody. Uh, are you smiling even in the face of certain doom? Is there no end to your defiance? No, the truth is coming out. Unfortunately for you, no. I won't let fear, or even the law, force me to abandon the pursuit of truth. Because there is another saying in my country, the truth will set you free. Indeed, that is precisely what Dirk sought to do with this trial. He wished for us to break free from a certain despicable spider's immobilizing silk threads. We won't be intimidated by unjust laws or given to fear. Abandoning the truth like that is just not a part of my playbook. There's only one path before us. Revolution. Time to make Dirk's dream a reality is upon us! Your Eminence, if you are the law here in Karain, then your very existence is wrong! Does your desperate bleeding know no end? I know it's a bit late to ask, but uh, what's the plan? Well, if Garan is going to execute us on the spot under the Defense Culpability Act, and the law itself derives its power from the authority of the crown, then there's only one thing left to do. We're making a new queen! We dethrone her right here, right now! Yes! All right, but how? It's not like we have a lot of time to come up with a way to do it either. I doubt she'll allow you to perform another cross-examination while we think. Don't worry, I'll come up with something. We'll be fine! We can't give up. Not now. We have to go on fighting to the end. We can't allow these broken trials to go on. Time to make things right. Maya, get your ass over here! You need to become a queen! Oh, boy. These will be put to death in accordance with the law. So the only way out of this is to dethrone Garon right now. Could this be the key to- The Founder's Orb! Well, technically her channeling ability, but the Founder's Orb is the big thing. Yeah, Brain Blast time. Is the Founder's Orb the key to the revolution? Yes, it is. Dirk was convinced that the Orb is the key to the revolution and Karain's future. In light of Garin's obsession with the Orb, it makes a large amount of sense. She probably doesn't want anyone using it to gain spiritual powers and rights to the throne. Inga definitely tried to do just that, but that's where it starts to fall apart. 
Inga couldn't have channeled the founder even after abducting Miss Faye. After all... Um... I think it's he didn't know the founder's name. Inga didn't know the founder's name! The name of the founder is only known to those who become queen. That means the only people who currently know that name are Garam and Amara. So even if someone else had the orb, they wouldn't be able to channel the founder. Please tell me Amara told Maya. That begs the question, why is Garan so fixated on the orb? Let's not overthink this. Garan is obsessed with the orb because... Wait a minute, can she not channel spirits? Garn wants spiritual power. Could it be? It's hard to believe, but... If she wants spiritual power, does that mean Garn can't channel spirits? That would explain why she had Amara perform the rite of channeling! Holy shit! Is that why she let Amara live to stand in for her when the time came to channel spirits? That makes so much sense. Holy fuck! So if Garn can't channel spirits... She'd have no claim to the fucking throne because she can't be the queen! Oh shit. Garen has no claim to the throne! Oh boy. Garen's Defense Culpability Act was established under the Crown's authority. But if she has no claim to the throne, then the DC Act would become null and void. No, not just the DC Act, all the insane laws she's enacted would be swept away in one fell swoop. That was, that, that was my brain. You claim authority of the crown? You, of all people? That's a good one. Have you truly lost it, lawyer? Indeed, I would have this defense uh, explain himself at once. It's easy, your majesty. Why is Queen Garan so obsessed with the Founder's Orb? Why did she let Queen Amara live? And why was she having her mercifulness Perform the rite of channeling in her place. The answer to these three questions point to a single conclusion. The fact, a fact that will shake this kingdom to its very core. I still do not follow, Apollo. Yeah, it's because you're dumb. Your Eminence, I have just one question for you, and please, be honest. You can't actually channel spirits, can you? What? You believe the queen is not capable of communing with the dead? The defense will explain himself at once! In Karain, the ability to channel spirits is an absolute requirement for a would-be queen. But your eminence, if you are incapable of doing that, then you'd have no claim to the throne. Not only that, but every law you passed would be rendered null and void. <coughs> and you, the Garan Royal Guard. You seem to be rather enamored with the Queen's supposed spiritual power. But what if she had none? What if she were just an ordinary person? A pretender to the throne? That's crazy talk! Impossible! Everyone knows the spirit mediums can be Queen Queen! Yeah. Such blasphemy! On what grounds uh, do you make such a defamatory claim? Queen Garan. If you think I'm just out to defame you, then prove it. Prove it using this piece of evidence you want so badly. Give her the fucking orb. Give her the orb! The, the... All the conditions for summoning the founder should be in place. With the orb, we know what the founder looks like. And as queen, you should know the founder's name. <sighs> now, if you would, your eminence... Please show us the great spiritual power you bear as Grand Priestess of Karain! Oh, to witness her eminence's great power with her own eyes! The Holy Mother! Praise be your eminence, may your mighty spiritual power show us the way! Get fucked! Ugh. Enough! Enough, I say, you mindless cretins! Your Eminence, can it be that you cannot? N no, no, I, 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 
I want a lawyer. Uh, summon one at once. Wow. This bitch is getting, she getting, hanging out. Also, hi, foe. Yeah, it's so funny, there's so much going on. Aren't you forgetting something? There aren't any lawyers left in Karain. You can thank your Defense Culpability Act for that. Ugh. Your Eminence, please give us a glimpse of your magnificent power. Summon her holiness so she may guide us. I have heard enough out of you, out of my sight, all of you. If you truly are capable of channeling spirits, then get on with it already, your eminence. Uh, you sneaky, underhanded wretch of a lawyer. That reminds me, you said something to this effect earlier. It is time to cease this insanity. Don't you feel stupid for saying that now? Indeed, of all the things she has said, I can think of nothing more ludicrous. Apollo, teach this deceitful, putrid queen a lesson she won't soon forget. I wish you weren't... Nayuta, sorry, but you, like, getting smart in the last 30 minutes isn't enough for me to like you. You're still a dick. Fuck this guy. Gladly, because it really is time to cease this insanity. Are we ready to point? No! Go on! Your reign of terror ends here! <laughs> he just he knocked all those guys over with his finger! That's how you do lawyer stuff. Uh, okay, she's about to go nuts. Um, Come on! Can this bitch please stop smirking? Uh. Behold, the magnificent power to commune with the spirits. Oh, your eminence! O oh, great spirit of the founder who dwells in the twilight realm, heed the secret covenant of the orb and appear here before us. Oh, here it comes! Uh What's wrong? Are you not uh, feeling well? Ah! Oh, spirit of the founder, grace us with your presence. The time is now, I beseech you. Appear before us, heed my call, founder, please. Ah! <laughs> what is that dance? Oh, this bitch got no powers. Oh, they fight! Holy shit, that was fast. No, 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 wait, I, I was just warming up. <laughs> the ride actually starts from uh, now. Look, <laughs> what the hell are, uh, wow. I kind of wish they had shot her, but I guess that they would change that into a different rating of game. Well. Did you finally do it. <laughs> yeah. He is having some issues. Prosecutor Sadmati, how is her eminence? It seems she now believes that she herself is the Holy Mother. I see, but her attempt at spirit channeling failed, did it not? Sadly, she seems unable to accept the facts. Uh, I fear it will be quite a challenge to question her later. And uh, what, if I may ask, was her motive? I understand that she killed Minister Inga in order to prevent his coup d'etat, but what of her attempt to assassinate Queen Amara 23 years ago? Uh, to become queen herself, maybe she just craved power and attention. She likely developed a psychological complex from her inability to channel spirits. That is why she kept Queen Amara alive to perform the rite of channeling for her. In that way, it would seem as if she had great spiritual power. In short, she built a cult of personality upon fear and lies. Then again, do not all tyrants. So then, she never really intended to kill Amara, huh? What I don't understand is why Queen Amara even listened to Garon in the first place. Especially 14 years ago, before Rafa was being held hostage. Why would she keep letting the people of Karain think she was dead? While she kept quietly performing the rite of channeling for Garon. 
My mother is a gentle soul by nature and loves her sister dearly, even if she's a huge bitch. So when Garan told her to hide because Dirk was out to kill her, she believed it. What's more, she did not wish to tarnish the name of her beloved sister. Oh. That is why she acquiesced so obediently to Garan's request to keep channeling for her. Until she fled with Dirk and was told the truth, that is. So that's what happened. And since Rafa was being held captive, I imagine Amara had no choice but to help cover up the truth behind Ingwa's murder. Yeah, living secretly as Rafa's servant, Nana, no doubt only deepened her love for her daughter. She'd do anything to keep her safe. All the more reason to hide the painful truth from her. Well, that was a case for the ages. Prosecutor Sadmati has been cleared of all suspicion in the murder of Minister Ingo. As has Mr. Dirk Sadmati in the assassination attempt on Queen Amara. Now then, I think it's high time I handed down my verdict on Dirk and Nayuta Sadmati. Not guilty! Thank you! It only took me 10 fucking hours! Only 10 hours. We did it, guys. It is midnight. I started this at 2. We... Oh. We beat the game, but they're probably gonna still talk for a while. Yay, the butterflies! Thank you! Thank you. What now? Uh, Dirk, I hope you're watching. I proved your innocence. Uh, Dirk and... Nayuta. No, the queen is definitely fucking guilty. And you're just smiling again. And that revolution you've always dreamed of is finally happening. With this, I may finally, may I finally say this court is adjourned. Oh, thank you. <sighs> yeah, she's extra nuts now. Way to go, Apollo. I was on the edge of my seat when those guards stormed the courtroom. That was a shocker, all right. Can't imagine anything like that happening back at home. I know, right? I was ready to go go on down there and teach them a lesson myself. Uh, r really? I was barely able to hold back. Hold me back? You were about to go ballistic after a while there, Athena. Yeah, well, I was thinking of helping you smack a few of them down, to be honest. Remind me to never say or do anything to deserve a Maya Athena double suplex. You did a fine job out there today, Apollo. Thanks for all the great advice, Mr. Wright. Nah, it was all you. That perseverance and never say die attitude you showed was impressive. I actually learned a thing or two myself. What, from me? <laughs> That's a laugh. Uh, there were any number of times where I wouldn't have blamed you for giving up, but you stuck it out to the end and came away triumphant. By sheer force of will and inner strength forged in countless trials. You overcame the most desperate and hopeless situation I've ever seen. I don't know about all that. I mean it. You've really come a long way, Apollo. I have nothing but respect for your abilities as an attorney. Really? Aren't you exaggerating just a little bit, Mr. Wright? You did it, Apollo. You finally won his seal of approval. I asked you how do you manage to stream for that much? It's because it's determination. I was determined to finish this game and not have to do it again. And I didn't realize until about three hours ago that I could speed up text by messing with a setting. What about me, Nick? My channeling's come a long way too. After all, I was deemed worthy enough to be used in two major crimes already. Uh, yeah, and two major chances for me to become someone for you to channel next. Honestly, I couldn't have done it without the support of each and every person here. All of my friends. Mr. Wright, Athena, Nayuta, and of course, Dirk. Well, but Nayuta was a big asshole until 30 minutes ago. That was pretty cool, Polly. Trucy, why are you here in this country? Trucy? Trucy, what are you doing here? Mm-hmm, <laughs> it's magic. It's Edgeworth. He is magical. I'm afraid she employed the old let's stow away in Mr. Edgeworth's suitcase trick. And the, what is that? Wait, has that happened before? Edgeworth? 
If I had a nickel for every time Trucy was in Edgeworth's luggage, I'd have two nickels. Which is still... It's strange that it happened twice. What? Though it certainly explained why my suitcase was so heavy. Tell me you at least noticed it was heavier than usual. No, no. Um, Trucy? Do you even have a passport? My magic panties are an extra dimensional space! It's like a mini universe in there! I could produce a passport at the drop of a hat! Um, right. Maybe some things in this world are better left a mystery. Hornhead! Barbed head! I am forever in your debt uh, for what you've accomplished in this Hall of Justice. Without your presence, I may have never changed as I have this day. Yeah, she's actually experienced a lot of growth over the game. Way more than a Utah. It's pathetic, I know. That's where you're wrong, your benevolence. It was you who changed yourself. <clears throat> Only you could choose to defy Garan. And that decision was yours and yours alone. Everybody's learning lessons today. Have you guys learned lessons today? Definitely not. Yeah, no, I hate the fact that the first time you had to deal with the magic panties, she was very young, and they said panties so many times, and I was like, I don't want to be in this world anymore. That's right, all we did was press you with an opportunity, and you made use of it with gusto. This victory is yours, your benevolence. You should be proud of yourself. God, how much are they gonna talk? I, I see. S so, I am worthy of my title after all. Ha! <laughs> I shall work to heal our kingdom so that it may know peace and prosperity once more. She sure bounced back quick. So, your benevolence, I take it you learned the truth of your origins? That you're the daughter of Dirk and Queen Amara? Yes, my mother, I mean, her eminence told me. She said it was part of my disciplining. If you can call it that. Sounds more like blackmail. Be quieter, I'll tell everyone that you're the daughter of a criminal. My mother was so insufferable, or should I say my former mother? Sounds like there was no love lost there. But you cleared Dirk's name. My true father will no longer be known as a criminal. Therefore, I have nothing more to fear. So, uh, who's next for the kingdom of Karain? Or what's next? I mean, you've lost your queen, so, uh... Her benevolence, Princess Rafa will ascend to the throne. Oh, it's, uh, Nayuta that said that. Sorry! Uh, but she can't channel spirits yet, right? Indeed, which is why I will act as regent on her behalf. Until the day she comes into her own. Just let Maya take over, it's fine. Yes, your help will be greatly appreciated, Prosecutor Sad. I mean, bro! Big bruh! Bruh! Bruh? Bruh! 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 she gonna say what I think she is? What are you looking at, you, you horn-headed nincompoop? Oh. Ouch! In any event, I will be assisted by Nayuta and Queen Amara for the time being. At Queen Amara, our country offers consul to the rulers of neighboring uh, kingdoms through channeling. It is a duty I intend to fulfill myself one day, but for now I'll have Queen Amara assist me in that capacity. You mean mom? So then she's gonna be all right. Yeah. Yes, it seems the bullet went straight through her without doing any serious damage. Uh, that's a relief. <clears throat> you did it, AJ! Ah, thanks to you both Dirk and Nayuta beat the charges against him. You got that revolution rolling to boot! Ah, the revolution. Dirk. Guess you were right to believe in me after all. Yes, sir! There's gonna be some major changes around here. The legal system's gonna return to its rightful state, like how Dirk always wanted. And the name of Apollo Justice will go down in Kurinese history! Ah, uh, ha ha, yeah. Right. Oh. Nayuta, before I forget, there was something I wanted to give you before I head back home. You wish to give me something? Yes, as Dirk's birth son, I think you should have this. Uh, this, the pain medication. No, we're giving him... Ta -da -da -da. Take that! This is Dirk's. I have to get back to the States. And I know you're a prosecutor and all, but as the man that's going to change Karain, it's only right that you have it. Change Karain. Yeah, in Dirk's place. 
Apollo, I'm afraid I must refuse your gift. What? Why? There's something I would like to show you. Huh? What's this all of a sudden? Mr. Wright, won't you and your friends please join us? Oh god, is he gonna show us his dick? Uh, sure. Is he, is he an exhibitionist? What are we doing, cutscene? Oh, we're down here. Man, I just want us, I just want the game to be done and I can be, congratulations, I did it, and then I can stop. <laughs> I'm sorry, Baff, is, I don't know. At first I thought he was gonna be like, can everybody get out of the room? But apparently, Nayuta's not shy when he whips it all out. Um, so why'd you bring us here, Nayuta? Apollo, I want you to stay here in Korain. What? But why? We have lost our queen and our kingdom stands at a crossroads. Most of all, we will need to rebuild our entire legal system. Naturally, that includes the reintroduction of lawyers to the court. But wait, you're not asking me to, uh... I'm gonna ask Apollo to marry him? <laughs> yeah, we're not related by blood. Yes, I want you to take over this law office. With you as a lawyer and me as a prosecutor, we'll make beautiful babies. We shall rebuild Korain's legal system from the ground up. You want me to help you rebuild the legal system? That's a lot to take in. <clears throat> Apollo, I cannot do this without you. As a lawyer, you are Dirk's spiritual heir. And having studied in America, your legal knowledge will be indispensable. And uh, this is way out of my league. The revolution is still in its infancy, but it was Dirk's dream to restore the legal system to its rightful state. Will you not help me realize that dream? Wow, guilt trip. Come on, AJ, you know it's what Dirk would have wanted. Let's do it together. Wow, third wheel much. You must be taken aback by my sudden request, but please give it some thought. Uh, of course, I'm honored that you asked. Still, I have my job back at the right anything agency to consider too. Phoenix is gonna be like, fuck that job, stay here. Don't you worry about that, Apollo. We don't need you anymore. Besides, this is something only you can do. Something only I can do. I mean, to be, be completely honest, our office would be a bit short on firepower without you around, but hey. Mr. Wright. Actually, I am, um, I'm sorry, but I can't get on board with this. Nina? I mean, there's still so much I want to learn from you, Apollo. That's right, it won't be the same without you. Oh, God. Always. And everyone back home would really miss you too. There's no way I can agree to this. Still, if you really wanted to stay, yeah, Athena's right. It won't be easy, but in a truce <clears throat> Follow, no one but you can make this decision. Know that I will not question whatever choice you make. Our flight leaves tomorrow morning, Apollo. Think you can make up your mind by then? I know, so selfish, jeez. Uh, I'll try. Talk about a difficult decision. Da da da, the next day, or not. Should I go back to the US and continue working at the right anything agency? <clears throat> or should I stay in Korean and help Nayuta rebuild the legal system and hang out with my family that's not family, but is family? What's the right thing for me to do? The next day. The bus to the airport will be here any minute. <clears throat> I wonder where Apollo is. Dude, stay, rebuild the system, go back. Yeah, exactly. It's not that hard to, like, visit. Apparently, we can make it back and forth in, like, a, less than a day. Yeah. You think he decided to stay here in Korain? I bet he was up all night thinking. This is a life-changing decision, after all. But whatever he decides, I'll have to accept it. I guess this means no more courtroom battles alongside him. What, is there something wrong with Phoenix? Hey, guys! I'd know that booming voice anywhere. Uh, uh. It, whew, I made it. Uh. Apollo, you're here. Does that mean you're coming home with us? No, I wanted to say goodbye. 
Well, uh, about that. Um, Mr. Wright. Yes, I officially resign. I've made up my mind. Here it is, the moment of truth. I still have so many things to learn from you. No, well, oh, I mean, I guess. Oh wait, but, okay. I've decided to stay in crate. Okay, oh, I was like, no! God, come on. You're staying, but, but. I feel like I have to pick up where Dirk left off. I can't let his sacrifice go to waste. I see. Plus, uh, I want to teach others everything about Everything you've taught me about being a lawyer, Mr. Wright. Apollo, Dirk's roadmap for the future, and your teachings. I believe these two things will save the people of this kingdom from further unrest. I want to do this. No, I have to do this. Apollo, I've never felt prouder. <laughs> Proud to have had such an amazing attorney working under me. But, uh, someday, I'll return to the US. Oh, it's the new legal system is here is firmly in place. I'll be back. Scout's honor. Will we really see you again, Apollo? You guys act like travel doesn't exist. You bet. Not that I have any idea how long it'll be, but I promise you this, everyone. I'll keep on learning and growing, and I'll come back to the US an even better lawyer. So don't you forget about me. Of course we won't, Apollo, like five days later. Who, who's Apollo? There'll be a spot waiting for you back at the office. In the meantime, we'll be rooting for you, so knock him dead. You got it, Mr. Wright. I'm gonna miss you, Polly. But if this is it, then I'm going to support your choice all the way. Good, you should, because he's your for real blood brother, and you should support what he does. Thanks, Trucy. Good luck with your magic act. I know you'll do Troop Grammary proud. I'll be cheering for you too, Apollo, but don't think you're the only one with room to grow. The next time we meet, you'll probably won't even recognize me! Ah, <laughs> in other words, uh, game on. You bet, and I'm gonna win! I'm gonna miss you too, Apollo, but uh, can't wait to see where your new adventures will take you, and hopefully you don't turn it to a douchebag. Here you have for being a bumbling buffoon. Well, here's our boss. I guess this is it, Apollo. I'll never forget everything you've done for me, Mr. Wright. I don't know how I'll ever repay you. Here's to seeing you back in the US again someday. Uh, until then, you know where to find me. Cat, did you fall asleep and wake up? You, should, you shouldn't be awake this early. Wait, it's like 7 a.m. for you, never mind. Jesus. The legacy of those who came before us. is handed down from parent to child. Well, did you sleep okay? Parent to child and and from mentor to disciple. I mean, they're basically your kids, Phoenix. It's never stall or stagnate, but continue to grow and change. All that we've been taught, the beliefs and convictions that have been passed down to us, we must continue to nurture them so that we, in turn, can pass them on to the next generation. We did, thank you. I'm glad to hear it. Oh god, please tell me credit roll. Ah, there's a cutscene still! Are you really sure you're okay with him staying, boss? Uh-huh. I always figured he'd leave the nest someday. Oh god. <laughs> the voices are so slow, Edgeworth. Aw. Edgeworth's still so great. Bitch, Albie! Kill the child! Why don't we go and check it out, AJ? Sorry, the, the FPS changes when there's a cutscene, so the audio is a little weird. Hello. Glad you got an elephant. Hi, Rafa. Hi, Nayuta. Still don't like you that much. Huh? 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 Aw. Bye, Dad. <laughs> As you do the thing with the sash, you got me. 
Yeah, I can take her to the zoo. Still a dish to root down now. Yay! The building! We're back open for business. <gasps> Credits? <sighs> Guys. Oh, go on, Mr. Hat. Introduce yourself. I'm the amazing Mr. Hat. Nice to meet you. I wanted to take this opportunity to announce my solo debut. It seems Mr. Hat doesn't want Apollo to leave him in the dust. Here's rival who can't let him hog the spotlight. Hmm. That's not the same without you. Yeah, I kind of miss him too. To compensate for the rest. Yeah, exactly. Okay, guys. This was just the second part of the fifth episode, and it was 10 fucking hours. The first part took me almost seven hours. That's like 17 hours of gameplay in one chapter. Who the fuck does that to people? I don't care about you, Albi. Stop trying to make money off of everybody. <laughs> it's a <laughs> white hair anime voice to treasure. <laughs> oh. We did it, though. We... Holy shit, we beat it. I still... Oh, oh! I want to congratulate you on becoming a forensic investigator, Dr. Emma. Thank you for the fact that somebody says he has need of me. So starting tomorrow, I'll be working in Korean for a while. Look at it this way. It's sure to be an educational experience. Plus, I can't let that kid show me up, either. I'll see what I can do for Korean's revolution. Hmm. Well, challenges have a way of helping people grow. I look forward to our next investigation upon your return. I feel like there's some Nayuta Emma stuff probably out there. Now you have a good one, cat. Oh, it's those two. Uh, the real the secret finder teleportation trick. Show requests have totally dried up. Yak. Freeze. Game, please just stop. Take Trucy up on the offer. She said she could make her debut as major. Oh, yeah, you could be a part of our her agency. Fires you up like a bitter rivalry. Okay, cool. Holy crap. But guys, seriously, like, man, I can't believe they made episode five, like, the length of a game. Like a norm, like some other game. Like, this game didn't need to be 30 to 40 hours long, but... but they did. Another baby? What? Rain is just like this child right now, full of life and limitless power. I have faith that Dirk and my darling Tarust will watch over them both. Oh wait, she was pregnant. I was like, Dads, what did you do? And just for Junior here, there's the secret to being a man among men. Behold the Dats pose. Yeah, you scared the child. Sounds like little Fatai saying no. How long it takes to beat that? Yeah, this is so hot. Like, seriously, guys, this was... This was a lot. I, I still have to say this game was paced really strangely. I like Ace Attorney, I like... But man, there was too many ellipses, there were too many flashbacks. The usual complaint I had, but like, even worse. And yeah, Mr. Wright will be calling his right-hand woman before you know it. That might sound bad. Have good job, Athena. You did it. Blackwell! Bucky, how dare you deliver my order in such a sorry state? Don't be mad, Simon. It was a huge party at my shop yesterday, but uh, I should still taste fine. Here, try some. Why is that man always drunk? Ugh. Uh, you great big pillock! I just lost my appetite because of you. It's hard to find good help these days. Wouldn't you say, old chum? Who are you talking to, Blackwell? Well, at least we got to see Blackwell. Highlight of the game, we saw Black Will. Thanks. Oh, it's Wendo again. Mm -hmm. Mystery story that'll keep flipping the eye. God, guys, it's called Scary Udon Noodles. Well, yeah, yeah, whatever. I'm not reading all this, guys. It just keeps going. First name in. No, he's just a Uendo. He has multiple personalities. Probably with his raven. Yeah. Who's next? Oh! Oh, it's Sarge! <laughs> yeah. I 
no match for you because you're gone. Oh, Sarge. God. Oh, Sarge! She's so cute! Aww. Yeah. I'll also be going on a dig in Corain soon. Oh. That private justice had better not be slacking off. That's right, you teach him a thing or two. Oh, man. I'm gonna be super busy now that the head of the fake. Yeah, you are the head of the fake clan. And Pearls! Don't worry, Mystic Maya, I'll do whatever I can to help. Thanks, Pearly. Our first order of business will be to revolutionize Karain Village. Oh, I have an idea. How about opening a store where we could buy new outfits like the city girls wear? But look who's all grown up now. But I think there are a few more pressing matters to take care of first. Yeah, you're right. I guess it'll be a while before I get my revolutionary makeover. Oh, poor Pearls. Probably not. I'm gonna assume that there's only like a few more. I mean, Maya's like one of the big characters, so I figure we... Oh, hello, mother and daughter. Now that you've stopped being Nana, I want a new Nana. I wonder where there would be anyone willing to serve you in that capacity. You are quite a handful, after all. I am. Simple wave of your hand, you would have your attire changed, meals prepared, and even your teeth brushed. I think I put such an undue burden upon you. Yeah, if you're not, Rafa, you'll have plenty of time in which to make amends. Oh, <laughs> perhaps you could start with one of your famous shoulder rubs. Yes, rub your mother's shoulders. Thank you, Janet Pasu. Man, and to think that I've been standing up um, for like six hours because I started the trial part standing up. Her benevolence has taken to calling me Braidhead. Even worse, she trembles and her face turns red when she speaks to me. What have I done to deserve such animosity? A lot! To be merciless within the Hall of Justice, to be given such a dismissive name is entirely uncalled for. What am I to do? Perhaps I shall consult Apollo about this. You want ten more squads? Uh, two, three, four, five. Seven, eight. Phoenix! Nine. How's he doing, Mr. Wright? Great. He's a respectable lawyer on his own now. He even has his own practice called Justice Law Offices. Thank you. This wouldn't have been possible without you. It's Lamoror! It's the mom! Before I forget, I made a copy of this photo for you. A photo? Oh. Jove. It's so good to see him again. Don't you think it's about time we told them the truth? After all, they've both grown into fine young people now. Yes, you're right. Perhaps it's about time they knew. Oh, now we get to the... Okay, the credits, credits. Well, thank you everybody for being here. This is just... It's gonna show us cutscenes from the game. Holy shit, I'm gonna stop the recording for now because... <sighs> we did it.